Well, a very good morning to you all from the Upton Steel County ground, Grace Road in Leicester. Day three of the Vitality County Championship Division 2 match between Leicestershire and Sussex. Commentary brought to you uh, by BBC Radio's Sussex and Leicester and BBC Sport, of course. Adrian Harms, myself, Richard Ray, and pleased to say we're being joined by Rita Green today uh, to give a bit more insight into what's going on out there. The game is really nicely balanced, we reckon. Sussex about to resume their first innings reply to Leicestershire's 338 on 282 for 6. Wicket fell with the very first ball of the day yesterday and not the very last as well. And the last man to go was Finn Hudson Prentice, who was uh, bowled with a ball by a ball that kept a little bit low from Matt Salisbury and uh, plucked out his off stump for 10. So, Salisbury, that ended play because it was in the last over, will have three balls of what is his 21st over of the innings to bowl. We are set fair, Adrian, and mm. hopefully for a full day's play. Yeah, morning, Richard. The, um, I think the forecast is OK. So it, it's a lovely morning. It's a little chilly. Um, but I think the forecast may be for a shower or two later on. But that's fingers crossed that that, that, that doesn't materialise. Bowled beautifully yesterday. I thought Matt Salisbury, you know, good value for his his three wickets and bowling from the same end from which Finn Hudson Prentice took his five as well. Um, Finn Hudson Prentice recording career best figures. But Sussex, for a time yesterday, looked like they may go into today with a you know reasonably sizable lead. But I thought Leicestershire did well yesterday afternoon. Lewis Hill set some defensive fields. The runs dried up. Chetishwa Pajara taking 148 balls to score his um, 38. And um, Sussex finishing the day uh, still behind by 56. Potentially key partnership. Danny Lamb has come out to replace Finn Hudson Prentice. John Simpson, Sussex skipper at the other end on 32, not out. In comes Salisbury and bowls straight. Another no ball. That's not a good start. They bowled a lot of no balls. Uh, Leicestershire, there are 30 extras on the board and I think that's no ball number 10 for the innings. Now, there were a, a few streaming issues yesterday with um, with the Wi-Fi and immediately today it looks like we've started with a little bit of extra buffering. Fingers crossed that uh, clears up. So, two added to the Sussex score already, 284 for six. Salisbury is in and Bowling Lamb is playing and missing outside off stump. Drawn forward into a indeterminate prod and a wider delivery. Bounce through into the gloves of Ben Cox behind the stumps. Lamb a little nervous perhaps there. Drawn into a really false shot. Yes, he batted last week against uh, Northamptonshire, Danny Lamb. In, in different circumstances, to be honest, he made 41, but at a stage where Sussex were really had their foot to the floor looking to get a, a lead and a declaration. This is slightly different. Salisbury is in bowling. He gets a middle of the bat on that one. Looking to drive. Doesn't really put his full weight into the shot, though, and sort of guides it out towards extra cover. Goes straight to Ben Mike out there. Mike, who was uh, expensive early on in his bowling in the first innings. I think he went for close on 40 from his first five yeah. overs. Then produced a really good and, uh, well, stamina filled late spell that he really kept things very tight in in goes Salisbury bowls lamb on off stump is forward again pushing it out to Mike this time purely defensively end of what remained of the last over of yesterday so there will be 96 overs from this point 284 for six I sort of stood for a couple of moments Dean in almost in disbelief that he was out but out he was and it's going to be Tom Scriven uh, who again bowled nicely yesterday he and was a little expensive early on, but he returned and uh, picked up the key wicket of Chetishwa Pajara when Leicestershire decided to take the new balls. The, the runs are pretty much dried up, and Richard and I were slightly undecided as to what Lewis Hill would do, but eventually took the new ball with six overs remaining, and that proved to be a good move because they picked up the wickets of Pajara and Hudson Prentice. Here comes Tom Scriven running away from us from the pavilion end. Two slips go down, he's in and bowls, and defended by John Simpson down the track to mid-off. There is no run. Simpson on 32. Uh, John's parents were listening to our commentary last week over in Spain. It was good to hear from them. I don't know if they're listening today, but John will have his eyes on a maybe a maiden half century for for Sussex. He walks away to square leg and 
twiddles his bat, you'll see there are two slips and a point. Cover, mid-off, there's a sweeper on the cover boundary, mid-on, mid-wicket, and a fine leg as the sun momentarily uh, disappears from view. And Scriven is in over the wicket bowls, and Simpson drives without timing to mid-off. And there is no run. There's a lot more cloud around now. This morning, first thing was absolutely not a cloud in the sky. I bet, I bet you were doing something lunatic, Richard, like running at five o'clock this morning. Cycling this morning. Cycling? Mm. How far did you cycle? 43 kilometres. Wow. What time were you up? <laughs> it was a 7.15 start. <laughs> okay. So not too bad. So that's 43 kilometres. I reckon that's about 25, 26 miles? Just about, yeah. Length. Marathon length. Nice. Lovely morning for a cycle ride. It was, yeah. Lovely. Uh, Scriven. Again, bowls and Simpson again is solidly forward, placed to mid off, and there is no run. Very fortunate where I'm staying, there is a swimming pool, so I was able to get in there. And uh, I stayed up far too late last night. I was watching the Masters, which was ridiculous, really. It's that it's that time of the year, and you think, Oh, I'll just watch another hole, oh, I'll, I'll just watch the end of this. And oh dear, um, ill discipline from me, really. <laughs> Fortunately, tonight's the last night, but. Very little European contention in the Masters this year. With the exception of one player, in comes uh, Scriven Bowles. Simpson is forward solidly, plays into the offside, there is no run. Well, one thing that impresses me straight away with John Simpson, and he, he's been a fine player for Middlesex for many, many years. And it's a, as with all the good players, he just seems to have a lot of time at the crease, just waiting for the ball to come to him and just playing solidly away in the offside. The experience now, isn't he? 200 three first class games 9,103 first class runs mm. good signing uh, for Sussex I think that Sussex needs some experience they also needed a, a wicket keeper really as in comes Scriven and Bowles Simpson lets that go outside the off stump and there is no run there were those who felt that um, that Ollie Carter was a little unlucky but I, there's nothing to say Ollie Carter I, I would say his keeping has improved but it was an area where Sussex needed to make a change, and Ollie Carter's still very young. He's only 22. His time uh, will come. As Richard was saying, he's 10 first class hundreds to his name as well. John Simpson averages around about 32, which is very useful for a, a number six. But he's keeping wicket and captain Sussex this season. In comes Scriven, bowls, and Simpson drives firmly to mid off. Good tight bowling by. Uh, Tom Scriven and a maid no but get him underway uh, today. 20 overs, four maidens, one for 69. And it has been a feature. I sound a bit like a broken record because I spoke about it a lot yesterday. I've just been really impressed by the way that Leicestershire have made the Sussex players play. There was nothing apart from one ball in that over that Simpson could let go outside of his off stump. It's been, you know, very impressive. So you talk about Alfonso Thomas, the bowling coach here. You know, clearly, whatever he's doing. Um, is working as far as Leicestershire are concerned. They, they did drag it back round. It didn't start well. No, they didn't. With the ball no, they really and, didn't. Uh, 168 for one off about 40, weren't they, Sussex? But then they completely changed approach, Leicestershire. Salisbury is in to Lamb, who is beaten mm. on the outside edge. He hopped down the wicket and again, a determinate little defensive push, beaten on the outside edge. Uh, Teddy's been in touch from a Sonny Lewis. He says, hi, guys, enjoying the commentary. Finally poise. Mm. They kept Sussex at bay scoring-wise. You should tell us a lot about the character in the side today, as all results are still on. They certainly are, Teddy. Thank you for getting in touch. Sussex Cricket at bbc.co.uk. And also Dean is listening over in Cambodia, where it's 30 degrees today. Salisbury. It's not 30 degrees here. Is in. Bowl short. Pulled by Lamb. He got plenty of it. Not exactly where he wanted to put it. Travaskis is chasing around and Probably. flicks it back from long leg. He got to backward square. Dived. Flicked up in the air. And got in a good throw as well. So he saved a run there. Liam Travaskis. Good commitment by him early in the day. And obviously looking to impress on his debut. Has impressed already. Mm. Made a very good 82. His first start for the Foxes, bowled quite nicely as well yesterday. Produced a really one really super delivery that, that beat everything, but uh, wasn't able to pick up a wicket. So three to Lamb, he's off the mark with that. 287 for six. S something of a key partnership here because Sussex, in terms of batting, well, round the wicket goes Salisbury and bowls to Simpson, who does leave outside off stump. 
would be hoping, I think, that this would be the, the most productive partnership with respect to those who are to come. Carvelis, Carson. Yeah, Jack Carson could bat. I mean, he averages 30-odd. Jack, he made 61 last week. But again, that's when Sussex were really chasing a declaration. But, he, you know, he's a, he's a very useful player. But uh, uh, Carvelos and Jaden Seals, to be fair, I think they, they would be considered tail-enders. Don't tell him I said that. goes oh beautiful drive Shot. from simpson gorgeous drive salisbury just over pitched it was very straight and uh, beautifully punched back past him by simpson he stuck out a left foot matt salisbury and it's probably as well that the ball didn't cannon into it because it shot past the stumps i thought it was going to go into the stumps and up the gentle slope here at the uh, upton steel county ground over the advertising hoardings and behind the white sight screen there beautifully hit by Simpson, who is a fine player. He is in. He's just playing himself back. or was playing himself back in this morning, but he battled away yesterday alongside Pujaro at yes, a difficult did. time. Didn't give it away. Looking to make it count now. Just nine away from another batting bonus point, Sussex. Simpson on to 36. Salisbury turns. Again, round the wicket, bowls, just drags his length back a touch, straightens it up to off stump, and Simpson defends back down the wicket, exactly the same place as the previous shot, but uh, velocity somewhat less. Just wondering if over in Cambodia, you never quite know, I mean, it's always warm, isn't it, in that humid. neck of the woods, I just wonder if it's, if it's humid, or the wet season, or the dry season, or whatever season it is, Dean, perhaps you could... Let us know. It's great to hear from you. And that's uh, is that on, is that on your Twitter feed? Uh, that's on our email, sussexcricket at bbc.co.uk. Salisbury in bowl. Simpson covers up. Just had to just adjust there slightly. It was a little bit straight than you perhaps thought it was going to be. Played it back up the wicket. Very straight again. End of the over. Two ninety one for six. The other good news, Richard, is that um, uh, my my sort of notebook. Um, the coffee stains haven't been too bad. It looks like it's something out of a museum now, doesn't it? Where the coffee spilt all over it yesterday. Very careless of me. Um, but it's papyrus. dried up. It looks like papyrus. <laughs> Egyptian papyrus. <laughs> um, anyway, it's... Um, when it went it everywhere, didn't it? Mate? Oh, it my Lord. I, I thought it had gone over the laptop and everyone over my phone. I thought, <laughs> I don't need Pints it. Pints of it. Oh, Pints of it. Teach me to sort of... <laughs> Uh, drink coffee and commentate at the same time. But anyway, it happened. But um, all's well that ends well. And it's going to be Tom Scriven who's going to come into bowl for the first time to Danny Lamb here on BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Leicester, Adrian Harms, Richard Ray and Rita Green, our commentary team today, as in comes Scriven and bowls to Lamb. He bowls, pitches that around about middle and off, draws Lamb forward, and it's another dot ball. So seven deliveries from Tom Scriven this morning. And Sussex yet to score off of any of them there are two slips a backward point cover extra cover mid off so a ring of four on the offside then a mid on a mid wicket and a fine leg all the way down in the distance by the scoreboard we've been extolling the virtues of the scoreboard here at grace row because it gives you pretty much everything you you, you want to know as in comes scriven again right time over the wicket bowls to lamb and lamb is cautiously forward plays that into the offside and there is uh, no run. Uh, Daddy Lamb, who joined Sussex from uh, Lancashire during the winter, it was an another one of Paul Farbrace's moves to bring some some more experience into the side. Hasn't played quite as much first-class cricket as I thought perhaps he had. He was 28 years of age. Um, he's only scored 727 runs in first-class cricket. Predominantly, he's been a, a, a white ball player for Lancashire, so perhaps relishing the opportunity to play some some red ball cricket. Scriven is in bowls and Lamb is going to get runs but uncertain runs down to third man moral victory for the bowler um, but he, he was only half forward there Danny Lamb and the ball whistled away through the region of third slip there's no third man and it's a rather fortunate boundary for Danny Lamb he goes to seven and Sussex to 295 for six almost seemed to go through second slip Peter Hanscom is at second slip I'll just have to look at the replay on that one, how close it was. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it was wide of Hanscom, no chance. But a full shot nonetheless, an encouragement for Tom Scriven, who's in his 21st over. The sun disappears again, he's in on bowls, and Lamb in behind that plays to backward point, and there is no run. 
recorded by Rishi uh, Patel. Yeah, the, the crowd is a sort of classic cotton wool this morning above uh, Grace Road. It's dispersed with some sky blue, almost Manchester City or Coventry blue in this neck of the woods. Mm. Uh, but it's quite a high at the moment. So the forecast is possibly for a shower later tomorrow. The forecast is more showers. So how much cricket will we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. So such an important day today in the context of this game. Scriven is in bowls and Lamino, that's a nice shot. Plays that away through Widish. Uh, mid on, it's going to go all the way for four. Lewis Hill is very quick across the ground, but he can't catch that. And Lamb picks up his second boundary of the over. He goes to 11, Sussex to 2.99 for six. What is interesting, Richard, is the debate we had yesterday about should or shouldn't Leicestershire take the, the new ball was it, it was clearly very difficult for Sussex to time the ball and to step up the scoring rate against the old ball. And Leicestershire did that very successfully. With the new ball, they have picked up wickets, but the runs have flowed as well. So it's a, it's a different conundrum for Lewis Hill. In comes Scriven over the wicket. Bowles defended by Lamb. In fact, he managed to turn it down towards fine leg and picks up the single, which is the end of the over. And that's the 300 up for Sussex. A second batting bonus points mean that Sussex have collected now five uh, in the match. 300 for six. Simpson on 36. Uh, Lamb is on 12. The new ball was taken when the score was, I did make a note of it actually, a uh, new ball taken, 254 for four. So they've added, what, 46 in 10 overs. Ten overs. Yeah, so Sussex were going along uh, uh, incredibly slowly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two, I mean, two and over for much of the afternoon yesterday. And since the new ball's been taken, that's up to four and over. But but two wickets. Two, so uh, totally. I, I think the, I think the decision's said, justified. Swings and roundabouts. Yeah. Totally. So it goes behind Cloud Salisbury to continue from the Bennett end over the wicket, of course, to the right handed Lamb, who has a curious stance as in goes Salisbury, bowls to him an off stump. Everything seems to come together in the end, and he blocks it out into the offside, off off stump, out to Ben Mike. Um, it's the dry season in Cambodia, coming into the wet season. I think when it's wet in Cambodia, it's wrong. I've not been, but I think it's pretty wet out there. I don't know if that's the monsoon happens over there. Uh, thank you for listening, Dean. Great to hear from you. Salisbury. Short sleeved shirt. Runs in. Swerves slightly in his run up. Bowls Good looking ball. for the Yorker. Dug out by Lamb. It wasn't a straight one. It was just outside off stump, I suspect. And Lamb came down on it a little late, but he came down on it nonetheless. Remains on 12. 14 balls faced. Just 38 behind now, Sussex. If they can get 80, 100, 150, who knows ahead. Mm. Try and put Leicestershire under pressure. Pitch might start offering Carson something. Towards the end of the day, in goes Salisbury Bowles. Pleasant looking drive from Lamb, but he did just have to check the shot slightly. It was perhaps a touch straighter uh, than he would have liked. Made it firmly out to Marcus Harris. At uh, mid off. Uh, Michael's been in touch, very keen to get on the streaming today and watch. He said he caught a little of the preamble yesterday. We were talking about uh, Easter eggs <laughs> um, and, and the eggs down at Hove some 30 oh, years ago. Oh, the ones on top of the yes. Uh, yes, on top of the floodlights. Salisbury in. Bowl short, hit up into the air, but hit hard and far, and it's going to go out to the mid-wicket boundary and roll over the ropes. It's a long way out there. It's a good 80 yards, and uh, he got plenty of it. It was worth a try because one or two bouncers have been hit up into the air by batsmen on both sides, actually, and uh, two Sussex batsmen have perished at mid-off. Lewis Hill taking a catch in that case, but no danger of that on, on that occasion. Lamb got plenty of it, cleared mid-off by a margin, and all Rishi Patel can do is jog back towards the Building Society family stand. Our, our, our single watcher isn't in there. There are two folks there are. Uh, down in there. Uh, along oh, at the front row. Along the marquee, but mm. uh, yeah, that gentleman who's been in there for the first two days, about <laughs> 120 yards from the bat, is, uh, <laughs> is not there. Now... Leicestershire have put Patel back in case Lamb tries that one again. In goes Salisbury and bowls, and he does drop it short, and he does try it again, but it was a poor bouncer from Salisbury because it was down the leg side, and Lamb 
could absolutely pick his spot. He saw it early and did. He pulled it behind the square and uh, Patel was a long way from the line of the ball. So too was Liam Travaskis. He bisected them and ran down towards the advertising in front of the gates on the Milligan Road there. And Lamb takes consecutive boundaries. Moves the score onto 308. And, uh, well, getting on with it nicely, Danny Lamb. He is, and having said how well Matt Salisbury has bowled, uh, they were two short deliveries, and he's looked a lot better when he's pitched the ball up in. There is the, sort of the trap on the leg side, but I think you were right, it wasn't a great, a great attempted bouncer from Matt Salisbury. In he comes, bowls, and that's a much better delivery line and length. Forward went Lamp, dropped it out into the offside, took a... Stepped down the wicket, but immediately held up his bat to John Simpson. So productive over for Sussex, 308 for six. 95 overs of their innings have been bowled. 11 with the new ball. Sun comes back out. Leicestershire's uh, acting 12th man, Harry Swindles, comes out with a helmet. So it looks like it could be possibly whether it's for Ben Cox to stand up mm, to the I stumps. He did it a couple of occasions yeah, did. when Tom Haynes was uh, batting second Century in as many innings for Haynes yesterday. But it could be also about a short leg as well, where the Lamb has a reputation for popping one or two up. We shall see. Well, Tom Scriven's going to carry on. Michael's been back in touch. In fact, he wasn't talking about the, the, the eggs at home. He was talking, I was re recalling a story before we went on air. Oh, did, you, did you broadcast your I Easter did. Egg I cl clearly, I did, because Michael heard it. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying how I bought my oh, wife, maybe in the, yes. bought my wife an Easter egg, and then um, to put it in the garage so she wouldn't find it, and it got eaten by a mouse, which wasn't great. <laughs> in comes Scriven running away from us. Uh, bowls to John Simpson. Simpson defends to mid off, and there is no run. Michael's off to see Aggers at the Richmond Theatre tonight. So I presume Jonathan Aggers is doing some sort of a, a tour. Three hundred eight for six. Simpson thirty six. Lamb on twenty. Roman Walker has been in touch. He, he's going to come up after lunch to uh, great add a little bit of professional insight. And most welcome he will be again. Oh, he was excellent yesterday. Very good indeed. I don't know whether they put any money on Foxy Jacks in the National yesterday. We were talking about that yesterday. Um, it didn't win. In comes Scriven over the wicket bowl. Simpson drives firmly through the covers and picks up a single. He goes to 37. Uh, Sucks is to 300. And nine for six. Uh, the good news was all the horses got round and um, there were no no, uh, no accidents. So that, that, that was good news yesterday. But we were always oh, a big bumblebee. Oh, he, he was going to fly into our box and then he, he disappeared. Probably looked at us and thought, I'll go somewhere else. <laughs> thanks very much. Yes. Uh, play in all the games around the country this morning, which is nice to see. Like a good game down at Cardiff. Glamorgan 86 for four in their second innings, leading Derbyshire by 125. Yorkshire 73 without loss at Bristol, leading Gloucester by 138. Scriven. Cox is standing up to the stumps now to Lamb. That's a good bit of bowling and beautifully taken by Ben Cox. Uh, that, that, and not only did he take it, he just whipped off the off bail just to remind Danny Lamb not to uh, start to run down the wicket to him. Really lovely. I just, it, it, for, for me, that's one of the, the great sights in cricket is a wicketkeeper standing, you know, a quality wicketkeeper standing up to the stumps. Because, you know, Scriven is, you know, he's not slow, is he? You know, he's, you know, he, he's above medium pace. And, you know, there is Ben Cox standing up to the stumps. Wonderful. In bright sunshine, Scriven runs away from us. Bowls and Lamb edges this to backward point. There is no run. It's a good tactic, isn't it? Because, you know, Daddy Lamb had shown an inclination to get down the track, get after the bowling, and all of a sudden that one move, your keeper confident enough to stand up, just makes Daddy Lamb think twice. I'm not saying he's not going to come running down the track, but he'll need to be careful if he does. It was a lovely delivery from Scriven. It was a little bit like the one that got Pajara just in and then straightened and just did a fraction too much in terms of missing the off stump. Slip is the only close fielder. Scriven running away from us from the pavilion end here at Grace Road. He's in and bowls. And Lamb stretches forward, plays to short extra. There is no run. The only other game in Division 2 is uh, down the M1 at Northamptonshire. Bit of a run fest, to be honest. Northamptonshire 5.52 for 6 declared. Middlesex 133 for 1. So um, 
you know, pretty much what's the same as what's going on at Edgbaston, to be honest. We were saying yesterday Warwickshire 693 for three declared, Durham 196 for three. So six wickets in yeah, two, two and a bit days. Yeah. I'm not sure that's great. Um, more interesting here, though. Scriven is on his way again. Bowls to Lamb, who again is forced to play from the crease, plays out into the offside, and there is no run. So tidy enough from Tom Scriven, who's now by 22 overs. Four maidens taken one for 79. Sussex are 309 for six. John Simpson on 37. Danny Lamb on 20. If you just joined, you're listening to live cricket on the BBC, BBC Radio, Sussex and Leicester. Adrian Harms, Richard Ray, Rita Green is our member of our commentary team today. Rita will be with you. Uh, in about five minutes time if you'd like to get in touch sussex cricket at bbc.co.uk or foxcoms c-o-m-m-s 24 at gmail.com we've got a change of bowling mm. relatively early in proceedings it wasn't a, a great uh, over from matt salisbury last time out was it and scott curry is going to have a go the tall hampshire man he's going to come around the wicket to john simpson one for 41 from 14 for Curry. Thus far in the innings, he got Haynes in the end with one of those short balls that uh, Haynes got off the top of the bat to Hill. Round the wicket he comes, bowls foolish, played firmly down into the ground, bounces once, taken chest high just about by Curry, two hands pointing up. In his follow through, and then he throws it out to Scriven to do a spot of polishing. He's only the 12 overs old. You have to really look after these kookaburras. Mm. Curry turns. Tall, angular figure. Leans forward and stands up tall and bowls straight. And again, he's fielding in his follow through. This time, leaping high into the air. An indication of how hard the pitch is there because played down into the ground by Simpson. It bounced. Well, Curry is uh, not a small man. I would say he's about six four, six, three, something like that. And he did have to jump into the air to take it to one-handed above his head. So it probably bounced a good eight, nine feet into the air. And he comes past umpire Middlebrook and bowls, drags his length back a bit. Simpson on the back foot, plays it out into the offside. Update coming for BBC Radio Leicester. Three hundred and nine four six Sussex. So they haven't lost any wickets this morning. They resumed on two hundred and eighty two for six fifty six behind Leicestershire's first inning score with four wickets in hand. The Foxes fought back well with the ball yesterday, 168 for one at one stage Sussex. But they are now closing in on Leicestershire's first inning score, as I say, less than 30 behind now. And if they can get ahead, they can put Leicestershire under pressure. The Foxes need wickets and they're not coming at the moment. Sussex, 309 for six. came from the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium where Leicester City's ladies or Leicester City women are playing Spurs women in the semi-finals of the FA Cup. Oh, right. Excellent. Ought to be a decent crowd there for that. Curry is in. Bowls. Very straight. Slightly short of a good length and on the back foot Simpson. Very solid. Plays it out to mid on. He's quite busy at the crease, John Simpson, isn't he? After every ball he's wandered sort of two or three strips away towards the square leg umpire. And he wanders back and gets himself ready just in time with a twiddle of the bat as Scott Curry is turning around at the far end. He's very neat, though, as a, as he a is batsman, technique-wise. Excellent. It's the same as his sort of wicket-keeping. In goes Curry, bowls to him. He's looking to turn into the leg side, comes off the pad, trickles out towards backward square. Ben Cox, Leicestershire's keeper, is going to get there first. Will be signalled leg buys by, or leg by even, by umpire Middlebrook. Sussex continue just to tick over nicely. 310 for six they are now. Just 28 behind Leicestershire still with those four first innings wickets in hand. Adrian, I, sorry, I, need gone, Adrian. I need to disappear. I've got You're to do an to update, do update at half for so BBC Radio Sussex. So I'll leave so we'll you with you, Richard. Rita and, uh, alongside Rita. for the first time today. Tom Scriven. Fair hair, glinting the bright sunshine here at uh, the Upton Steel County ground. He's going to continue from the pavilion end. Just the one slip 
now Hanscom alongside Kimber at second has gone to short mid wicket as Scriven is in bowls and Kimber is in the action there is slightly off the inside edge Simpson looking to stroke the ball away straight might just have swung in to him a little bit and rather shovels it out towards Louis Kimber morning to Rita for the first time. Good morning Richard, good morning everybody. Looks Lovely nice day. Out there, doesn't it, at the moment, mm. just thinking that with the sun out and the blossom on the trees alongside the uh, turn indoor centre, in goes Scriven and bowls just outside off stump. Simpson leans forward, guides it with an angle bat but can't get it past the man at uh, backward point who is Matt Salisbury. Intriguing morning. I think this uh, first morning is going to be pretty important for the uh, the destination of this game, Richard, um, that, that the cable, as uh, people are calling it, you know, whether it's soften up, etc. But uh, Leicester have got all to play for here, really, and uh, all to do. Scriven turns in and bowls. On the walk, rather, is Simpson there as he blocks that one out towards extra cover where Curry picks it up. wonder whether Cox might just put his head. Yeah, there you go. Cox takes his son hat off, having seen that. He, he was moving mm. well out of his crease there, Simpson. And uh, Cox reveals that uh, dyed mop <laughs> underneath his cap and then puts his helmet on. If it isn't dyed, it's an extraordinary colour, his hair. <laughs> Very fair. Scriven is in bowl simpson is driving over pitched a little bit there but he does have the sweeper out on the offside boundary ben mike's out there in front of the popular seats alongside the meat gets his throw it is just a single to simpson will cox stay up yes he will for lamb as well 311 for six they are closing in now on on, on that leicestershire first innings and as i say a sort of lead of any sort of lead might be useful 60 mm. 80 but 100 it sounds ambitious, but it could come quite quickly. Scriven. Little shuffle, then he gets into his run. Bowls. Lamb is turning the delivery off. Middle and leg. Leg stump out again towards the boundary. Ben Mike has stayed out there as the sun goes behind Cloud. It is just a single out there. It is a relatively short boundary. Probably about 60 yards on that side, the west side of the ground. Quite different to the other side of the ground, isn't it? Where you say... Acres and acres 80, of space. 85, something mm, like that on, on the yeah. other mm. side. Big outfield here at uh, Grace Road. The finish is over. Scriven is in bowls to Simpson. Plays it down into the ground. It bounces behind him, but uh, on the angle of about 45 degrees. Cox scrambles after it, but realises it's going to be a comfortable enough stop for Hanscom at Slip, end of the over, 312 for six. Partnership worth 30 now between Lamb and Simpson, so you can work it out. 30 runs added already today in not much more than half an hour. Very useful start for Sussex today. Indeed, yes, and just ticking along pretty nicely. Not many scares along the way. A couple of plays and misses, but nothing extraordinary uh, out there. And John Simpson and especially I think is uh, going to play such a key part today that really experienced uh, cricketer I always think of him as a was a Middlesex man right more than uh, <laughs> more than anything but uh, uh, here out for Sussex and here starts uh, the next over from the Bennett end and the first ball of the over in the sunshine now and it's turned into the onside to mid wicket and there is no run how do you how do you see Leicestershire this season then so far obviously very early stages but in terms of the squad and the um promise for the season richard how would you how would you see it yeah no it's been it's been largely positive obviously didn't have an awful lot of cricket up, up at headingley but came away from that game with 13 points have a very strong batting lineup um you know bat all the way down the order as, as they've seen curry is in and this one is pushed to the offside and there's no run if there are any question marks, they are over with the ability to take 20 wickets. I think every side mm. probably feels that way with the uh, Kookaburra and, and, and sort of a early season, sort of flatter tracks. But 
It is a relatively inexperienced attack without Chris Wright missing for, for personal reasons, and we don't know whether or if indeed Chris will b will be back. But you know, t you take away the sort of leading wicket taker, and uh, the seam attack is always look going to look a bit light. It's got Curry in, and this one is a uh, full delivery defended and goes straight out to point no run. Yeah, that's the key, isn't it? How are you going to get 20 wickets? How are you, how are you going to bowl out a side twice? And um, putting a massive load. We've seen that already in the game, haven't we? That massive load of uh, overs on um, on the players. I thought Ben Mike. Um, oh gosh, I hope he I hope he put his feet up last night, especially. Well, I know for many of the bowlers, uh, it has been quite quite a day. Next delivery comes in, and this one is pulled, but absolutely missed. Came in half, and Lamb just cannot believe that he didn't quite nick that or absolutely push it into the onside for an easy single at least how on earth did he miss that richard hit over the top of it didn't he just one or two from that the bennett end or have, have stayed a little bit low and that one wasn't sufficiently low to sort of clip the top of off stump it, you know, it was the length was right and he picked it early but it didn't really get up like he thought it was going to Nowhere near. Next delivery comes in. What will, will happen this time? This one, a very Ooh. full delivery. In fact, a full toss pushed into the onside as it deserved. And a nice uh, bit of fielding there from uh, mid on. And they go through for a single. That is not the response that Curry would have wanted, actually. They he would have wanted a, a similar delivery to the one before. But one more to the total. 313 for six. Lamb onto 22. Simpson onto 38. Yeah, I'm still thinking about that delivery. That could have been the difference, really, this morning for Leicestershire. But uh, wasn't to be, and he'll go down as a dot ball in the scorebook. Here comes Curry. This one, a nice full delivery. Defended and no run. And uh, Curry, did you see that there? Just came through a little bit more down the wicket and his follow through uh, to the batter just to say, look, I'm here. I'm working really hard. But the end of the over, 313 for six. Simpson on 38, Lamb on 22. Partnership 31. They'll be looking for a breakthrough here, Leicestershire. And uh, Sussex will be looking for a lead. Yeah, it looks like they're going to get one. The question is, how big will it be? Just just a couple of deliveries every now and then. Just keep it. I spotted them. 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 I well, well, superstition, well, right? Superstition. So, you know, do, do you really want to yeah. change it, or do you want to stick with it? Could be. But like I said, Marcus Harris, uh, uh, opposite side, mid off, immaculate. He, uh, he he doesn't dive around, Marcus. <laughs> In goes Ben and bowls. Ben Mike, that is slapped away. Mike is in and bowls outside off stump again, slapped out into the offside. That might go all the way. Can Travaskis get there? He can. Good dive from he does make sure he get plenty on it and he's chased on to 26 now from just 32 deliveries it kind of takes the pressure off Simpson as well Simpson can play himself in nicely or replay himself in nicely and has done well lamb cracks on at the other end Mike in again to lamb line and length and lamb the straight ball covers up and uh, there's no run on that occasion Excellent work in the deep there, isn't it, Richard? You know, to really save the boundary, save a run here and there. That makes such a difference in, in the game. But uh, Ben Mike hasn't got his line and length right so far in this over. And as you say, Lamb is probably pouncing on anything he can that's short and wide and anything too full is being, uh, is being dispatched. He started a bit erratically yesterday, Ben, before settling down in his second and third spells. In he goes and bowls. Fraction short again. But a much better line and uh, on the off stump. It's dropped out into the offside by Lamb. You heard the call of no. I was about to say the Lancastrian call of no, but you've got to be a bit careful with that. Well, those played for Lancashire. Is, is he actually from? Was it was it was he born in Lancashire, Danny Lamb? I'll find out for you. End of the over, 317th. Yes, he was born in Preston. So uh, absolutely he was born in Lancashire. And he's 28 years old. Indeed. He went, he went to school in Chorley. Which sounds very Lancaster, Lancaster, doesn't <laughs> it? <laughs> it's that neck of the woods, indeed. We'll talk about his sister in a moment, actually, as well. I don't know if you know about Emma Lamb, but uh, start of the of the team on the very but it's been a time to do the nice shot there. Four to the total, three hundred and twenty-one for six. Yeah, lovely shot. 
Oh, I love an on drive. I feel like I'm. I was. <laughs> I said this a lot last last week on the Sunday at the Kent Somerset game. Love an on drive, but nicely timed. Just shows the uh, the nick that Simpson's in. Next delivery comes in from Curry. This one's a bit shorter and defended, and there is no run. Simpson, uh, in a uh, keeper, five years young. And plenty of experience. And I really like this left-handed, right-handed um, arrangement, of course. You know, I know it's the old cliche, but it it just puts more on the shoulders of the skipper of the uh, fielding side for fielding arrangements. Here comes Curry again. This one's shorter, defended, and there is no run. Sunshine out. This uh, Sunday morning, day three. I don't know if you're a Simpson. But it's the opening scene in... Um, we sometimes in describe Simpsons, them as Simpsons yeah. cloud, you know, so white Simpsons. fluffy Simpsons. things and blue sky behind them. Yeah, indeed. Not that, to do with the day. the batter Simpson, but the the program more like. But uh, you imagine that blue skies, fluffy clouds, definitely fresh mm. compared to yesterday when I was out in the sunshine. Right, a bit of a chat here between Curry and the skipper, and there's going to be a change of. In the we've got. It was the very first concussion replacement um, mm. in, in cricket. Next delivery, Curry from the Bennett end. And this one's very, very full and defending. There's no run. I'm surprised Simpson didn't try and drive that. He's going for a little walk to the square layer umpire. The reason I say that is listening to uh, the both of you in commentary for the first half now, anything that was pretty full overly full was being driven and uh, maybe Simpson was thinking well maybe I could have done the same there he held it back a bit though Curry if he had it would have hit it in the air so mm. it, it was well bowled and well played last delivery of the over this one is pushed nicely <laughs> nick, the, uh, nick the strike and be on strike for the next over. Anyway, end of the over. Three, two, two, four, six. Lamb on 26, Simpson on 43. You're right there. I think it was probably a good decision not to drive, overdrive that into the arms of any fielder. But Sussex, I hate to say it, Richard, are going on pretty well yeah, here. It's, it's been a super start mm. um, for them. Partnership 40 in good time. Got the run rate back up uh, well over threes now. 3.2 for the innings as a whole. And they're... Uh, just 16 behind the Benelux again. We have a single look on the wall leg. You can't have to take it. From our side, Wilson has a word with Ben Mike as he walks back to the top of his mark, top of his run. One for 76 from for, for Ben now from 20.1 over. Simpson on to 44. Lamb 26. Mike is in. Bowls to Lamb. Short pulled over. Peter Hanscom on the uh, boundary edge and uh, into the popular seats over there. It wasn't far over Hanscom, and it is a short hit, but it is a short hit. That was probably worth a try from, from Ben Mike. It went right over the fielder, Hanscom, but over the fielder it was. So six to Lamb into the 30s now, on to 32 off 35. 3 2 9 for six. Just nine behind. What will Mike try this time? In he goes, bowls, short again, goes for the hook, caught down the leg side, no, says, oh, they are absolutely convinced, Leicester, Ben Mike cannot believe that umpire Pollard has not given that, hands on heads all around the outfield, well, they were absolutely certain there, Leicestershire, and I say they were really a pretty quiet and, um, nice bunch but no Empire Pollard didn't get anything on that and actually Lamb is sort of looking pointedly at his sort of left shoulder so there was a sound it did hit something but Lamb sort of indicating that it hit around about where the sort of sponsor's name is a little red mark on his at uh, the top of his left sleeve in goes Mike and he put a little bit extra into that delivery outside off stump though he missed uh, directed it and Lamb could leave it. Yeah, there was definitely contact and I could see why Ben Mike was convinced that that was a, uh, a wicket, from prob probably from a glove from his perspective, but yeah, it could have come off the shoulder. I've watched the replay now three times, Richard, and I'm uh, 
I'm convinced there was contact, but what contact? And uh, it probably was a fair decision. If you're not quite sure as an umpire, oh, well, absolutely. you can't give it, give it out, can absolutely. you? Absolutely. Mike in, down the leg side, Fuller. And uh, down on one knee, Lamb is trying to flick it away over somewhere over the electronic scoreboard, I suspect, into the gardens or into the nets area, but doesn't get anything on, a, on that occasion. A bit extra in those two deliveries from Ben Mike, and as a consequence, he rather lost his line in both of them. Oh, Benny boy, shouts uh, one of his teammates. The sound of Lamb's bat hitting the crease and how hard it is as Mike is in. Bowls to him, looking for the orchid dugout. Well played by Lamb. Well bowled by Mike. Well batted by Danny Lamb. And looks on as Ben Mike takes his cap from uh, umpire Pollard. He's so uh, such a approachable and, and nice chap, Ben Mike. I would imagine that the conversation would be perfectly amicable between the two of them. Right. Uh, it was shoulder bent. Can't give that end of the over. Three two nine for six. Just nine runs behind now, Sussex. Yeah, seven from the over, but uh, a pretty intriguing over actually. I think uh, Mike was playing some pretty good mind games with the batter there, Lamb. Set it up on a plate actually for uh, for the pull shot, but it went for six. Here comes the next delivery, the first delivery of the next over, and Curry comes in, and there's no run. I think Peter Hanscom was thinking he was absolutely in business there for uh, a catch right into uh, right into his hands but it went sailing over his head but not by much no not by it, it sort no. of hit the first row of seats which and it's quite close to the boundary there so it, yeah and he's a tall chap as well so it, he really probably thought he was in business and then uh, the next delivery big shout for court behind off the glove wasn't to be next delivery in and this one is defended push back to the bowler there's no run John he he's repping the times of uh, defending the stroke really nicely it feels like this is a quite an effortless less effort oh, not lack of effort let's let's move do you know what? i had trouble with that word last weekend as well the 44 has been done with minimal effort there you go ladies and gentlemen <laughs> I'm here all day. Uh, <laughs> Simpson on strike on 44 from 103 deliveries. Curry in. And this one's driven to the offside, but uh, pretty much straight to cover. And there is no run. Didn't climb up off the bottom of that. Yeah. I don't know whether Simpson would say it was effortless. He, he had to work fairly hard <laughs> yes, yesterday. Now you're just showing um, off with that word there, Richard. <laughs> Thank <not> you. <laughs> he, he was made to work against that soft kookaburra it was hard for them to, to get it away so it was a case of just being patient 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 round the wicket curry and this one's a Ooh. full toss and uh, push to the cover area for just a single just guided off the hand or was it off the leg actually of the fielder anything will do to try and save four but that should have been dispatched for four actually I think symptoms feel like he missed out there one more to the total 330 for six he just jarred his knee as, he, as it went into the... Is that Ben Mike as well? It is. Oh, he's, the, uh, in, the he's lush, in business today. He's turf. in the field, with the ball, with the bat, all rounder in every way. Here comes Curry. And this one is short delivery. And <laughs> Lamb just about gets underneath it and is a little bit off balance. He rehearses a stroke that is the famous ramp shot The many... Modern cricketers want to play nowadays, but uh, that's what he'll play next time is what he's showing the fielders there. But will he? That's the question. Curry, the last delivery of the over to Lamb. This one's a shorter delivery. Push to the offside. Think about a single for about a millisecond, and there is no run. You're re listening to uh, BBC Radio Sussex. BBC Radio Leicester, also online on the BBC Sport app uh, website. My name is Rita Green, alongside Richard Ray and Adrian Harms will be rejoining us pretty shortly. But intriguing morning so far. It's not going Leicester's way for now, but we know that the game can change pretty quickly, that's for sure. Yeah, it, it did yesterday. Yeah, it's yesterday. been Sussex's morning so far. Yes, been Very wide awake so. in the morning yesterday. First ball of the uh, of the innings was a no, was a wicket, and also the last well, three ball last night. Fell, yeah, three mm. wickets fell in the first twenty minutes yesterday, uh, but not today. And 
at Ben Mikes trying to change that. He's going around the wicket to John Simpson. Past umpire Pollard bowls nice and straight. Simpson covers up, plays it firmly back down the track. Bounces to Ben Mike who throws it to his captain, Lewis Hill, to do a spot of polishing. Sun behind cloud at the moment. The air temperature drops markedly. Just the gully now, just uh, Louis Kimber at gully, alongside Ish Ben Cox behind the stumps as Mike is in to Simpson, who is punching away through the offside. He's got it wide of Scott Curry. There is the sweeper out there on the offside boundary, who is Peter Hanscom at the moment. He gets his throw away on the bounce to Cox. Lamb, almost hyperactive at the crease, hops out of the way. As you say, he sort of um, rehearsed the... Uh, on both knees ramp that he missed about that ba curry bouncer in, in his previous over and he was trying to engage Cox and Kimber in a sort of smiling conversation neither of them responded they, they don't tend to do that and they looked uh, distinctly unimpressed and uh, remained expressionless goes to leg gully now as Mike goes into the right handed lamb who defends the straight ball he is drawn into pushing at it without getting to the pitch of it. And it's just in the air for a foot or two as it leaves the bat. Mike's hands started to go into the air. We have seen, in fact, Mike himself was caught and bowled, although that, that wasn't a sort of ball that might have stopped on him a bit, it, but it was more of a leading edge than a sort of a top of the bat sort of caught and bowled. In fact, was it Lamb who, who got him caught and bowled? Let me just, yeah, it was Danny Lamb who got him, so... Mike looking to return the favour. In he goes. Bowls to Lamb, who gets a foolish delivery on leg stump. Chips it in the air, but well wide of Scott Curry out towards Hanscom on that leg side boundary. One is taken. 332 for six. And that is the 50 partnership between Messrs. Lamb and Simpson. Lamb has 33 of them. Done a very good job for his side. And the two wander down, meet in mid-pitch and shake hands in... Well, the pleasingly old-fashioned way. None of your punching gloves business. They actually shook hands. <laughs> Love it. Don't see that very often these days. Nice to see, as you say. Nice to see. Mike, round the wicket to the left hand. Simpson, bold. Oh. Hooks. Gets it off a bit of a top edge down to fine leg. 4-4. Four, four. And that is Simpson's 50. Well, that's a slightly false shot, but it's been a, an outstanding innings from the Sussex skipper. His maiden 50 for his new county and it's been a really important knock as well he's taken them to within touching distance of Leicestershire's first inning score with a lot of power to add 336 for six Simpsons 50 came off 108 balls nice innings definitely really nice to watch that definitely wasn't in control that sort of hook shot but it went to the boundary rope and uh, that's all that matters Mike in again, bowls on off stump, pleasant drive from Simpsons, but it's gone straight to Curry along the ground all the way at a shortish extra cover. End of the 104th over. Six fours, you probably heard uh, it announced there, 108 balls and six fours. Uh, for John Simpson, and with Lamb going nicely at the other end, and uh, Carson, Carvelas, and who's t'other to come? One other to come. Well, Sussex will be looking to... Jaden Seals as well. Jaden Seals, yeah. that's mm -hmm. the man. We'll be looking to uh, build now that first innings lead. He's very, looking very cool and calm this morning, Jaden. I saw him uh, signing a couple of autographs. Danny Lamb on uh, strike. Now, I promised this fact about uh, his sister... And, you oh know, yes, as, as a women's cricketer, you know, I can't turn up here without talking about women's cricket. Um, but sister Emma Lamb plays for the Lancashire women and the Northwest Thunder as well. So talented cricket family. Lamb on strike. This open stance. This one's a shorter, sort of, well, wow, slightly short of length delivery, but defended nicely. And there's no run. What I like about this partnership is that you've got two different types of styles. I think Lamb's trying to move around the crease a little bit, trying to make things happen. He's one of these sort of active batters that's always looking around, even now between the deliveries, looking for the gaps, looking to try and find a way to get off strike, really, or get some runs on the ball. 33 from 44, so decent strike rate as well.
and Simpson more of a traditional a traditional style I'd say over the wicket here comes the next delivery and uh, this one's from Shriven by the way by the way new bowler from the Bennett end with 88 on his back I thought Tom Shriven is you know decent bowler and definitely a decent uh, all-round cricketer in your ranks isn't it you know uh, what do you think about Shriven and what about his prospects for the season well he had a, a very good season with the ball and to a certain extent with the bat uh, last year it sort of developed into a really sort of frontline bowler opened the bowling with Wright and in Wright's absence is certainly um, considered probably Leicestershire's premier seam bowler at, at the moment picked up 39 wickets last year Cox up to the wicket now with the helmet I think that's a good decision I think Curry's Curry I think Lamb's <laughs> moving around all over the place uh, aborted run up there from uh, Tom Triven I don't know if uh, something just distracted him but the right thing to do as a bowler start again go back to your mark and here he comes second uh, third delivery of the over this one is nicely defended and there is no run I really like I really like it when uh, I think you were talking about this with Adrian when the wicket keeper has the talent has the really the confidence to come up to the wicket I think that's so, so good there's so many mind games that go on on the cricket pitch yes being there physically that's that means that you can just whip off those vowels really quickly but also just being in the ear of the batter you know 33 from 46 Leicestershire will be trying to get a wicket any way they can here comes the next delivery coming in and this one's pushed into the onside there's a chase on they take the quick single they go back for the second as well nicely fielded but two more to the board two very easy runs there just pushed into the acres of space into the onside two more to the total 338 for six is now the total scores level the exact absolutely took the words right out of my so mouth no 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 quite rightly quite rightly and we are even stevens but four wickets in hand for uh, sussex and Danny Lamb on strike will be looking to do the same as his partner here, get over the 50 mark and even beyond. Next delivery comes in from Shriven. A full delivery and a lovely on drive. Nicely timed, shows the confidence and the nick that uh, Lamb is in and goes over the boundary rope for four runs. And nicely, nicely played there, Danny Lamb. Hello, Adrian. Hello, Rita. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? And are you impressed with uh, the morning so far for Sussex? Well, I am, and I, 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 and I think you know we have to give a, a, a good amount of praise here to Paul Farbrace, the Sussex coach, because you know he's brought in these two players during the winter. He spent last year assessing the squad, deciding more experience was needed, and that's exactly what's happened this morning. Shriven with the last ball of the over, nicely defended by Lamb, and there is no run. I wonder whether you want, want to swap places, actually, Adrian. This is my, my this might be uh, an okay. interesting uh, do, do you know, manoeuvre. My, my laptop. <laughs> I've been waiting two years to get a new battery for it. <laughs> let, let We're not very well resourced, you know. Uh, so I have to keep it. Yeah. So let's, should we do quickly turn off the effects, Mike? Indeed. Mics? In Seamless. <laughs> no one would have known. If we had have said magic. anything, Rita, no, no one listening at home would have thought, oh, what's going on? Right, the next handover, we'll, we'll just do it seamlessly. Yeah, we will. We the won't magic tell of radio We there. won't tell anyone. <laughs> no, but it's been a very good partnership between these two, uh, uh, and the runs have come very quickly, and that's just what Sussex needed this morning. Um, I felt they were pretty slow yesterday afternoon. That could have been a combination. Well, I think it was a combination of three things, really. A, the ball going soft makes it more you know, difficult to score quickly. B... Uh, some felt good field placing by Lewis Hill, the Leicestershire captain, and some good bowling by Leicestershire. So I think those three, um, just the Sussex innings sort of seem to stall. But this morning, against this newer ball, Simpson and Lamb have been really positive. And jo I mean, D Danny Lamb, um, perhaps not as technically correct as John Simpson, who's batted beautifully, but playing a really good innings for his side here. 39 or 49 balls. And uh, Liam Travassi is coming into the attack. 18 overs, three maidens. No wicket for 52, Travassi. And he comes in over the wicket and bowls. And immediately swept away by Simpson. Back to the square. That could go all the way to the boundary, actually. He's running towards the rope now. And it does go for four. Nicely swept around the corner by wow. 
John Simpson. And the outfield is quickening because I, for a moment I thought, oh, Ben White was going to overhaul that. But in the end, four more to Simpson. He goes to 54. Sussex to 346 for six. They've added this morning, uh, Rita. They ended on... Do you know what? I think it's 64. Yes, it is, 64. Because I think the partnership probably started, didn't yeah. it, last time? But I, that's not my amazing maths. No. And, jo and John um, Simpson, who began the day, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's been really good this morning from, from Sussex. In comes uh, Travaskis Bowl. Simpson just forward plays him to the offside. There is no run. I threw in a wow there. Sorry, I feel like I need to justify that a little bit. Yeah, go on. Up the hill, Ben Mike chasing and a pretty, pretty soft outfield. I was, I was quite surprised that went over the boundary rope. Travaskis in again, Bowl Simpson back and thumps that away through extra cover. That's going to be the second boundary of the over. And that's a lovely shot by Simpson. It was a little too short from Lee and Travaskis. But John Simpson leant back and crashed the ball through extra cover for four runs. The 350 is up for Sussex. So three batting bonus points secured for Sussex to go with the three bowling. There's only another four and a half overs. So I don't think we're going to get to 400. But nonetheless, Sussex will feel that they've... Got those points in the bag. Travaskis in bowls. And Simpson added again. He plays this one firmly down the ground to long on where it's fielded by Marcus Harris. One more to the total. Simpson to 59. Sussex 351 for six. Um, Phil pennicott has been in touch. Hello, Phil. He says, hello, Ri hello, Adrian and Richard. And the young lady whose name I didn't catch. <laughs> they are young lady, Rita. There you go. Young lady. Yeah. Th sorry, who is that from? Uh, Phil. Phil. You, charm will get you everywhere. My name's Rita, <laughs> and my surname's Green. Uh, uh, gosh, young. I'll take that. I'll yeah. definitely take that. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah. Thank well, you I think very much. I, I think Richard and I would. Have, in fact, as I came <laughs> into the ground today, the uh, the guy at the gate said to me, "You park over there, young man." I thought, "Oh, well, okay." <laughs> so, perhaps we're wearing well. I don't know. Castro <laughs> Vasquez <laughs> bowls and Lamb is down the wicket and hits it high, wide, and handsome. And that has gone all the way for six runs over long on. And these two are really stepping on the accelerator. Danny Lamb goes to 45. So it's 357 for six. They came together at the close of play last night when the score was 282 for six. So they've added 18 and 57, which is 75 this morning in a little over an hour. Here comes Travaskis. Round the wicket bowls and Lamb plays that firmly down the track and there is no run. It's been a really good response uh, from Sussex. End of Travaskis is over. I think it took a bit of a bashing in that over. 19 overs, three maidens, no wicket for 67. And the Sussex lead up to 19 and we're some drinks being bought out by uh, by Sean Hunt. This has been a good response, Re Rita, this morning. Very much so. 15 from the over there. I get the impression that Lamb and Simpson were absolutely waiting for the uh, the spinner to come on and uh, pounce on those slightly short and wide deliveries um, I was really impressed with that first delivery being um, paddled round the corner swept up the hill for four great timing there from Johnson so I'm pretty impressed here as you say two new uh, additions to, to yeah. Sussex as well they'll probably want to get off to a, a flying start of course and um, puts as much pressure on as possible. I think Leicestershire, have th they've got to be slightly concerned here. The game is it's not sort of fluttering away. Don't, I'm not sort of overdoing the hype here, but the runs are definitely flowing. Start of the next over from Triven. Here he comes. First delivery is defended and there's no run. Uh, so Phil says in the rest of his uh, email, he says, I enjoy the coverage except the buffeting that affected matters yesterday. Maybe others have commented, but if your techies can do anything, that would be great. It stops and then a keystone cops of cricketers appears <laughs> with pinky and perky sound lights appearing to commentate. Yeah, I, 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 there have been problems here, Phil, and I know that Richard Ray, who's the Leicestershire commentator, has spoken to the club and the club are aware. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the issues are, but... Um, I'm, I'm sorry for that frustration, Phil, but thank you for getting in touch, and Sussex going along nicely. Next delivery, defended, and there is no run. Is it worth mentioning, I think, some email addresses? Yes. So foxcoms24 at gmail.com or sussexcricket at bbc.co.uk. And if you fancy a bit of X posting, I'm uh, at Rita Green UK, I believe. Mm. That's because there's lots of Rita Greens around the world. Oh, there. you ask. Yes. It's um, <laughs> more common than you think. Uh, but there we go. Probably be the only one talking about cricket. Um, <laughs> but there we go. Shriven, I think he's, he's, he's definitely needing to 
tighten up his line length consistently here, but good over so far. This one's driven into oh the uh, offside, really nicely fielded by the ever versatile Rishi Patel, who was uh, is feeling that a little bit, but no, you know, he's got up, he's ready for the next one. Number 26 on his back. Thought he batted quite well, actually, the other day. Yes, he batted beautifully mm. on the first day. I put out a tweet this morning, Rita, just questioning why county games can't start at 10.30. We do in mm. September, and I, I really don't understand why they don't start at that time in, well, actually, the rest of the year, to be perfectly honest. And, and certainly in April, when night can become an issue at the end of the day. John Simpson on strike left-handed. This one is defended, and there's no run. Completely and utterly agree with you. Yeah. As we were coming in this morning, bright sunshine, Ready to go, you know, any time really from 8.39. Well, we've got a few replies. Steve Still Harris good. says, um, I think the Kookaburra ball might help facilitate it as the Dukes ball might do too much early and late in the season uh, where most of the championship is now played. A Yorkshire Grumbler says, due in the morning will make the first 30 minutes bowler friendly. It already is between 11 and 11.30. So that's a view from uh, the Yorkshire Grumbler. Thank you for getting in touch. A few more replies I'll read out tight over so far from Tom Shervin. This one is nicely defended and there's no run. Uh, Phil Tibbs says also um, got some players tucking into piles of food at lunch and surely it's just a break to give the players a little rest these days. Thank you Phil. Reese says they'd have to move Hollyoaks for a 10.30 start. Ben <laughs> says agreed. They also need to look at changing this ball more frequency as it goes soft too quickly the rest of his tweet in a mo. Thank yes. you, Ben. Yeah, thank you very much for all the correspondence. Next one is defended and there is run no run. In fact, that is a maiden over Tom, from Tom Triven. I think that's exactly what Leicestershire needed Tom. after giving away 15 in the last over. Score 35746. Your thoughts, Adrian, in a moment, please. Yeah. On the cable or kookaburra ball. Yes. Everyone's got something to say about it. Yeah, they have. But I'll just finish what Ben says here. Sure. He says, the rules on this haven't kept up with the modern version of cricket where the ball is hit harder more often. And Rebecca says, I thought that too. I have no idea why it needs to start so late in the morning. Half an hour at the beginning of the day would help with half an hour, would help with half an hour less at the end, especially with lighting. I'm a bit torn about the kookaburra ball, Rita. I interviewed Finn Hudson Prentice at the end of the first day. Expecting Finn to say, yeah, we don't like it, it doesn't do anything, it doesn't swing, it's really hard work. And Finn said, well, it gives you an idea as to where you are as a bowler. Um, I'll explain that in a minute. In comes Trabascus and bowls, and Lamb sweeps that around the corner and picks up one. He might pick up two. There's a slight misfield, but it doesn't cost. Um, was due 46. No, we had 56. So I think Finn was making the point that... Um, it, you know, it is harder with Kookaburra ball, but it makes you upskill yourself. It makes you a better bowler. Mm. So, so f you know, that, I thought that was quite interesting. And, and we had Roman Walker up here yesterday from uh, Leicestershire, uh, young bowler, and he said much the same. So I thought that was quite interesting to get the views of those guys. In comes Travaskis and bowl. Simpson plays down the track, fielded by Travaskis, and there is no run. But that being said... There have been some games which have just been run fest, which I think have been awful games to watch. I mean, I can't believe there was much fun. You know, well done to Sam North East last week, but mm -hmm. 600 against 600. Edge that and his edge as oh well. Yeah, it's, been, that, yeah. <laughs> it's been runs. If you love runs, yeah. it's great, but not very competitive. In comes Travaskis, bowls, and down the onside of the track is Simpson. There is no run. So um, I, c I could see the point that both Finn and Roman were making yesterday. I think in general terms, in comes... Trabascus again, played down the track by Simpson, no run. There was a piece by Mike Atherton in the press last week, and he was saying, particularly at this time of year, is it a good idea? Because outfields are soft, they're wet, the ball soaks up the ball. It, it, you know, it doesn't make for great cricket. In comes um, Trabascus again. Simpson plays down the track, and there is no run. So there, you know, there are two sides to every argument. I, I can understand that they want England, when they're going out to Australia, to have used playing with the Kookaburra ball. But... Um, Mm. Maybe it's not the right time of the season to try it. Travaskis in bowls and played by Simpson out into the covers. That's good over from uh, Liam Travaskis. 358 for six, just the one run coming off of it. Lamb is on 46. Simpson is on 59. Rita gets the award for commentator of the day. Richard's had it on the first two days because he bought digestive biscuits. But Rita has sort of even got an extra mile. We've got... Um, 
orange velvet pearls made by a famous manufacturer we probably should mention well and why not thorntons there are others and uh, some ginger nuts as well i like ginger nuts are, are they oh. just ginger nuts or ginger nuts with cream they're, they're, no they did gi- standard ginger nuts okay well that's all right i've gone, well, I've gone uh, you know the traditional route right. that's okay because I, I, I did actually completely overthink this and and by the way, these are for us, and I'm not taking them home, so please do devour them. We better tuck in time. then. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, but back to the cricket, just for a moment. Uh, Tom Trivard in over the wicket, and this one is cut away into the offside, but there's a man in the deep, at sort of deep point, and they go through for a single. It was short and wide and deserved that treatment. Uh, nicely played stroke, 3-5-9 for six. Uh, email from Clive Jacobs on Sussex Cricket at bbc.co.uk. It's quite a lengthy email, so I'll perhaps read this at the end of the over, uh, Rita. But just going back to the um, the kookaburra ball, I think it's been a bit of a distraction in some respects as well, because actually there have been some uh, fantastic uh, performances in the in in the in the the first round that have gone a bit unnoticed actually. Um, but but everyone's talking about the kookaburra ball. Yes, after 20 overs, it doesn't really do a huge amount that's the, the the general feeling here but look here's a classic case had about 20 overs of the of the kookaburra ball oh you're going to mess up my what i was going to say now chaps <laughs> there's a sh- there was a short fielder that was coming in here no, no he's going to stick around that's great just coming to the offside i really like this move actually from leicestershire let's get in the eye line of simpson who's well in here next delivery oh and this one's tried to be cut and it was nowhere near wide enough to cut but uh, I mean, uh, two, six and eight for three, and Durham two fifty six for four. You know that doesn't seem a great a, a great game, does it? Um, at Chelmsford, Essex five hundred and thirty for seven, Kent two eighty seven for four. Is that the Kookaburra ball? Is it flat pitches? Maybe a combination of both. Next delivery from Shrevin is in, and this one is pushed to the onside. That will make Simpson feel a lot better on that delivery, and there's no run, nothing like bat on ball. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the jig back for the next uh, And there's a round later in the summer with two rounds of the Kookaburra ball. So we'll... Mm-hmm. Um, I, mean, I think he... Uh, so I was just interested to get those views of those two bowlers, both Roman yeah. Walker yesterday and Finn Hudson Prentice, who uh, w- were not totally disparaging of the ball by any manner of means. And Mike Atherton has a good point as well in terms of the stage of yeah. season to try it. Triven in. This one's defended and there is no run. I mean, we've got to start, you know, very much thinking about the ashes. I know, I know that's and people might say t- too far away, Rita. You know, twenty twenty five. Why are we doing it now? Yeah. But I, I do see some of the logic behind it. I see both sides, to be honest. No, no. And I really no. like the view f- view from uh, from Finn as well. That actually, from a bowler's perspective, you've got to up your game. You know, it is what it is. It's the yeah. it's the same for both sides. I like that mentality as, yes. as you do too. I'm sure. Right, Simpson on 59 from 127 deliveries. Here he comes, and this one's defended from Shriven, and there's no run. Uh, uh, you know, would people have said, oh, yeah, this is awful, you know, mm. four-day cricket over in two days. So, I mean, there is a balance between the two. You know, I, I don't think it's good to have a game like there was at Lords last week. I don't believe, well, I think Atherton was making that point as well. You're not going to get people queuing around the block to watch cricket like that. I mean, yes, all right, loads of records might have been broken, but, you know, not a great game. Blonde head, Triven comes in and really bends his back into that one. Good over. Left, and there is no run. Just one out for 77. Mm. That's gone by in an absolute flash, in my humble opinion. 3-5-9-4-6 is the scoreline. And Lamb on 47, so looking for his half century. He is indeed. To add to the 41 he made last week. Uh, hi, Adrian, Rita and Richard. Uh, 10.30am should be a start time. I fully agree, says John Malone. Uh, the stream would be cured by the techies turning it, switching it on and off. I think they'll try a hard job. That's what I tend Good to do. Advice. Switch it on and off, but you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, interesting day yesterday. Keep up the good work. He said a quick 250 lead for Sussex and try and bowl Leicester out. Might be on. I'm sure have a four back. Comes up because bowls us. And there we go. After an evening deep last week, Sussex played well. In comes Travaskis. Bowls. Lamb drives down the ground, picks up a single. He goes to 48, 360. For six, and had the weather been kinder, a Sussex win was on the cards. Away at Grace Road this week, the game has proved to be somewhat dour and may not live long in the memory. Uh, having won the toss, the new skipper John Simpson decided to field without Ollie Robinson, which seems an odd decision as the match has progressed. Two opening bowlers are a must, and with Ollie often unavailable, a third joining in quick is a must if Sussex go into the first division, uh, says John. 
He also goes on to say the batting is looking solid. Uh, Finn Hudson Prentice has improved as a bowler, which is good to hear, and he's now looking a good all rounder. Says Clive, in comes Trevaskis Bowles, forward comes Simpson onto the onside no run. With Tom Haynes firing again and with spin options looking okay. So that's that's commonly goes. The issue with Olbison, uh, Clive, is that the ECB have allowed him to play five of the first seven games. Trevaskis in and bowls. Simpson using his feet drives to Rishi Patel, who's folding in fairly tight there at a straightish mid wicket, and there is no run. Trevaskis again. In and bowls forward comes Simpson. Head right over the ball, no run. Um, and I must admit, I thought having taken wickets last week, Ollie might play here mm -hmm. because to keep his place in things, so he's going to need to bowl. And Ollie said he needs to bowl um, and he needs to take wickets. And there's any surprise to anybody. In comes Travaskis, bowls forward comes Simpson, played down the offside of the track, no run. End of the over, tidy enough from. Uh, John Simpson, from John Simpson, from Liam Trevaskis, he's on 59, Lamb is on 48, 360 for eight, as Sussex, as Rita was saying, a lead of 22. That being said, it was his first game last week for a long time, maybe Sussex just being a little careful, he's had some injuries, Ollie, but there is no question um, you'd expect him to play next week against Gloucestershire, and an attack of you know, Robinson, Seal, backed up by Hudson Prentice, Danny Lamb, the spinning options of Carlson and Coles, I mean, yeah, I mean, Sussex look as strong as anybody but uh, as I said yesterday I think every side in Division 2 you could make a case for going up this season that there are going to be no easy matches in this division I, I think it could be a fascinating season and they've got to get those those 20 wickets yeah and quite a lineup that would be as you mentioned right start the next over Tom Trevin comes and move on. I was to that but it's my line isn't it between yeah, it is. overplaying and and trying to get into contention again for England I, Penny for his thoughts, actually, in terms of his England position. Well, he's been very honest about that, uh, Rita. He spoke very openly to the media on press day down at Hove uh, a couple of weeks ago. I'll talk about that in a mo. Next delivery comes in from the 25-year-old Shriven. And this one is completely missed and beaten is uh, Lamb. Haven't had said that for a while, have we? That was a brilliant bit of keeping again by Cox. I love, love it. He takes the ball and whips off the bows. I mean, it's so good to watch. Yeah, Ollie, Ollie was very open, and he, he he used expressions such as crossroads of my career. Um, you know, he, he, he knows this is a big season for, for Ollie. He's only got a one-year contract with the ECB. There are some young bowlers who are snapping at his heels. We were saying this to Richard yesterday, the likes of Gus Atkinson, uh, Matty Potts, Josh Tung. So... O Ollie knows he needs to play and, and to take wickets. Yeah, lots of England options nowadays. Triven in, and this one is defended, and there is no run. Triven's doing, doing a decent job here. He into is. his 27th over of the innings. But the it's no... Uh, sorry, Rita. Um, mm -hmm. but, but there's no question. He's first class wicket for Sussex last week, and, you know, he looked to be really getting into some rhythm, and a fit Ollie Robinson it is a massive plus for Sussex. No question about that. I think last time... I saw you, Adrian. Um, he was playing, obviously, for Sussex. So it was against Middlesex oh, he loves at your Middlesex. place. Yeah, and yeah. didn't he just love it that day? I love this sort of angle run up and his delivery action. Here comes through and the short delivery. And this one, not convincingly placed in any way. We'll see if it runs it. Indeed, it's not all the time. 59 deliveries. A really interesting uh, innings there from Danny Lamb. Really compliments the. Um, more sort of traditional style of John Simpson in his batting action and uh, 50 over the mark. So both of these batters are well and truly in. Three, four, three, six, four for six. Well, just what the doctor ordered as far as Sussex are concerned from Danny Lamb. Lamb on strike from Shriven. Here he comes. This one's defended. Uh, I've got to mention this, Tom Shriven, the former Hampshire and Berkshire cricketer. Mm. I thought I'd get in there. Talked about women's cricket already. Talked about Berkshire. I'll be leaving them shortly, actually, for, for Richard Ray. Well, well, it's a, <laughs> well, it's a big week for, for, for women's cricket with the announcement of the uh, the eight women's teams. And, um, you know, Sussex, we've, we've spoken about this this week already, but, mm -hmm. you know, really hoping that they're going to be one of the eight. That'd uh, be great for Sussex. Well, we'll have to see. Um, yeah. And Leicestershire as well. I mean... Side bidding for the the sides. Last delivery of the over. Shriven, a full delivery. And this one is pushed. Not quite time, but pushed definitely to mid on. And there is no run. You're quite right. I mean, the women's game, don't get me started. Next time we next time we get on, let's talk about women's cricket a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. But it brings a tear to my eye in a good way. Think about the times when I was playing alongside Isha and who's now, you know, fronts up the telly nowadays. And, um, you know, 
Claire Taylor as well, absolute legends of the game, where one man and his dog and pretty much family members were, were watching, and now we can fill stadiums. It's just incredible, the change. I'm going to make way, I think, for Richard Ray, who's going to rejoin. And I'll see you a bit later, Adrian. Thanks, Rita. Lovely to see you. Um, oh, yeah, there's been in touch. As in comes Liam Travaskis from the Pavilion End. It involves to Simpson, who defends on the onside no run. He says, I'm enjoying the morning, enjoying seeing spinners and batters doing so well early in the season. I was wondering if there's a reason why Ollie Carter's been left out of the 11. His average is far better than Clark and Alsop. In comes Travaskis. Simpson turns it onto the onside no run. I feel he isn't far from an England call-up in the next few years. Also, and feel free to ignore this, what frequency do I use to listen to county coverage on my car radio? Oh, that's a good question. Um, in comes Travaskis. Bowles, Simpson. Uh, forward gets a thick inside edge that will end up at mid-wicket. Depends no what your car radio can do. But yeah, he says you, I've been using... the DAB. He says I've been using my phone for the last year um, or so, but I'm fairly young. I never actually learned how to use a radio properly. I live in Brighton, if that helps. Comes at Travaskas bowls, firmly played by Simpson to the covers. There is no run. I mentioned earlier that Roman Walker's going to come back on, and you talked about women's cricket with him. Now, I, I was going to bring something up with Roman, and uh, I'd be interested to see what you think about uh, this. I have a little bit of a theory. Travaskas in bowls and played by Simpson. Back not down not the track, so much no a theory, run. a suggestion. I would like to see one of the, the men's T20 county sides. Why not the Leicestershire Foxes? give someone like Sophie Eccleston a contract. Travaskis in bold, swept by Simpson, and he's going to get oh, four runs. Hurring down the leg side was Liam Travaskis, flicked away by Simpson, lovely shot, and these two closing in on a hundred partnership, 368 for six, came together when the total was 282 for six. He was in the air for a, a while, but it was beautifully placed. No, I mean, so a spinner of Eccleston, a genuine quality like Eccleston, who is a very effective white ball spinner. Okay, you know, wh when it comes to pace and things like that, she's batting 11 or whatever. But w imagine the interest if an England player, women's player, was playing for one of the men's oh, counties. Oh, huge. It, it would explode. And I don't know whether it's theoretically possible or whether someone like Eccleston would even want to uh, or would be able to because, you know, who knows when the... The the, these new sides are going to play and what, what competitions, etc., etc. But one county ought to say, right, not much to lose or whatever. Let's, let's, let's give it a go. Let's go. You know, do you want Sophie? Do you want to come and play? F you know, these eight games for us or whatever. Well, someone was saying that all the cricket needs to move with the times. The sun is out. In comes Scriven Bowl. Sorry, Richard, I pinched your ball and Sorry. played on the onside by Lamb. No, I think it'd be terrific. Can I just pick up on this email from Arjan as well? Mm, he was talking yes. about, um, yeah, I mean, listening on the radio. I'm not sure we could listen in your car unless we broadcast on DAB, which yeah. um, w we are going to be broadcasting the T20s this year, Arjan, on um, DAB. That other than that, you have to listen through the BBC website or the mobile app. They're the ways of listening. As regards Ollie Carter, and I'll um, break off and discuss Ollie Carter in a moment. Scriven. Down the slope, bowls. Lamb is careful. Nice high left elbow as he blocks that one out into the offside. Um, I mean, he's a fine young cricketer, um, Ollie Carter. I, th I think, if I'm being honest, I think he's a, a way away from anything England. But you know, who knows what the future might bring? Um, but certainly, there's competition at the top of the order now that Chetichwa Pajara is here, and certainly, you know, Allsop and Clark will feel they need to score runs. Um, I think it was the right move for Sussex to bring in a wicket keeper. I think Ollie's keeping has improved, but. Um, I, I, I don't. Uh, no, I think last year showed, although he has improved, that Sussex did need someone else behind the stumps in first-class cricket. Doesn't mean to say Carter won't come good later in his career, but at this stage of his career, um, I think it was the right move for him to hand the gloves over to Simpson. Scriven in yeah. the 68 for six. The lead is growing. It is. And but thank you, Ian, for your, your email. Really good to hear from you. And it's great to know we've got a younger listener down in Brighton and we want to encourage all younger listeners. So thank you so much for getting in touch. Really appreciate it. Scriven is drawing in on his a century, which uh, is not the sort of century he wants to get. In he goes and bowls. Oh, oh bit of a bounce. And, um, well, it was played. It, 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 it did. Um, just that one end that, that is producing just occasionally 
a little bit of what do we say inconsistent bounce I think um, yeah. would, would be the word the odd one that keeps low and, the, and that one actually just, just bounced a bit it's like, yeah took his bottom hand off the bat played it okay that one doesn't bounce anything out of the ordinary and uh, is uh, back down the pitch to Tom Scriven Adrian is popping next door to update listeners uh, to BBC Radio Sussex with the very good news as far as they are concerned that uh, this Lamb Simpson partnership has grown to 86 and has put the Marklets 30 ahead, still with those four first innings wickets in hand. Scriven turns. Sun behind Cloud now comes in and bowls. Lamb is looking to work out. Does. This is the end of the over, the 113th, so bonus points done. Sussex, three batting bonus points. To go with their three bowling bonus points. So potential return, if the game goes on to be drawn, of 14. And I think we can definitely say that the least Sussex are going to get out of this game is likely to be a, a, a draw. And that would be a 14-point return. It would keep them likely to be Thus far, a fruitless morning for the Leicestershire bowlers. Hill directing traffic does slow things down a little bit, the right hand left hand combination when singles are being scored. Round the wicket goes Travaskis. Bowl slog swept by Lamb over the mid-wicket boundary and uh, well actually over them in that case and bounces down the sort of little gap between the meat and uh, the popular seats and it is on the roadway I suspect could have actually gone into the nets Scott Curry is accompanying Peter Hanscom who has gone into the nets which are sort of have a fairly high sort of six seven foot concrete wall in front of them with various sponsors logos all the way down there behind the meat beautiful nets here by the way at uh, the Upton Steel County ground making it popular with visiting touring sides as a, as a base but it actually cleared that concrete wall whether well, it actually bounced off the steps and over them I think that's what actually happened but it was a beautiful pickup by Lamb and uh, we're going to have another delay while the ball is sought is 29 overs old this second. <laughs> so Scott Curry re emerges from the Nets area, steps, has the ball, the ball, but uh, they were sent back to, to, to look harder. Oh. It goes to Scothic and bowls to the left handed Simpson, who blocks it out back down the pitch. Did they find the, the original? They did. They did. They did. The, the ground staff went to help. It went into the Nets area and um, messes. Hanscom and Curry said they couldn't find it, but they were sent back to look harder. In goes to Scothic Bowl. Simpson shuffles down the pitch, covers up, pushes it out to Curry, and there's no run. But I was speculating it could be because we haven't got too many replacement kookaburras of that right vintage. <laughs> kookaburras of that right vintage. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I might be right. Yes, yes. In goes Truscothic. It's on driven, and he dives to his left. Can't get there. Wishy Patel dives to his right. Can't get there. It runs down to Harris. So perfectly placed by the canny Simpson. He moves on to 65 and keeps the strike. Yeah, I, I mean, I saw. Um, I, I was thinking back to my days. I mean, I, I've said before, I played a very low standard of, of cricket, village cricket. But um, if ever the ball was lost, you, everyone had to look for it because Ooh, cricket yeah. balls were expensive. You know, and often a village greens, you've got long grass or maybe a stream or a ditch around the field or whatever. And, um, you know, it was, you, you would sometimes spend quite a long time looking for the ball. It was only as a last resort, another ball was perhaps bought out. And then everyone else would have to carry on looking for the ball. You know, that was the way it was. Absolutely. You know, many, many an hour I've spent in cornfields. Yeah, or totally. Whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One village I, I played for up in North Yorkshire, we were, it was literally a farmer's field that, that he'd 
lent basically to to the village and it was <laughs> <laughs> we dreaded the sort of crop rotation because <laughs> sort of every you know it's, uh, in certain years we were surrounded by waist high balls well done so the Clint's chart for his income like bolts and this is a J26 so a partnership of 95 between this pair um, and you know, so we have to credit Paul Farbrace who you know he had to bring in some experience to this side he's done it and these two are showing that, uh, that, 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 you know, he was right in his judgment. I don't think anyone doubted him, to be honest. In comes Mike Bowles. Simpson drives beautifully. What a lovely shot that is. That's probably one of the shots of the morning. Overpitched by Ben Mike, and John Simpson drills that away through extra cover. That's a lovely shot. He goes to 69, and Sussex to 381 for six. Beautiful shot. I was um, beginning to speculate a little bit of what how Sussex will, will, will approach us. I mean, ideally, from their point of view, these two obviously stay together or with, with, with the tail add enough to get Sussex sort of 150 ahead and, there, and then who knows, mm. maybe there'll be a, a little bit there for Carson. But the minimum, re minimum return for Sussex from this game is now looking like it's going to be 14 points, yeah. which is a pretty decent return again. Mike in again, Bowles. Simpson covers up pleasant to the onside. No run. A couple of emails have come in about the stream. Joe and Jane are just questioning the stream. There have been some issues here this morning, and I know the guys here are working very hard to try and it, it's rectify. Yeah, the Wi-Fi issues. There, there is a sort of a new system is being put in, a sort of cable system, but it, it, it isn't quite ready yet, unfortunately. But that that is apparently what what is causing the the problems. The sort of um, the Wi-Fi power capability whatever of course you can get the commentary via the bbc website and app there's incomes ben mike bowles and simpson tucks this one around the corner and there's the hundred partnership between danny lamb and john simpson a very fine partnership it's been to coming together first thing this morning sussex still in arrears at that time but they've been extremely positive this morning they've added a hundred runs uh, in just over an hour and a half and they've taken Sussex into a strong position in this match where they now lead by 34. No, they don't. 44. But just for those criticising the streams, I think they're actually fairly sensational, given that they are free as well, folks. So, so let's not yep. hammer the county clubs. And uh, they've, they've really developed them well and uh, with various cameras and graphics and what have you. It's not always their fault if it isn't quite no. correctly. No, and we mentioned yesterday as well, a lot of the counties do have very small media teams, and it's um, certainly that's the case at Sussex. Uh, I suspect the same here at Leicestershire as well. Uh, ben Mike runs in, bowls to Danny Lamb, and damn up, Danny Lamb uppercuts that down towards third man. They've taken one, that's all they'll take. Um, Lamb goes to 60, Sussex to 383 for six. Yeah, it came, it came back at him and sort of came off his glove. Uh, when he tr as he tried to uppercut it, and it rather looped down. It wasn't that far from sort of backward point gully, and it was almost, almost a mistake on the part of Lamp. But he continues to innovate. Ooh, looks like Louis Kimber might get a a chance to purvey his uh, brand of offspin. Here comes Mike. Lovely sunny early afternoon in the bowls of Simpson, who thrashes that for four. I thought for a moment he was going to get caught at mid wicket. But it was a little short, it was pulled wide, and Ben Mike knows it was too short, and it was thumped away by Simpson. Four more to the Sussex skipper. He goes to 74, and Sussex to 387 for six. It is looking very flat and very straightforward for these two now. But they, all they can do is take advantage, and that is exactly what Messrs. Lamb and Simpson have done. 105, well, off 115 overs. What were we last night? 93. 90.3 90.3 so that's 25 just about overs for the 105 so scoring it over four and over this partnership and it is uh, put Sussex very firmly in the driving seat in in every sort of sense of, of that word they, they can drive the game from from this point so Louis Kimber for the first time this season first time for a long time um, Louis is going to have a a go with his off spin. It's not negligible, but it, we don't see it very often, and that makes it difficult, I think, for someone like Louis Kimber to, to come on and immediately hit his marks, so to speak. Let's see what he can do. 
the field spreads, as they say. He's got a deep mid-wicket and a deep square leg. Has he got a long on? Just trying to see. No, Lu Lu Lewis Hill has stayed up there at straight-ish mid-wicket, actually. Kimber is in. Reverse sweep, sweep attempted and missed by Danny Lamb. Comes. Am I at the right end? Yes, I am. Yes, you are. <laughs> Comes off the pad and uh, bounces out towards, uh, well, gully. Deepish backward point. Kimber is in. Bowles tosses it up. Hits in the air. Bounces down into the ground and over Ben Mike. Trickles out towards Marcus Harris at uh, wideish. Mid off. And one is taken. Lamb on to 61. 388. 46. Kimber will go round the wicket to the left-handed Simpson. Might have a few footholds in which to bowl that might offer him a little bit of grip. Changes to the field, though. Maidstone Fox points out he'd be personally happy to pay a fee to watch all county streams if they could improve them across the board. That's a good point, yeah. Kimber is in, bowls, doesn't turn, back goes Simpson, blocks it out to mid-wicket and there's no run. Didn't, I'm just trying to think, I think one of the counties was Sussex did. Sussex did for a while and then, and then decided not to. If you charge a fee, it's got to work, hasn't it? In goes, ooh, nice work by Cox, in goes Kimber down the leg side as sweep is missed by Simpson. Cox takes it down the leg side, takes off the bales, but Simpson's back foot was uh, firmly anchored. gets up, Kimber steps in and bowls pleasant loop to the delivery forward goes John Simpson, pushes it towards mid on, intercepted en route by Rishi Pat I beg your pardon, by Ben Mike running across from mid wicket and there's no run Kimber steps in, bowls driving is Simpson down towards Lewis who is it down there, is it? Liam Travaskis, who's at uh, deep ish mid off. I've got you seeing uh, Lewis Hill there. So he got to the pitch a bit, didn't sort of give it a chance to turn, but there wasn't any obvious turn there for Louis Kimber. Leicestershire's uh, current off spinner. It, it has been sort of Colin Ackerman for, for years, so to speak. <laughs> yes. In the six years he was here, he's hmm. Ackerman pervaded a sort of very useful occasional off spin. But uh, Louis Kimber is now taking on that role. End of the over, 389 for six. Uh, Jane's been back in touch. Sorry, Jane, I didn't mean to misread your email. She says, hi, I was not hammering the feed. My email was headed, is it me? Um, no, I, I wasn't aimed at Jane. We've, I'm looking at the various comments on the yeah. um, on the stream. Some of them are, are a little bit uh, dismissive, unfairly so. But thank you, Jane, for listening. In comes Ben Mike running in around the wicket bowls to John Simpson. Let's let go outside the off stump. And there is no run to Sussex. 389 for six. And the two winter additions to the Sussex squad are suddenly doing their job. John Simpson does what he seems to do pretty much between everyone. Wanders away to square leg. Um, he's on 75. It's technically been an excellent innings from Simpson. Um, he's faced 152 balls. He batted a long time yesterday afternoon with uh, Chetish for Pajara when it wasn't easy under the lights and a softer ball. But this morning he's looked in super nick. In comes Mike Bowles and drilled down the ground by Simpson. Picks up. Another single, he goes to 76, 390 for six. Take off 338. That's not an easy equation, that is it, but that, this will lead 52. <laughs> or some, even. Um, but are you right? I mean, you know, Sussex will be looking for a biggest lead as possible. We've got the rest of today, we've got tomorrow. Uh, Do you think John Simpson will, will, will have half an eye on the forecast for tomorrow? Uh, I don't know what I thought. I mean, I know cricketers always Can say, you do oh, that? Yeah. yeah, I know they always say, oh, well, you can't, you can't, you know, go by the weather forecast and this, that and the other, but uh, I, th I think they will. I, th I think, you know, Sussex have shown in the game against Northampton here last week, they want to play attacking cricket. And I'm th I feel sure that part of the plan would involve looking at the forecast, which suggests we are going to get interruptions tomorrow. Um, so very defensive field now, as you would yeah, expect. Ha and they have to go on right on the defensive, don't they, Leicestershire now? Mike. In and bowls, and Lamb works this one down to third man. Picks up a single. He goes to 62. There's a loud appeal 
being caught down the leg side by Ben Cox off the bowling of Ben Mike, which I was actually sure convinced that Danny Lamb was out. It wasn't given. And in fact, I have to remember last night, um, John Simpson was dropped, wasn't he? He dropped was. On he nine. was dropped on nine by, by his opposite number. Yeah, by Lewis Hill off the bowling of Liam Travaskas when the score was 234 for four. Would have been a good catch. Yes, it would it have been. A, a full-blooded sort of pull at a short ball. But he got two hands to it. Ben Mike is on his way again. Bowls to Simpson, who tucks that one nicely around the corner. Down towards deep backward square. Picks up another single Simpson. He goes to 77. The Sussex to 392 for six. Ten minutes or so to go until lunch. The over eight is plus good. Still plus, plus two. two. Yeah. So Leicestershire are very happy about that. 70 overs left after this one in the day. We should get three more at least one would yes, hope I would have hoped so yeah. especially with Louis Kimber bowling maybe even four more Mike over the wicket bowls short pulled away by Danny Lamb more runs here and it's going to be four runs that completely bisects the two fielders there were two fielders back of square on the leg side and Danny Lamb found the gap between them he's playing a terrific knock here 66 of 70 ball balls it was just what the doctor ordered as far as Sussex are concerned, 396 for six. Partnership now of 114 between these two. Ben Mike's organising that leg side field, but he's got one. Yes, he's still got the two men back behind square and a man back in front of square as well. But I don't think you can really afford to ball halfway down the track here. But far better when the ball is pitched up. In comes Mike. In bowls, short, pulled away again by Danny Lamb, and he's going to pick up just a single on this occasion because the fielder there is Liam Trabascus, who gets in the throw. So end of Ben Mike's over. He's bowled 24 overs, one maiden, one for 105. Sussex 3.97 for six here on BBC Radio Sussex. And BBC Radio Leicester, Adrian Harms, Rita Green, and Richard Ray, your commentary team here today. Yeah, tough going for Ben Mike and the Seamers. Four for 44 against Yorkshire, but uh, one for 106 now. That sounds like a rock band. Sussex. Ben Mike and the Seamers. Ben Mike and the Seamers. Hmm. I'm sure that's the last thing on his mind. He's rather looks rather little disconsolate, doesn't he, standing out mid-wicket. Um, but he bowled well yesterday afternoon, Richard. I mean, he really did bowl a lot of overs yesterday. He did. Louis Kimber is in over the wicket. Slog sweeping is Danny Lamb over mid wicket. It goes for his third six in almost the same spot. Didn't quite hit it as far this time. Bounces off the seats. And that uh, Lamb moves on to 73. Brings up the Sussex 400. Alas, too late for another batting bonus point. He's taking a liking to that leg side, isn't he? Danny Lamb with bat raised as Kimber is in bowls to him just a little bit wider outside off stump and uh, there's no run Danny Lamb's yeah, I'm just looking at his career stats best is well. 125 so he, uh, he he averages just under 30 so he'll be improving he could just get it on to 30 attempted reverse sweep that might just have got something on as it uh, trickles down through what would be about first slip there isn't a first slip of course uh, gully Sort of deepish backward point runs around to field. Matt Salisbury is there. And Lamb picks up. Did he signal leg by? I don't think his score has changed. So I think it was a leg by. It was four a leg by. Four for yeah. six. Came off the front yeah. pad. Round the wicket goes Kimber. Bowls. Well bowled on the spot. On off stump. John Simpson treats it with respect. Forward defensive out into the offside. Yeah, just the one first class century for Danny Lamb. That was that one, two, five. Kimber bowls in the air oh, dropped. It would dropped. have been a wonderful it catch, would. but it was a chance at a court and bowl. The end after a hard drive, roundabout chest stroke, shoulder height. Two Kimbers left, dived across in front of the stumps. Umpire was getting out of the way, as was Lamb, and he got two hands to it. And he's got wonderful hands, Louis Kimber, but on that occasion he couldn't hang on. Make a note. Simpson. Chance 77 outside off stump. He cuts that one away to the sweeper on the offside, who is uh, Curry. One is taken 
So the two chances, the, the two times he's been dropped, they've both been full-blooded shots. Have. Yeah, and uh, catch. both would have been excellent catches. But I suppose given that Lewis Hill and now Louis Kimber have got two hands to them, both on each occasion, you have to put them down uh, as chances. Yeah, she feel a little mean saying that, really, because it was absolutely belted back by Simpson. Yeah. So this partnership between these two, 18 plus 5 is 23, 123, which they've added this morning in, uh, what have we had? 118 overs, 28 overs. So they really have rattled along this morning. Four on over. Here comes Ben Mike in the lovely sunshine around the wicket in the bowls to Simpson, who covers up and plays uh, to mid-wicket. And there is no run. Six or seven minutes to go until lunch. And Sussex will be very pleased with their morning's work. It, it probably couldn't have gone much better, to be honest. I was going to say, it was, it's been a perfect morning, really. Yep. If uh, John Simpson had set out what he wanted to do, let, let's add 130 without losing a wicket. Yes. <laughs> I would imagine that. Here comes Mike on bowls and Simpson glides that ball down to fine leg and picks up another single. He goes to 79, 406 for six. Richard was saying earlier that the report when he went at half 11 came from the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium where mm. Leicester are playing and they're winning our oh, Leicester women in that FA Cup semi-final. So that's some good news for uh, Leicester today. I, I did say to the, to the studio this morning, uh, you know, oh, we're going to be an update. Oh, there we go. 406 for six now, Sussex. No wickets have fallen this morning. They began the day 282 for six, 56 behind Leicester's first inning score of 338. Danny Lamb and John Simpson have taken that score onto 406, so they're now leading by nearly 70 runs overall. Now, Sussex in a, in a very strong position in the game. They can look to get around about 150, maybe even more ahead, and then put the Foxes under pressure. The wicket is flat, though. The ball isn't offering the Foxes any real assistance at all. There has been one chance, a very difficult one, of John Simpson. Louis Kimber, the bowler, got two hands to a possible court and bowl. Couldn't quite hang on. The ball was hit very hard. But it's been a tough morning for the Foxes. As lunch approaches, Sussex 4.07 for six. Oh, I didn't get much warning there. You I didn't. Heard, well done, you. The words oh, that's Grace impressive. Road there. <laughs> <laughs> you missed uh, one delivery, or possibly two, that uh, were hit away by Lamb for a, a single. Mike is in. Bowls outside of stump. Left by Simpson. They've almost they're almost level now on scores. Lamb, seventy-five. They are. Simpson, seventy-nine. And Simpson had a thirty-two run start. Yes, absolutely. And he's he's proved the c the perfect foil here for, uh, for for Danny Lamb, for for John Simpson has Danny Lamb. I've lost track of who Ovid it is now. Is it mine or is it yours? Yeah, because of that update, it rather messes yeah, you, up. No, you, you, it's you, yours. Do you want me to finish? Yeah, it off you finish it, and then yeah, well, whatever, whatever works. We'll pick best. it up from there. Round the wicket goes Mike and Bowl Simpson. Oh, a no ball. Simpson covers up on off stump, but uh, twelve we had earlier, so thirteenth no ball of the Sussex. Innings, 35 extras, 409 for six. The lead then 71, he says tentatively. I think that's right, actually, for once. And again, bowls Simpson driving edge just wide of Kimber at sort of that four slip gully position. It's going to run down to third man four four. Paul Ben Mike's got his hands on his head. He found the edge. Simpson was drawn into driving at a slightly wider delivery. Wasn't quite there to be driven. Took a thick outside edge. Went at just about catching catchable height, but it was a couple of feet well more than that wide of Kimber who's sort of trying to cover all the slip positions and gully essentially there. He'd sort of positioned himself round about sort of third slip and it went through about fourth. Simpson on to 83. Yeah, had a bit of fortune there. He steps a little bit wider, Kimber, as Mike goes in and bowls and uh, Simpson a little, perhaps it's more circumspect after that arguable escape. Puts his head down and blocks it out into the offside. 83 is his score at the end of the 119th over of the innings. 
four, one, three for six. His team's score. Yeah, so looking at the clock, 58. This will be the last over before uh, before lunch. I'm fairly certain about that. Well, we did lose a bit of time when the ball got uh, got lost <laughs> after a big daddy lamb hit. And we Six. had we had the three balls that Salisbury had to bowl at of the course. start of the day to, to yes. sort of to get it to 96. So it'll be 67 left. So there'll be three behind where they should be theoretically. In comes. Uh, Kimber bowls to Lamb, who works it into the offside. There is no run. So, in terms of this morning, this will be the. Uh, I'll work out the amount of overs we've had in a moment. Kimber over the wicket bowls. Lamb is forward, plays it down the onside of the track. Kimber fields, and there is no run. So we well, you start the day with 96 to bowl, don't you? But it was 96.3 because yes, of because of the three balls, yeah. and we've now got 67.4. So. So 29.3, does that sound Essentially, right? Essentially, yeah. Here comes Kimber, bowls to Lamb, plays into the offside. There is uh, a single, almost an overthrow, but actually uh, Kimber stops the ball and there is not an additional one. Lamb to 76, 414 for six. So these two have gone along on a, well, not far shy of five and over. Simpson waits. Kimber bowls, Simpson solidly forward, plays the ball back to Kimber, and there is no run. Just the one slip in place. Kimber, his third over, bowls to Simpson, who solidly forward, plays to mid-wicket. There is no run. This is where we normally say he's playing for lunch, but you know, I, th I think professionals are such, if he gets a, if he gets a rank lock hop, he'll, he'll, he'll look to hit it. John Simpson's got his eyes on. A good morning for Sussex. In comes Kimber. Bowls to Simpson, who drills that away through the covers. That's good. Go for four. Oh, that's a brilliant bit of fielding. That is an exceptionally good piece of fielding. Really very good indeed. Out on the deep cover boundary, racing around out there. That was Scott Curry. Brilliant from Curry. Really was very good indeed. And that brings up lunch. What a session for Sussex. Brilliant session for Sussex. 415 for six, Simpson on 84, Lamb on 76. So Sussex going in with a lead of 15 plus 62, which is 77 at the break. And they They've added 133 this morning without the loss of a wicket. That's come off 29.3 overs. Danny Lamb 76 off 82, Simpson 84 off 167. As, uh, as I've just said, really, if, if John Simpson had written down what he wanted to happen this morning, I suspect it would have been something along those lines. Very much Perfect. so. Perfect. No, very good indeed. And uh, Sussex will be looking to press on with this lead um, after lunch, I'm sure about that. But, um, and the lead is now 415. 77.38. Yeah. Well, we'll be back with you at the Upton Steel County Ground because if, if Sussex do that again this afternoon, they will be leading by over 200. And I would think that Simpson will be thinking in terms of a, a declaration um, because why not, really? They need, to give themselves, they need to give themselves time with the Kookaburra ball to bowl Leicester out if it happens for a, uh, a second time. I'm going to lose. No, yep, so very dark. And I think we should walk you about it.
seen often so far in his innings. Very neat and solid and compact as he uh, leans forward into the defensive press. Yeah, you've always got to be careful with a weather forecast. Um, but as it stands, my certain weather app is showing uh, sunshine and showers. So the meteorologists are sitting on the fence. What temperatures? Because I'm hearing horrendous things about temperatures tomorrow. Well, today is pretty... pretty <laughs> Forget about today, Rita. Um, around seven degrees. Salisbury is in. Ooh, a bit of a thick inside edge onto the front pad there. Salisbury for a minute thought he'd sneaked that through, but inside edge onto the pad and out into the offside from Simpson. Maximum of nine degrees. Ooh. Something to look forward to <laughs> in terms of the, during the day. And hey, wait for it. Maximum Just to put the, nine. put the icing on the cake. Literally, probably. Go on. <laughs> Winds around 42 miles per hour. Well, That's not, the weather not, for forecast we uh, It's not going to feel like nine <laughs> then, is it? It's going to feel colder than that, I would imagine. Yeah. Salisbury in bowl. Simpson is driving pleasantly, almost too firmly. It goes quite quickly out wide of hill at mid-off. He has to tumble to his right, the Leicestershire skipper, but it gets there fairly quickly. So Simpson decides not to take on his opposite number's arm. Yeah, well, as cricketers, uh, or cricket watchers, cricket supporters, you're absolutely obsessed with the weather, whether it be the wind, the rain, the the sun. You know, we're looking up as well as uh, around you, but um, we shall see. Salisbury bowl. Simpson defends on the back foot this time. Again, nice and straight from Salisbury. Probably wasn't quite at his best this morning. He was wonderful yesterday. Four for, uh, sorry, three for 49, I think his figures were. But he had a couple of overs this morning, just struggled for line and length, and Lamb uh, tried a couple of bounces. Lamb put them both away. Yeah, bowled beautifully, didn't he? And uh, really deserved those uh, those wickets yesterday. He'll be looking to reinforce that today. And I'm sure his skipper will be looking for a breakthrough, and fast. He comes past umpire Middlebrook and bowls. Simpson is driving, or getting forward and pushing firmly at a a length delivery that's coming in towards middle from off and had to check any really aggressive intent. Lots of hands in pockets out there. It is chilly. They looked a slightly weary side Leicester at lunch. I don't know what you thought we'd be lucky enough to eat in the same area as the as the teams, the Charles Palmer restaurant down at the bottom of the pavilion. In goes Salisbury and bowls fuller this time so Simpson can drive and drive along the ground out towards point there is the sweeper out there though. Liam Travaskis who loses his sunglasses but in so doing puts in a really good throw right next to the stumps Cox takes off the bales as keepers so often do but uh, they weren't going to turn for the second Simpson with that single off the last ball keeps the strike 416 for six the lead 78 yeah, for young cricketers out there, well, not so young even, I think that was a good demonstration in the deep, actually, as to how to, how to prevent the second run. You know, the, the, the runners took the first one pretty quickly, but Liam Travaskis really came in absolutely head in, didn't he? And that really quick pick-up action and throwing it in, OK, uh, pretty accurate in terms of getting it into the into the keeper. But, uh, you know, for young, young cricketers out there, this is the difference between good and great. Really trying to minimise the runs as much as possible got a benign ball now that is soft and everyone's been talking about this one so I'm sure we're all bored of listening to that but it's absolutely true so every run counts here it's definitely been Sussex's day so far but here comes the next over Curry from the pavilion and this is a full toss and uh, cut away to what would have been probably second slip pretty disappointing from a start for Curry's spell here just after lunch full toss and dispatch to the boundary row 416 for six that's definitely not the way that Leicestershire wanted to start that over no they've got two short mid wickets in and you know wide full toss miles outside off stump to the left hander and uh, yeah well I guess you can say that's a loosener and that's the kindest possible thing you, one could say, really. The that. only positive, glimmer of positivity from that was that John Simpson, who was on 89, absolutely did not middle that in any way. So it was slightly false shot. But, hey, um, you've got to play the shot. And the ball was there to be hit. Here comes the next one. I'm sure Curry will want to do far better with the next delivery. And he's in. This one's defended to short mid-wicket. There's kind of a mid-wicket and then a short mid-wicket. Trying to get in the eye line of the batter. A dot 
ball, but it's definitely been Sussex's day. Sorry to rub it in, Leicestershire fans, but uh, I think they, in foot, for a footballing analogy, I was thinking about this, it's almost like having a clean sheet this morning from Sussex's perspective. No wickets down, 133 runs on the board and the lead. I'll tell you about that after the next delivery. Here comes Scott Curry coming in. And this one's a full, full delivery and it goes out to a deep point. They hit the first run hard and then decide against the second. The ball comes in and there's just one more to the total. 421 for six. 83 the lead. 83, thank you very much. 83, I mean, this is about, oh, sorry, I feel terrible talking to you about this, Richard, because all I'm talking about is Sussex here, but they'll want to, they just want to bat for once. They want, I mean, 80, oh yes, 80. Uh, absolutely now, yeah. yeah. 80 th I, I wouldn't have thought that, you know, first thing this morning I was saying to you, <laughs> you and Adrian as we were chatting before we went on air, first se session's going to be hugely pivotal. Lots of wickets, I'm sure, Leicestershire wanted. Just hasn't happened so far. Right then, Lamb on strike, who defends this one and shouts a proper no run. Tell you what, though, they wouldn't mind batting second if they're only chasing 100 or something like that. Uh, batting again, if you know what I mean. If, they, if, they're, if they can dismiss Leicestershire for... If they can get 150 ahead and dismiss Leicestershire for 250 or something, but with Leicestershire's batting lineup, a flattish pitch and this ball, it shouldn't be easy. Next delivery from Curry is in. This one's a full delivery and nicely turned into the onside to deep backward square leg for one run. Nice looking shot there from Lamb, who has this really open start. So taking off his uh, pads and uh, pushing it to the onside is, is definitely his body position's in the right position but one more to the total, 4-2-2 for 6 yeah, quite right this is um, definitely Sussex's day but this is Leicestershire, I'm sure at lunch break they'll be asking themselves, okay, how can we make things happen and these first sort of 10-15 overs of the session are going to be super important, here comes Curry again defended and there's no run, I wonder whether the keeper could come up to Curry here um, well, that was a slower ball, but um, if he's not advanced, if Simpson isn't really using his feet to him, there's probably not too much point. He, he's fair with yeah. it. He's, he's just fairing it up, it though, right? Just yeah. Uh, yeah, why, why not, really? Uh, End of the over, by the way. That. 42 for six. I mean, white, white ball skills come into it with the, with this kookaburra, don't they, I suppose? Mm. For, for, but the difference is, of course, that the, the batters aren't looking to hit every ball as they as they might be in white ball cricket so it's a you know if it is a slower ball it might be a good slower ball but if it's not if they're not looking to hit it then they're not, not going to hit the ball in the air anyway so you know it, it is tough for the bowlers so Matt Salisbury he's got two shortish covers or cover an extra cover no he's not they're both at midweek because it's the right-handed lamb on strike as Salisbury is in bowls to him good bouncer good bouncer got up a bit played it quite well in the end lamb but he got up from quite a, sh a short but not too short a length and uh, lamb looked absolutely startled walks down and Simpson walks down to meet him and there's much prodding of the pitch now Sussex kind of want to see that they, they, they want a little bit of an even bounce it's only been from that Bennett end and hitherto it's just been the odd ball that has kept low, but a, a couple today have actually sort of bounced a little bit. Salisbury is in. Bowls, that's in, clipped in the air, but it's wide of Hanscom, who raises his eyes to the heavens. Thought Scriven might be involved in the game there. It wasn't. It was well wide of him, and uh, Travaskis, who's not going to have any friends out there, he's got no one to talk to, and I suspect he won't for much of the afternoon. Gets his throw away, and it is just a single, but uh, Lamb's... You can see why they put the two mid-wickets there for him. He doesn't mm -hmm. mind hitting it in the air, but it's OK when you're on 78. Simpson on 90. Could this be a maiden first-class century? Four. Obviously, he's got first-class centuries before, but four Sussex. Well, mid-wicket staggered. In goes, <laughs> Sim in goes Salisbury Rolls to Simpson, who plays it to the nearer of the two mid-wickets. I say staggered because Hanscom is at a shortish mid-wicket, about three strips back. And Scriven is kind of ten, eight yards, five yards behind him. J just a little bit wider, but not that much wider. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's odd positioning, isn't it? Indeed. And if he'd been, what, about two metres to his left, he would have got a catch on that last over. 
Salisbury is in On the Money. Ifs and buts, of course. Line and length, but uh, Simpson solidly forward out into the offside. Yeah, it's hard going here, but Leicester definitely trying to be creative with their fielding positions here. Um, they've got to try things. I, th I, th I think John Simpson, he looks pretty pretty much set on playing very conventional in, in, the, in the V type of strokes. Salisbury bowls to him. He just drops the delivery out into the offside, slightly on the walk. Then Mike moves to his right from extra cover to cover to field and there's no run. So let's talk about some talking points then for, for this season. You know, realistically, where should Leicestershire feel they will be in the, in the county championship? Yes. What would what would be meeting <coughs> expectations, would you would you think? Still still being involved still having a chance of promotion in September essentially. So going into the sort of last round, the last four matches, in goes Salisbury and Bowles, as they were last season defended uh, on the back foot more or less by Simpson's straight delivery back down the pitch Salisbury fields and there's no run end of the over 4-2-3 for 6 but um, generally probably it's felt that if they're going to pick up another trophy it might be a you know the, 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 the Royal London Cup try and defend that obviously give, give that everything um, with other sides losing players to the 100 Leicester shall lose two players to the 100 this year they just lost Rahan Ahmed last year but this year Josh Hull has also got a hundred deal um, very early in his career right I'm going to do one more over and then I'm going to let our guests come in here comes Curry from the pavilion end full delivery this one's picked up by one of the very many uh, short uh, mid wickety type of uh, fielders we'll call it that <laughs> Scott Curry hey did you know you probably did Go on, then. junior Pompey football club player I okay. believe so, so talented so guy. Use, useful in the warm-ups. Yes. Useful in the warm-up footy then. Which I which I watched this morning, and as I said earlier on, rather competitive and rather entertaining. Right, here comes Lamb on strike, and this one's pulled into the onside and got the treatment, that ball. It was short and uh, pulled into the onside and over the boundary rope, sort of bisected the two fielders, one at deep backward square leg and one at... Uh, fine leg as well and they barely moved because it bisected the two of them four more to the total four more to lamb who's on 82 now from 88 deliveries four two seven for six sussex and and uh, curry's got to get his line and length better on this delivery here it comes is it and this one's a much better delivery and it, oh, dropped into the offside and a really nicely taken quick run in slightly disappointing <laughs> for the first. yes in the end you're right there was a little bit of a moment but then they committed and took the run nicely taken 428 for 6 yeah it was definitely there yeah. simpson kind of went lamb just for a second he stopped but uh, yeah made it ground comfortably so simpson was running to the danger end really with it with the two closer fielders now the left-handed batter, right-handed, left-handed combination. Here we go, Curry in. And this one short and straight to one of those two short, should we call it mid-wicket fielders? Is it Peter Hanscom? That's Hanscom there. Yeah, he puts his hands back in his pocket. I've got a funny feeling, one of those hand warmers that I used on my skiing holiday two weeks ago, those type of things are in those pockets. It's a, a chilly day and uh, certainly one for those hand warmers and that came to him rather quickly next delivery comes in in and this one's down the leg side straight to the keeper no run simpson might feel a little bit aggrieved he didn't get, didn't get bad on that but no no harm taken look leicester's got to go for it here they've got to know that if they don't do something different here even just luckily get a wicket or even engineer one themselves the game could drift away. What's the lead now? 90 is the lead. Next delivery from Scott Curry coming in. This one's slightly full of delivery. This one's defended. No run. And it's the end of the over. I'm going to leave you in peace uh, with uh, Richard Ray, who's got a special guest coming up. Thank you, Rita. Yeah, Roman is, is going to come alongside. I think fr from Leicestershire's point of view, with Sussex leading by 94 wickets in hand, and given the conditions and the state of the game, it even if they were to take the four wickets that are outstanding very quickly, it'd be very difficult to get far enough ahead to, to
to think about a declaration <laughs> on this pitch with with this ball uh, and and to force a, a positive result. I don't know what you think, Roman. It's very difficult to see the Foxes sort of getting in that sort of position from here. Yeah, tough. Uh, conditions are, are not easy. Salisbury is in. Bowles clipped in the air, but again, he's got it wide of uh, those two short mid-wickets out towards the mid-wicket boundary. Travaskis runs up the boundary and uh, gets away. A very good throw from the former Durham man. And Lamb picks up a couple. I thought that was going fairly close to Tom Scriven, who's gone a little bit wide. It was probably about five yards to his right in the end. But he doesn't mind clipping it in the air, Danny Lamb, but they just can't get the fielder in the right position for him. He's played well, played very positively. Has. And taken advantage of any ball that's not perfect. He has. Matt Salisbury. Over the wicket, of course, to the right-hander is in and bowls. A little bit wider outside off stump. Lamb getting in position to sort of cut. It wasn't quite there and ended up blocking it out into the offside up on his toes. He's a sort of unconventional-looking batsman. Lots of sort of little ticks and movements and certainly not uh, classical coaching sort of photographs you'd, you'd take of him. But he's very effective on his day and this is his day. Certainly is. Sauls returns in sort of small steps before getting into his stride and bowls just maybe just held that back a, a, a fraction slightly short of a good length and uh, on the back foot Lamb waits for it and drops it out into the offside no run having chatted to the guys at lunch did you have, well you were out there at lunch weren't you you were doing your yeah. rehab yeah I didn't quite get to uh, get to chat to the lads at lunch there um, but coming into the change room as they were going out spirit seemed high and they uh, you know I think they like they like uh, embracing the challenge Salisbury quite chest on as he runs and bowls a little bit short of a length again it doesn't really get up just one or two have just gotten up from that end in today or yesterday there were one or two that just kept low and we saw them mm. uh, have an effect but just one or two <coughs> they haven't exactly popped but just got yeah. a, a touch yeah as we go later into the game you know the pitch may get well, it's obviously going to get older and we may see some variation like that uh, variation of bounce we've seen over the last couple of days going low. And we may even see a few just just rearing a little bit. Salisbury in. Bowls. That one has possibly one stayed a low. bit low. <laughs> and uh, dug out by Lamb. Exaggerates the fact uh, that it did stay low. Made sure that everybody knew about <laughs> it. Ducked at the knees or bent at the knees and uh, rather... Shuffled it out, scooped it out towards Ben Micah in the covers. Wanders down, prods at the pitch. But you know, I was just saying to Rita, from Sussex's point of view, they kind of want this now, don't they? They want yes. the pitch to start yeah. doing more and more inconsistent things. Yeah, well, the more inconsistent it is, the, the bigger chance Sussex have got. And the uh, position they're putting themselves into right now is, is only going to help that. It finishes over. Matt Salisbury bowls down the leg side. Oh, was that a chance let's see what the signal is but Ben Cox dived across to his left the signal is 4-4 four, four. so he did flick it get a flick on that Salisbury standing in mid pitch with shoulders slumped now Ben Cox dived across to his left I was my view was slightly obscured by the fence so I'll have a look He's at still the, the replay on that he's holding his chest or patting his chest maybe just winded himself on his, on his landing there did he get his glove to it it sounded like it didn't it let's have a look see stream is uh, actually miles behind. Let me just uh, refresh it. We might get to see a replay on that one. Well, Cox is up and running. Back to the other end. He seems okay. It seems to be just a winding on his landing there. Yep, he did. It he wasn't the easiest landing. He dived away to his left, goalkeeper style, and he just flicked the end of just his glove. So around the post. I suppose you could say a chance. Yes, of course. Yeah, Curry to continue. That's left alone outside off. Some good carry, actually, with the uh, with the old ball. 41 overs old now. Um, I've not seen much uh, of today's play, Rich. So what happened with the new ball last night and, and this morning? They delayed taking it for a couple of overs. I think, from talking to Matt Salisbury, that partly because they, they didn't want to bowl too much. They obviously wanted to have two bites at the cherry, so to speak. Yeah. 
Well, it certainly worked last night, didn't it, with the wicket coming off? So they waited. They bowled an extra four overs or so with the with the old ball because they had real good control at that yeah. stage as well. Uh, so I could understand it. You know, they they were only going for two and over. Got took the new ball. Then it started going for four or fives and over, but they did pick up the couple of wickets. Yeah. Uh, Scrib found a beautiful delivery to bowl P Pajara off stump. Yeah. And then um, Matt got one to s Matt Salisbury got one to stay low from from that Bennett end that they bowled Finn Hudson Prentice. So a bit of variation with the new ball. Curry bouncer left alone by Simpson. That's one for the over as the umpire signals. But this morning it's done. It did nothing. 133. They scored. Uh, Messrs Lamb and Simpson, no wickets fallen. Obviously, there was minimal movement, minimal lateral movement. Yeah. Just again, the odd one from the Bennett end, a little bit inconsistent. It just seems with balance, this with this ball, you, you need conditions dead. to be absolutely perfect to get it moving. Yeah. And if they're not, it becomes very, very difficult for the bowlers. And a slower ball, it seems, from Curry there. A little bit of a change up, slightly on the hip, which is tucked away through backward square leg for two. And a good piece of fielding from Salisbury there. Legs, no tired, heavy. Sorry, no doubt are heavy. Um, after after the few spells that he's already bowled, and and bowled very well. He said last night, yeah, there were a few tired tired bodies. Most of the seamers were getting close to twenty overs at that stage. Not easy early in the season. We we do our prep, but you can never really uh, prep for that. That is a short ball, played comfortably to square leg for one on the back foot. Throw comes in on the one bounce. And what a, a sort of correct player Simpson looks. Yes, uh, uh, very, State. very organised, very good player. Knows his strengths, and uh, I, from what I've seen of him over the last few years, he doesn't play many shots which he knows he can't play. If you get what I mean, and I'm, he's more than capable of playing every shot, but he, he certainly sticks to his strengths massively. Curry in for the last ball of the over. A, another slow ball, well executed, and it's a dot ball. Leave Simpson on strike for the next over. Yeah, he's bowled a few of those. He has, he's really varied his pace. We were sort of saying, well, it, with this ball, I suppose the bowler's white ball skills almost sort of come into it to a certain extent. The difference is, of course, that the batters aren't trying to hit every ball, uh, which yeah. they probably are in white ball cricket. Yeah. So a slower ball, I if you're not looking to, to hit it, then you're not going to hit it up in the air anyway, no, are you? Yeah. So it's a... It's not a. It's a slightly different thing. People about people saying about bowlers developing skills, but yeah, it can it can be yeah, uh, it it can work especially when Lamb's playing so positively. I don't think it's a bad option. Salisbury continues bowls straight on towards middle and leg, slightly short of a good length, and Simpson stands up tall, on, stays on the back foot, plays it firmly, bounces back down the wicket. He's approaching what would be a first hundred for Sussex. And uh, he'll probably be a little bit circumspect as he does so. He doesn't want to give it away now. Three chances he's given. Mm. Um, all extremely difficult. He was dropped on nine by Lewis Hill. A, a short ball from Liam Travaskis as Salisbury is in. Bowls looking to drive. Again, it's straight. Thumps it back down the pitch. Straight into the off stump at the non-striker's end and uh, removes it. Uh, Two-handed above his head at mid-wicket. He went back, pulled it, and pulled it hard. But Hilly got two hands to it, couldn't hang on. Went sort of burst through her mm. hands and up. Um, and then this morning, there was a very, very difficult court and bowl chance for Louis Kimber, actually. Yeah, that was, um, that was a Hit that a very tough hard, one. but again, he got two hands to it. Yeah. And, and Kimber's got such good hands. You sometimes, you know... Oh, absolutely. You, you think he can catch everything. Catch it's it. Superman in. With Salisbury is in. Simpson defends again back down the pitch on the on side this time. And then that one just there on 90 down the leg side off Salisbury. Ben Cox, who's <laughs> also got excellent hands, flung himself to his left. J just touch it round the post, so yes. to speak. But that's all it does. So, so they go down as chances because all the fielders got their hands to the ball. But uh, all three extremely difficult. He's batted well, Simpson. He has. You have to hand it to him. He has indeed. Salisbury's in. Bowls to him. He's driving in the air for a good few feet, but he's placed it beautifully back up the pitch. His fourth sort of straightish drive in a row. And uh, he wasn't afraid to hit the ball in the air. Wasn't quite at the pitch of the ball, but placed it perfectly. And it runs up to the boundary at the Bennett end in front of the Turner Indoor Centre. For four, he moves on to 97. So we'll get Brooke, um, we'll get Adrian in because it's tradition that uh, 
<coughs> commentator for that batter's side sees them over the line. Well, that's very kind of you, Richard. In comes uh, Salisbury coming into bowl to uh, Simpson, and Simpson defends out into the offside. Salisbury will probably take a another half an hour to get <laughs> Hi, Roman. Good to see you. Good to see you again. Did, did you have a couple of quid on Frosty Jack, on Foxy's Jack, whatever it was called? Frosty Jacks is a completely <laughs> different thing, as I understand. <laughs> well, what was he called? Foxy Jack. I remember he? a friend telling me about it. I've never experienced it myself. <laughs> Foxy Jacks, no, no, I um. You, you, yeah. Do you know what? I didn't even, I didn't even think to look last night. Uh, in comes Salisbury, running in, around the wicket, bowls to John Simpson, who drives down the ground, actually hits the bat of uh, Danny Lamb and ricochets away, and there is no run. It's the end of the over 4:41 uh, for six. What should we do here, Richard? Should we, should I keep going or, because Danny Lamb is on on 89. I'm sorry, I missed your. A, a, a lot of your chat, and I'm sure whilst this is a, a frustrating partnership for Leicestershire from a Sussex point of view, I mean, these two have really been very positive today. They've been very good. Lamb has batted very, very well, and uh, I think if you asked uh, most of the country, they will have played against Danny Lamb in the second team at Lancashire and in and out of the first team, and you could tell he's, he's a very, very good player, a strong character, and he's always had it in him, and now he's got his chance, and he seems to have taken it with both hands. Uh, it is... Um Scott Curry comes in bowls to Lamb and he plays down the onside of the track um, and there is no run. I mean, primarily uh, Roman, he's played white ball cricket. I remember um, Sussex playing a 50-over game up at Sebra School. Have you been to Sebra School? I haven't. It's beautiful. Not that I know of. Yeah, it's a beautiful ground and Sussex played Lancashire a few years ago and Danny Lamb saw Sussex over the saw Lancashire over the line in that game. No, he's just a very fine lower order player. Yes, yeah, very good. And hasn't played a lot of first class cricket. I mean, only something like no. 26 games. Um, in comes uh, Curry Bowles, and then smashes that one. Well, that's a brilliant stop. That is the sort of stop that can lift a side. Lewis Hill down at mid on threw himself to his right and prevented a certain boundary that the skipper set an example. Absolutely. And uh, that's that's what Leicestershire are going to need. They're going to need a couple of uh, special pieces of fielding. Um, if we're going get, to get a wicket, maybe a special run out, a special catch, but also little pieces of fielding like that can provide a great deal of energy to the fielding side. Curry in again, bold short lamb pulls that away all the way down to uh, fine leg. In fact, he's completely bisected. There are two fielders set back on the leg side, and Lamb's completely bisected them. He goes to 93, so six to 4, 45 for six. I'm just going to lean over and grab my laptop. You, be, be, you keep going, Rome. Actually, I'm surprised to see you here. I thought you'd be in your red and white scarf. Oh no, no, no! Your Wrexham that scarf was, today. That was last night. That was last night. Uh, did you ever celebrate? Uh, well, you probably can't say. Did you ever no. celebrate lemonade? Or? No, well, I'm, I'm not allowed. I'm not even allowed to drink anything uh, with the with the injury. So you can um, have a lemonade. Well, I can have a lemonade. Yeah, I didn't, but I could have. <laughs> um, Curry bowls. It's a full toss, and Lamb digs it out, plays it down the track. No run. Yeah, no. A couple of loud screams at the TV, watching uh, watching Wrexham pile a few goals into. Uh, into the net last night, which was brilliant. And uh, obviously results went our way underneath us in the playoff spots, which meant we got promoted yesterday. Yeah, wonderful. That's Wrexham that uh, uh, Roman is talking about. Uh, it's been a real, it's been a terrific success story at the race course ground. I don't know if they call that anymore. In comes Curry Bowles and Lamb works that to, well, I'm going to call that gully. Hmm. Shortish backward point and there is no run. Yeah, they still call it the race course. Um, or my race course as a variation, or the Kai Ras, which is a uh, race course in Welsh. Um, but they've... Uh, oh, say that again. The, the Kai Ras. Oh, right. C-A-E space R-A-S. Right. Yes, and uh, they, they've they've changed the name now officially to the Stock Kai Ras, which is a, an iced coffee company, I, I think, in Canada. Korean Bowls, played into the uh, offside by Danny Lamp, goes through for a single. He goes to... 94 the way Danny Lamb has batted in this innings. He won't put it past him to the six to go to his his hundred. Four forty six for six. These two coming together when Sussex were on two hundred and eighty two. So I need you to be good at maths here, Roman. Eighteen plus forty six is I reckon it's a partnership of one hundred and sixty four. One sixty four. Bang on. Yeah. Bang on. Um, so. Of the over four four six for six lamb sixty four Simpson ninety seven. Well, what, what's the word amongst the, the, the you could tell us the word amongst the Leicester lads in terms of the pitch, the way it's playing, the way the game's panning out? Um, placid, I would say. It's, it's pretty. You know, there's not a great deal going on. Um, 
I think your, your best bet is having a spell of changing it up like we see uh, Cumberland. Totally it's um, not too easy. I think you can, uh, as I was just saying to Richard there, slower balls may work in your favour when Lamb's playing so positively. Um, but John Simpson, as, as correct as he is, be tough with a variation. So Simpson, three short of what will be a maiden first-class century for Sussex. In comes Austin Bowles. Simpson drives but without timing to uh, mid-off. And there is no run. That was one of those Roman, I reckon, that hurts your hands. Yeah, right bottom of the, of the bat. Right off the bottom of the bat, It's a good it? job it's sunny. Because <laughs> if it was cold, that really would have stung. To mid-off. So do you speak Welsh? Uh, dribs and drabs. I, yeah. I can I can read it fluently out loud. Can you? Um, so I know all the sounds and all the ways and uh, and silent mutations, but I wouldn't have a clue what I was saying. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Count uh, Salisbury again, running around the wicket bowls, and Simpson turns that onto the leg side. It's bisected the leg side field, and that is a hundred for John Simpson. What a terrific performance by the Sussex skipper. His 100 has come in 197 balls. He's included 14 fours. It's his 11th first-class century and his first century in Sussex colours. What a performance by the skipper. He raises his back towards the Sussex players on the balcony. And that's a wonderful effort that's lifted Sussex into a very strong position in this match. 451 for six. And Roman, you applauded as well. Yeah, a good innings, a very good innings. Um, a, a proper batter's innings. Uh, Salisbury comes in, and uh, I may just put the knockers on it. How many batsmen do you see get out between 100 and 110? I don't know what the stats are. Is it quite a lot? I'm sure it's a lot. Every time <laughs> I look at someone getting 100, you know, Joe Clark yesterday got out on 101, um, but so many batters get out at, you know, 105 or 109. Just after they get 100, maybe they just let off a little bit and there's a bit of relief that they uh, yeah, Tom, Tom, let into Tom themselves. Haynes, 108 yesterday. Exactly. A great example. Um, so if, if Leicester switch on here, we may just see a wicket. That's another dot ball on the front foot. Good cricket all round. Um, but he's batted with keep it. Yeah, yeah, not after the hundred as well, which says to me he's very focused um, and, and wants to get the the immediate job finished and over the line for Sussex and uh, put them in a good position to uh, return Leicestershire into bat. John's parents were listening to the commentary over in Spain last week. I don't know Spain, if they're listening today. They'll be delighted if uh, if they are. Salisbury again, full ball. Oh, I think I said 14, so I got that wrong. Uh, well, well batted John Simpson. Um, are, are a lot of the Leicestershire lads golfers? Because a lot of cricketers do seem to like a lot game of golf. Yeah, there's there's a few of them that will uh, will have a go. There was there was a lot more in previous years. Um, I would say myself and Louis Kimber are the uh, are the only ones that that really go out consistently in the su in the summer. Oh, um, you're. you're, you're you play I'm not very good, but I do like a walk around the course, uh, and a cart e is even better if they're available. Um, but Budinger as well, Sol Budinger, um, very good player. Kim plays. So what Ooh. we've done is they've, we've got six golfers each, okay. and the lowest team score gets the majority of the cash that we've put in, so we've dealt in with a fiver each. And then second place is the winning golfer. If he's in your group, you get a, I don't know what it is, maybe 20 quid. That's uh, I'm in second place at the moment and it's tough because you know we get we get the golfers a couple from one bracket a couple from a, a bracket underneath like on the rankings I suppose and then another couple from the bracket underneath oh, okay. that so it's, it's, so so it's, it's fair. fair you can't just come out with four top five golfers you know uh, Travaskis and again it's a full toss which is slapped over mid wicket for four three or four bounces to the boundary beats Harris at long on that's two falls in a row now. Trevaskis just struggling to find his length here. He is. Sussex League goes to 122. And uh, it just seems Simpson has put his foot on the pedal since getting to 100. Seems to be looking a bit more positively than his uh, current 109 off 200 balls. Trevaskis in again, and it's a better length this time. Poked out to the leg side. Simpson not happy with that one. He thought he should have got maybe one or two runs from that. As uh, Travaskis will load up again at the end of his run-up. 
It's a slow walk in and a good length again. Similarly poked out into the leg side. He does rattle through his overs. It's difficult to talk, isn't it, in between his balls? Yes, yeah. Well, it's, uh, that's good as a spinner, you know, in terms of overrate. Plus one at the moment, the overrate. And uh, slightly short this time from Travaskis and Simpson dissects the two short midfield... mid-wicket fielders, sorry, and that goes for another four. And that's three fours in the over. Um, but, yeah... The uh, so it's so it is it's good fun, you know. I think my group were I was pretty happy with it when it came out. I had John Rahm, um, Bryson DeChambeau, Ooh. Uh, and he went out very quickly, didn't he? Scoring very well. Um, Tiger Woods, who's always a chance at the Masters, and uh, do you know what, what was the other one? Russell Henley, right? Who's got a, a good record at Augusta, as far as I know. Um, yeah, and. I thought, do you know what? And I mean, I am in second. I thought I had a better chance than I have. I think Rishi's team is something like ten shots ahead of me. Is he? Um, so he he must have he must have Scheffler, mm -hmm. and a, and a couple of other top top tens at least. Um, well, it's always exciting. Uh, just be nice. I think there's only one European. Who's, I think Tommy Fleetwood's minus one. So we may have a. You never know. Yeah. You never know. I'm sure there'll be Some people watching players. it tonight. Uh, Danny Lamb won't be thinking about the Masters. He'll be Absolutely thinking about, not. about Root, what we can sensibly. I mean, that was a sensible shot as well, don't get me wrong, but he's just opening his shoulders and sucked their eyes here on getting up to decent. Yeah, getting certainly flipped over to a positive mindset now. Uh, not to say that he wasn't before. Of course. But uh, he seems to be a bit more forceful now with his shots. And uh, anything that's just offline, I think he's going to try and put his hands through. These two coming together when Sussex were 285, so a punch of 184 between these two. As in comes Mike Bowles to uh, Simpson, who defends onto the onside. There is uh, no run. They've come in quick time as well because Leicester have bowled 90 overs, so w exactly 40 overs these two have been together for 186, so they're rattling along at four and a half and over. They've accelerated in the last. Uh, well, since lunch, certainly lunch they took at 415 for six. They have scored very quickly. Yeah. Uh, the sun has gone in momentarily. And in comes uh, Ben Mike Bowles to John Simpson, who plays that firmly to mid-wicket. And there is uh, no run. You're listening to live cricket on the BBC, if you've just joined us. Uh, myself, Adrian Hans, alongside Roman Walker. Richard Ray back with you in a few moments' time. But we just... Um, Seeing if we can guide these two Sussex players through to their hundreds. I've seen John Simpson go through. He's on 117. Had an email in from Sam Keir, which I'll read uh, in a moment. It's about Danny Lamb, actually. As in comes uh, Ben Mike around the wicket. Bowls to Simpson. He plays into the offside. He's going to pinch the bowling here. Will uh, John Simpson plays it into the offside. He goes to 118. Is that the end of the over? No, one I more think one more ball to go. So a chance for Danny Lamb to get to his ton. Do you try and hit a four or do you try and take the single? What do you reckon? I know what I'd be doing. You'd hit the four? I'd be, I'm a, I'm of a positive mindset, let's yeah. say that. Yeah, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be looking for the four and if it's not there, maybe try and tuck it in for a single. But easier said than done. Um, so, Danny Lamb, 97 not out in 106 balls. He faces... Uh, ben Mike is in and bowls and Lamb's up on his toes, plays into the offside. They are going to take a single cheeky single actually, played into the offside, deftly played by Danny Lamb, who pitches the strike. He goes to 98. Four, Quick single there. For six. Quick single, taking advantage of the fact that the Leicester boys have now been in the field for 131 overs. That's in and around four and a bit sessions, is it? Mm. Or just under four sessions, maybe? I'm not I'm not too sure on the maths. And what, what does that mean, Roman, when when it, it when it comes to the time for Leicestershire? It's about they've been out there a long time. You get a ten-minute break. How, how does that work? I mean, it is to tough. Refocus. It's tough, you know. It's 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 not easy. There's not a point where it becomes easy either. I don't think. Um, I think there's just a point where you can deal with it a bit better um, once you're used to it, and maybe you get into a rhythm of a season, uh, or you've got the experience like uh, Marcus Harris or Lewis Hill, who have done it for years now. Um, and everyone the left board always and the ball Danny Lester is uh so no uh, just break off actually, comes Travaskis, bowls, and Lamb nudges that round the corner, it's running down towards the boundary, he goes through for one, he goes through for two, and you can tell by the roar down on the Sussex balcony down below us that Danny Lamb has gone through to his 100. What a terrific effort 
from Danny Lamb in 108 balls. It's a ball and a six. It's only the second time in his career that he's gone through to three figures. His maiden first-class century for Sussex, a tremendous effort by Danny Lamb in conjunction with uh, John Simpson. These two have put on 191 for the seventh wicket. Danny Lamb, 100 not out. And comes uh, Trabaskis, bowls to Lamb, plays into the offside, and there is no run. We've got quite an ovation from the Sussex boys on the balcony there. A very good character is Danny Lamb, and he's, uh, he seems to have won the changer room with the Sussex lads over, which I'm not surprised with at all. A very good man. Trabaskis in, and Lamb is at it here, pulling onto the leg side. It's just short of the fielder at deep mid wicket, and Lamb goes through for a single 474. No, yes, 474 for six. I'll just finish this email in a minute from Sam and then I'll hand back over to Richard with uh, Roman. But Travaskis is so quickly through his overs, it's difficult to, um, to talk about much else. Simpson on strike, 474 for six, take off 338. He's, in comes Travaskis, bowls, Simpson is back and plays the ball firmly down the offside of the track. Travaskis in his 25th over, yet to take a wicket. He's fielded really well, Liam Travaskis today, particularly a couple of very good stops. Some great Simpson. energy on the boundary. Yeah, Travaskis uh, in again bowls. Simpson, or rather, feeling missed out there. He looks heavenward as if to say that should have gone for four. And it probably should, but it'd be wrong to be critical. 474 for six. Simpson 118, Lamb 101. Just finishing Sam's email, he says, Did you know Danny Lamb is England and Thunder player Emma's brother? Made me wonder. While there have been plenty of brothers, are they the first brother and sister? to be co-cricketers at the same time. Could well be others but struggling to think of them. Great well, we'll question. see what we can do. It's a great question. Uh, Callum's been in touch. Um, he says, who remembers the Geoffrey Palmer adverts for the Lamb Marketing Board in the 80s and 90s? I don't know where that's come from. I must have missed that conversation that was uh, going on. Um, and Martin Mahoney in High Wycombe says, listening to the commentary whilst watching West Ham be Fulham. Isn't modern technology a wonderful thing? Well done, Simpson and Lamb. The timing of a declaration will be important with the rain predicted tomorrow. In comes Ben McKay by Dan the Floyd. Yeah, uh, um, a good shot there on the first ball of this over by Lamb. Very aggressive. Um, unfortunate that the fielder is out there on the boundary at cover. And uh, Ben Mike setting up here with a with an interesting straight field. Two mid, two mid wicket fielders and a deep square with a fine leg. As he comes in round the wicket to John Simpson, a slow ball, good length, defended. How are we, Richard? W wondering when John Simpson's going to come in here because I think he knows that if they're going to win this, they're going to have to give themselves time, and if they have to chase a few at the end, so, so be it. But the yep. what, 62 and 75 ahead, so 137 to the good. I think they might want a couple of overs before tea, almost. But I agree. Yeah, yeah. My my initial thoughts at lunch were maybe an hour of aggressive batting after mm -hmm. after lunch and and come in and give themselves the best chance. Um, ben Mike again, slow ball bouncer, a good change up there, which is ducked by Simpson for a dot ball. Um, yeah, because you've got to give yourself the best chance. You, you really do, especially, you know, with this ball, the pitch as it is, um, plenty of runs in the pitch still to come. And it's it's not going to be easy to take another 10 wickets on this. Well, they've got the insurance policy of the second innings anyway, so they've yeah, nothing yeah. to lose. So, you know, there's no point getting 300 ahead, I don't think. No, Something absolutely like that, not. You yeah. know, and, you know, just having half an hour tonight, yeah. you've got to give yourself time. A full ball this time, Yorker almost from Ben Mike. Good change up, see, he's gone two slow balls, one good length, one short, and then followed with Yorker. Maybe just one, the next ball's going to be from Ben Mike. Some good change ups. Yeah, not easy. The clouds slightly come over and, and blocked, our, blocked our lovely sun rays that we've had today so consistently so far it's freezing when it's on is it it really is there's a horrible breeze across mm. the ground which is uh, carrying some really cold air another yorker from ben which is dug out by simpson tried to play it down to third man but didn't quite succeed and uh, only found kimber at gully yeah, I've noticed that john simpson and his side sussex are going to be looking to declare at some point in the near future we may well see Another slower ball overs or left. a Yorker. Take two off for the, off for the change. So 52 overs left after this today. And it's a full ball. Nearly beat Simpson. 
stay slightly low didn't quite get into the ball but it's a dot ball nonetheless heads off with his hands on his head Ben Mike hasn't had any any luck today and uh, no joy in terms of adding to uh, his wicket returns none of the less Chipolas <laughs> added to their wicket returns so far today it's been uh, very much Sussex's day so far so far right Travaskis can he pick up a maiden wicket maiden first class wicket in less in Leicestershire colours that is of course it's going to come around to the other centurion the right-handed centurion Danny Lamb goes in bowls tosses it up outside off stump slap drive into the ground from Lamb it uh, bounces up and uh, slowly to Louis Kimber Short extra cover. Travaskis is in quicker, flatter delivery, but a little bit wide and a little bit short, and he can go back, lamb, and cut and does out to the sweeper on the offside boundary. I think is Tom Scriven. Forecast much talked about for tomorrow isn't brilliant, Roman, so that is probably in the back of John Simpson's mind as mm. well that we might lose overs tomorrow too. Over the wicket goes Travaskis. Bowls again flat, again a little bit short. Simpson goes back with straight-ish delivery, plays it firmly down. He's almost too correct sometimes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Um, Simpson, he's uh, so well sort of grooved in terms of playing straight that he sometimes finds it difficult to slog. In goes Travaskis, tosses it up. Beautiful little paddle sweep. Gets to it on the full, turns it back around the corner. Ben Mike athletically runs in and fields, but Simpson made his two comfortably. 70 he says waiting for the scoreboard 78 for six at 62 to 78 140 now the lead Travaskis steps in and uh, bowls slog swept off the leg stump and it's going to bounce short or well short in fact of uh, Ben Mike who's been in the air that long and it is going to be just a single as a consequence Simpson on to 121 Best score. Is, uh, I think he's got 160 odd. Uh, his highest first class score. Travask is back round to Lamb, who's going to try and attempt to reverse. Access sweep all areas, Danny Lamb. He played wow. it well in the end. He sort of wrong footed Peter Hanscom, who'd gone to sort of short third man, wide gully, whatever you want to call it. And uh, he, he took a half a step to his left, Peter Hanscom. Lamb actually hit it the other side of him and down to the boundary for four. And the applause is for the 200 partnership. Well, they've both played well, very, very well. They've taken their chance on a on what looks to be a pretty, pretty flat wicket, Rich. And uh, it does. And uh, they've certainly cashed their hands in this game so far. Um, bowled well as well, Danny Lamb in, in their bowling innings. Um, as we know, well capable, very, very handy cricketer. Yeah, very nice caught and bowled off uh, off Ben Mike, who's looking to pick up a first wicket of the day for Leicester. He's going to be bowling from the Bennett end. You see, there was a slight conversation there between Hanscom and Hill, two very experienced players, and Harry Swindles at mid-wicket there. Uh, caught on as a subfielder for Harris as Ben Mike continues. A good length ball, full pace, top of the stumps, defended. Dot ball. Do you, think, do you think they sense the declaration that Harris is just taking a few minutes to? Potentially, potentially. Um, it could just be something as, as as innocent as a toilet break off yeah. a one over back sure. on. He's um, cold out there, you know. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, he was in Australia last week. What can it you was, say? Yeah. It, it is it's freezing out there for them boys, and, and fair play to them. You can see now, even Peter Hanscom's got them hand warmers in his pockets, and only pulls them out just as Ben Mike. Starts his run-up. Another ball, exactly the same spot. Good cricket all round, them last two balls. One for five, the lead now. See, I can't quite see any movement down the bottom here for any sort of Sussex bowlers or coaches or anything like that. 20 overs until T. If they want eight overs before T, something like that, potentially yeah. another 10. Another 10 overs. Another 10 overs, try and get... 60 70 runs yeah there's definitely been a, a switch of mindset from Simpson as Ben Mike comes in again full driven and fielded by the bowler off his own bowling three dot balls in a row something may just happen here something may just happen yeah 
yeah, maybe they might they might get bowled out going for the, for, for the runs, but another ten overs they could be leading by two hundred ish. That would that's just another fifty five away. Yeah. Well, quick runs uh, is absolutely perfect for Sussex, whether they get bowled out or not. If yeah. they can get to a target that I'm sure they've set themselves, that will be their, their main aim, I think. Ben Mike in again, slightly leg side, clipped away to deep square, jogging through for the single. For Rishi Patel fields down there. Just me. Just a bit for his Rishi. Jimmy slips up, but uh, yeah. now he's. Uh, out on the boundary or in the covers or wherever he's yeah no a great pair of hands Rish in, in mm. the slips and he's, he's earned his place in there and with uh, with Colin going up to Durham this season um, Louis Kimber retains his spot now in in second slip and obviously Peter Hanscombe as Ben Mike again full dug out by Lamb straight back to the bowler um, Peter Hanscombe as we know a great pair of hands he kept for us last year and uh, luckily enough we've we've signed Ben Cox who is a fantastic keeper um Pete doesn't have to keep now so he's uh, as I understand a bit more comfortable in the field enjoys his cricket more when not keeping a certain amount of seniority guarantees him his place in the slips perhaps oh for sure <laughs> but also his quality as well yes, his, his course, quality yeah. gets him there in the first place Ben Mike in for the final ball dug out again by Lamb well bowled from Ben Mike one off the over and that is over um, as we see Scott Curry just jogging off here. Marcus Harris coming back on the field. And the umpires are having a little conversation in the middle of the pitch here. I wonder what that's about. There have been a few of those, actually. It was I don't know if you, you saw earlier when um, this morning when Danny Lamb hit one into the into the nets area, sort of bounced mm. and, and went o over into the nets area. Scott Curry and Peter Hanscom went into the nets. They couldn't find the ball, came back. Umpires sent them back. No, keep looking, really? keep looking. And I was guessing it was possibly because we didn't have enough kookaburras of the right, of the sort right of quality. Vintage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, Th that would make sense. It, yeah, that was the only thing I could think them to saying. Look, you've got to find it because at that stage it was twenty nine oh. Must have Cornish origins with a name like that. Bowls a little Surely. bit short. There goes back. Lamb slaps it past Kimber out towards Marcus Harris. I'll ask Liam, but I don't think today is going to be a good day to ask him. I think it's probably, wow. you know, it's a tough old day. None for 108 at the moment. But uh, most of the Leicestershire players, uh, the bowlers, that is, obviously, have, uh, are getting close to bringing up a century. 486 for six. Back over the wicket to John Simpson, who goes back, forces firmly, and then looks up to the sky in annoyance because he can't get it past Rishi Patel, who's at uh, straightish extra cover. Trevaskis sort of steps to his mark and bowls a bit flat a little bit short but Simpson again plays almost too correctly very straight bat off the back foot and sprawling to his left Travaskis makes the stop one way or another, another end of the over quick over 86 yeah gets through it over eight currently plus one it probably isn't far off being level now I wouldn't think they don't they don't sort of change it until the uh, intervals for some mm. reason at the moment. I'm not quite sure why that is. I suppose if it was sort of plus three and, and Leicestershire were in a bit of danger in that respect, they'd probably put it up. But yeah. uh, I don't think yeah. they are at the moment. I'm sure the uh, I'm sure the umpires and the scorers are well in uh, uh, are chatting to each other almost by the over, I reckon. Um, ben Mike to continue at the Bennett end. Danny Lamb facing up, bat up. Oh, he's gone for a scoop and he's got hold of it. He's got a hold of it. That looks like it's gone for six. Yes. It has. What yep. a shot that is. And Joss Butler-esque. <laughs> His former teammate. That's a brilliant shot. He's certainly seen it well, eh, Rich? He is. He's now closing on his first-class career best, which is 129. So, a few more of those. A couple more of those. And we're there or thereabouts. And we're certainly closing in on a declaration with shots like that. You can see that he's trying to access areas where Lewis Hill hasn't managed to block off, which he can't really block off behind the keeper. Um, ben Mike goes again. That stayed low. It wow. That's it gone it underground. And Cox has done really well to stop it even behind the stumps. It didn't go at all. Danny's ben belief Mike. Is, is Danny Lamb. But again, Simpson won't mind that. It hasn't cleaned Danny Lamb up because no. simply because it was fractionally too wide. But... It would, if that had been straight, it would have cleaned up any batsman in the world, I suspect. 
it did not get off the ground. Wow. I know we were saying we'd seen a couple go up and a couple go down, but that is... Uh, wow. That is underground. Ben Mikein again, going to look for that same spot, no doubt. He has, and Danny Lamb's done it again. He scooped it. It's gone for a two-bounce four this time. And he's seen it like a beach ball. Wow. Yeah, it was... <laughs> well, let's take some guts after seeing that ball before I was, I was go underground. Just, I was just thinking, you would not... Yeah, you'd have to be quite brave to do that, but brave he was, and... Uh, Absolutely. Just to put it to one side, to put, put it out of his mind. But as I say, Simpson won't, won't have minded seeing that one creep from, from Ben Mike, because Sussex, I think, will be bowling before too long. It'll be interesting to know the roller situation and if Leicestershire have a heavy roller, because that may take effect on the bounce again. That may make the variation Last go lower again. Last season you could again. use it twice. Now, I don't know what the w whether they've changed that for this season. I don't know. He's gone again for the scoop. Has he hit that? No, missed it straight through to Cox. He's pursued that tick from Thor's. So uh, I don't blame him for going for it again. It looks like they've slightly brought fine leg finer and maybe even third man you almost want a long if stop is a don't you man. really yeah, in sure the old club cricket man. long stop yeah well it's tough it, it, I have it's seen them in first class cricket sometimes yeah it's it's really tough to uh, to set a field for that you know and it's always going to be a quirky field as soon as you put uh, as soon as you put someone that close to the line of the keeper but a tactic is a tactic you know um, we've now got three out on the leg side two behind square one just in front and it's a full ball from Ben Mike. Good change up. Defended back to it. But the way these two are batting. Well, the partnership is now 214. Despite the runs that have gone in this over, Ben Mike's bowled a good over. He's been good. He's executed what he wants to. And he's unlucky to have gone for the uh, runs he has. And he's gone again down leg side. And it's a dot ball finish. I'm kind of with you. I, th I think another eight overs. Mm. No, Get as many as they can. Pulling out quite yet, I don't think. But uh, if, if they get 200 ahead and, and, and they, they can have a little dart before tea, after tea. Yeah. I think the big tell when we're maybe one or two overs away is when John Simpson looks for the boundary almost every ball, maybe every other ball. Um, because we know how calm and calculated he is. As soon as he starts doing that and there's a there's a switch being flicked, that's when we know we're maybe one or two overs away. I would imagine Adrian will start to be looking at record partnerships uh, for Sussex against it is the best people for one there, Richard, as I can see. Plus two. Uh, plus two, sorry. Yeah, it's gone I'm up one. I'm surprised about that. Good mid session. Travaskis bowling, round the wicket he goes and bowls. Driven back past him or through him almost along the ground by Lamb. He's hit it pretty straight and he wants a second but Simpson had to stay in his ground just in case Travaskis deflected it onto the stump so he was a little bit slower in getting to his end and uh, there wasn't really a realistic prospect of a second but Leicestershire's players are spread around the wide green acres so of this, uh, uh, the county ground. This passage of play may just play into Travaskis' hands as well because he's a very good white ball bowler mixes up his length and his paces very well. Over the wicket he goes, tosses it up Simpson very conventionally forward carefully forward defensive back down the pitch to the Cumbrian not the Cornishman <laughs> in he goes bowls tosses it up a bit hit in the air very straight over through mid off had Lewis Hill for example been in a conventional mid off position then it would have been straight in the bread basket as it is it uh, I'm sure Simpson was aware of that it through, hit through the ball and it's Curry down at long off who does the fielding. Simpson on to 125. Back round goes Travaskis to Lamb who's waiting for the ball. Slapping it out towards point. Lovely fielding by Ben Mike and Simpson has to scurry back into his ground. Thought there was going to be one there. There wasn't. Travaskis long sleeved shirt is in and bowls. Lamb slog sweeps and where's that gone? All the way into the members seats between the meet and uh, the pavilion. And uh, well, that isn't quite a uh, personal best for Lamb yet. He moves on to 125, but he does bring up 
a Sussex 500, 505, 4, 6. Leicester started the day, Leicestershire started the day with, a lot, with high hopes really. Sussex was still 56 behind at 282 for 6. They've added 223 to that score without the loss of a wicket. Well, you've got to give it to them. Um, a 223 partnership so far and still going doesn't come around easy. And they've worked hard, they've batted well. As we see Lamb there, 125 off nearly a runner ball. And Simpson, 125 off 230, has been in there for a fair amount of hours now. And I don't think Leicestershire have bowled badly, um, which is which is a tough pill to swallow for the boys. Um, ben Mike continuing with a great spell so far. And that is six. That's on the top of the meat. That's rolling over the back of that building. And that's just up. John Simpson's on the leg. Beautiful pick. The pace of the ball, didn't he, from Ben Mike. Sussex players calling for drinks and gloves and all sorts of things. They know they've got a bit of her time now. In a few moments, Rishi Patel disappears behind the meet. There is a sort of road there, and it's been found already. A good effort by uh, a member of the public who went down that sort of road behind the meet as well. So it was found fairly quickly, and uh, drinks have to retreat back to the boundary because they have to wait until the end of the over. Beautiful pick up by Simpson. This may just be the over for John Simpson to put his foot down. Oh, and that's it. Just slightly early on it, Simpson. Maybe forcing himself into an error with uh, a yeah. bit more of a, a positive mindset there. Um, as, as Ben's running in for his 30th over here, I think this uh, just shows how fit this lad is. Deserves another wicket. Absolutely does. And uh, again, charging in, Ben. Good length, heavy ball, defended out to the offside. He came back to Leicestershire from Yorkshire. Didn't really get much of a chance up there in first class cricket. Just played the one game for them and uh, missed his first class. But oh, he's getting plenty now. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's can't uh, complain. Not looking back, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> we were probably thinking maybe, maybe didn't want quite this much, but. He's getting no, it. He's, he's, he's bowled brilliantly. Despite the uh, despite the team run rate and, and his personal run rate, it's very flat out there. And when you've got pace on, sometimes the quicker it comes, the quicker it goes. And it's unfortunate, really, with the with a cook of a ball that it's doing nothing. And that's a full ball. John Simpson has lifted it. It's plugged a little bit, but it does look like it's going to go to the boundary. That's four runs over the top. And uh, just as I said earlier, I think the big tell will be when John Simpson starts putting his foot down and looking for boundaries. Well, he's definitely doing that now, isn't he? But, I mean, what's that lead? 173 now. Maybe maybe they'll go a little bit earlier than we were suggesting. But on the other hand, while well, they're scoring this quickly. Yeah. It may just be that they've, they've got a time frame which they're going to pull out and as many runs as they can get. It may not be a, a, a run target. It may be an overs target where they're going to say, right, we're going to have, for example, eight overs before T and just get as many runs as you can before then. Uh, but it also may be a, a, a run that, you know, they may be saying, right, target 200 ahead, and then we pull out. Yeah. Um, it could be anything, and we just don't know a fear. But two balls left of the over for Ben Mike. He bowls it into the pitch. It's a slower ball. It looks like it's a chance on Davini. He's left a bit. He's left, a bit. He's his left hand a little bit. He was running along in front of the meat, stuck out his left hand as he dived. Maybe just got a fingertip to it. Yeah, no, I don't think we can... Uh, Absolutely not a chance. Even with the best will in the world towards the batsman. But he is creating something, Ben Mike, with the uh, the energy he's providing even this far into a into a, a few spells of bowling. He's creating a lot of uh, a lot of something, a lot of chances, a lot of uh, plays coming in again for the last ball of the over. It's a short ball. It's gone on the exact same line, obviously not as hard, and Rishi gathers it on the boundary, chucks it into Ben Cox, and that's the end of the over. 5.20 for six. And, oh no, he's not coming off. He's Danny Lamb, I thought, was starting. Well, he is marching towards the pavilion, but only as far as Ollie Carter, the Sussex 12th man who is carrying drinks, towels, and all sorts of uh, bits and pieces because uh, they're having a little refresher. Lamb would be disappointed, I think, if the declaration came with him four runs before his first class. Bet. Yes, yeah. Well, while these drinks are out for the batsman, there may be a potential... Uh, word from the from the skipper who's obviously out in the middle can't speak to his lads in the changing room that maybe a message is going back 
to get the bowlers ready for a uh, for a spell before tea potentially. I, I, I'm 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 certain there will be if they keep going at this pace. Uh, you know, absolutely six to yeah. eight, maybe ten overs yes. before tea. Forty eight remain, so sixteen theoretically before tea. Take off the two for the change of ends. Eight or ten overs, another six overs of this, and they're going to be close to. Well, what, 560, 570? Yeah, just keep my eye on moment. Oli Carter down here, coming in, seeing if he's going to give a signal to the ba balcony. But the lead is 182 as Travask <laughs> goes in and bowls back foot defensive. Shot very calm from Simpson. He's a very calm individual. He's got Louis Kimber short straight mid wicket as Travask is in. Bowls, Simpson just forward, just dabs it down towards point. Peter Hanscom is sort of backwards of point, has to run on to the ball. I'm just wondering why Hanscom was sporting a sun hat, but it's probably Ben Cox's, is it? I would imagine. Yes. Travaskis round the wicket, bowls to Lamb, who tries to sort of slap drive it away without Slightly getting to the pitch of there. the ball. Yeah. Wasn't sure, and looking to get it away through the offside, missed it. Travaskis steps in few little steps, bowls, tosses it up. Same, similar sort of shot outside off stump. Went for an expansive drive through the offside. A sort of slightly in-out drive, so to speak, and uh, missed it again. Cox took the ball, took the bails off. Travaskis is in. Quicker, flatter delivery. More comfortable for Lamb in terms of getting it away. He goes back and slaps it down towards long off. And the applause is for Lamb's 126. Now, I thought his record was 129. No, it is now a record. 125 it was, so. Well done, Danny Lamb. A first-class career best. Back over the wicket goes Travaskis. Bowl. Simpson is down the wicket, hitting high and long and straight for six into the pavilion. So it might come. No, not straight away. Poor Liam Travaskis, none for 125 from 29 overs on his uh, Leicestershire debut. They are in diff it is in difficult circumstances, but uh, after the joy of his uh, unbeaten 82 on debut with the bat before he got out on the next day, finding it more difficult with the ball. 5-2-8 for six. The lead is 189. A lot. <laughs> they may be looking for 200. Here. They may just be looking for 200. Yeah. Um, a change of bowling here, uh, as we hear over the over the stadium mic. Um, How are you doing for time, Roman? Well, I've I've got a meeting at around three, so ah, I'll, I'll okay. take this over and shoot off and uh, let you guys continue. Um, but yeah, change of bowling, and it's uh, Louis Kimber. Currently, only bowled three overs for 12. Bowled quite nicely, I thought, earlier, mm. uh, given the circumstances. I think and he's got uh, real potential as a he sort really of Ackerman has. type. Yeah, he really occasional has. Occasional off-spinner. Um, and I think he's, he's got the potential to be more than just an occasional off-spinner and a, a part-timer, as, as they call it. And uh, I try and drill that into him, but he's such a calm, laid-back character. I don't think he quite understands how good he is. And uh, as he comes in round the wicket to the right-handed lamp, good fielding off his own bowl in there. It's all I'm looking to keep his nickname is Kimber. I call him Kimber. Don't they? I don't know why. Whether it sounds a bit like a nickname almost. Yeah, it's well, it's, it's a good name, isn't it? It's a it, it rolls. It's a it's a oh a, a reverse paddle here. Kimber's bowled it very well, so as he can't quite release his arms. He tells me he used to be known as Melman after the uh, giraffe in. Yeah. But I think that's past now. He's he's not mu that much taller than. You hear it every now and then. Every now and then. Um, but no, he's, he's such a calm character, Louis. He very rarely gets gets annoyed. Um, he gets annoyed at tennis more. You know, we played a lot of tennis this winter, and he gets really annoyed. Does he? Oh, oh honestly. Well, these Kimber boys do everything pretty well sports-wise, yeah. don't they? Unbelievable. I think he play, hits a good golf ball. Unbelievable. Yeah. Plays off two or three with with the ball. Is uh, oh reverse sweep there, Danny Lamb. He's got hold of that. That's gone over the meat. Six runs. <laughs> An unbelievable shot from Danny Lamb. That's straight out the middle. And I didn't think, well, as he was shaping up for that, that it would have gone so far. But it, it has. And uh, he's given Kimber something to think about here. 
just, just tee Adrian up for this, but we'll have to check the seventh wicket record for Sussex against Leicestershire, but it must be... This is, this, is the, this is the third highest seventh wicket margin of all time for Sussex. But it must be the record against Leicestershire for yeah, the seventh so wicket, I would imagine. Um, ben Brown and Chris Jordan, 309 against Northamptonshire in 2019. Then Ranji and Newnham against Essex, 344. So they've got a bit of way to go, but they have at least gone past 250. Kimber in again. Slow on the leg side. It's just tipped in for a single and good cricket. They'd, they'd call that back in the day. Get your boundary, get off strike. As uh, the field changes for the left-handed Simpson here. The uh, deep square comes into a now backward point position. and uh, It's very much a one-day field now, Rich. Yes, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's well bowled to uh, finish off the over and defended. And it looks like we're going to have another over. There's there's more, maybe gloves or a drink coming out here, a towel. But given that they've just had uh, drinks and a towel, I, I wonder whether there's a little bit of a message from Paul Parbrace coming on, something like that. I'm sure there is. Um, anyway, right, I'm going to have to shoot off. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm it's gonna been a pleasure, as ever. over to Adrian. And, and, uh, uh, we did our best by bringing up a Leicestershire player to get a Leicestershire wicket, but it didn't work. It hasn't worked all day. No. Great. Thanks for having they me. Good to see you. And you, mate. Thank you. And I'll see you again, perhaps, for the... Uh, what are we up against next? Northamptonshire here, I think, in, in a couple of weeks. In, uh, Adrian, good afternoon, everyone. Wow, the runs are flowing. They are. Travaskis in again, bowls, Simpson plays forward defensively down the offside, there is no run. I heard from uh, John Simpson's parents who were, um, I presume out in Spain, they, play, they said they played golf this morning and they saw John get his 100, so he's batted absolutely beautifully. In comes Travaskis, bowls to Simpson, stands onto the leg side, he was looking for a single, it wasn't there. And Sussex remain at 5.36. Absolutely Six. brilliant innings, yeah, and for the family, for himself, for the team, um, it really has been an absolute spectacle. Very measured performance. Trebaskis in, bowls to Simpson, he's out to the leg side and takes another single. I'm just working out, um, this partnership is 254 uh, and it's come in 52 overs. That's quite a pace. I mean, that's extraordinary, isn't it? In comes Trevaskis, bowls, and Lamb's at it again, looking to heave that away over the leg side of the ball. He's bowled him, and Danny Lamb is on his way. I didn't see the off stump was out the ground, looking to heave that one away over mid-wicket. And I wonder whether that's going to be the declaration for... So I'm just going to nip out and uh, take a video of this, Reach. I'll leave you to chat away. Indeed, and the wicket has finally come. And at uh, one minute past three o'clock on the uh, third day of the game, all day we've been waiting for a wicket from a Leicestershire perspective, but Danny Lamb uh, certainly will raise his bat to the pavilion. What an innings, 134 from 137 deliveries. The score now 537 for seven, a brilliant knock, very, very creative and uh, quite a spectacle as well. He's got a massive smile on his face. He's sort of uh, shrugs his shoulders a little bit as well and goes, wow, what an innings. And uh, maybe even uh, surprise himself to a certain degree. He's uh, done sweeps, he's done uh, reverse sweeps. Quite a few sixes in, in that innings as well. We'll give you the full rundown in a few moments' time. But uh, you can hear the applause from uh, the Leicestershire faithful as well as the uh, Sussex uh, teammates and uh, followers as well. Brilliant innings. And I've certainly enjoyed that thoroughly. From a sibling's perspective, it's going to be going, oh, yeah, I could, I could yeah, try and do one yeah, better than that yeah, as well in my time. Yeah, we had an email <laughs> about that as well. Yeah, Emma, Emma Lamb, uh, you know, great to have such a sporting family, isn't it? Uh, so, yeah, nice, really. Uh, the uh, the hat came off and yeah. yeah. went. Mm. Here's the you know, you know, Dad Lamb has just got out for 100. The, the cloud coverage is definitely there. Kimber uh, from the Bennett end with uh, the new man, Carson, on strike. And this one is swept into the onside. It was in the air for quite a while. <laughs> but he's coming with an air of confidence already and we've probably been told to, to completely go for it from day one and it goes to the uh, uh, deep uh, square leg 
uh, or between square leg and actually fine leg boundary and four more runs onto the target. First ball, four runs. 544 for seven. When do you think the declaration may come then, Adrian? Well, I think perhaps when one of these two is out, is my guess. Next delivery from Kimber. And this one is absolutely thumped down the ground. It's in the air. And it's gone all the way. That's a big hit. For six. A massive hit. Yes, absolutely. Into the Bennett Road end. A massive strike. Carson is not mucking about. This has suddenly turned into a, a, a limited overs match. Um, quite enjoying this. But uh, you are, if you're a Sussex fan, if you're a Leicestershire fan, you'll be known that the declaration is on the way. Right, Carson's 10 from two deliveries. Next delivery comes in from Kimber. And this one's turned into the onside and they go through for an easy single as uh, as Roman was saying earlier on take uh, take the um, the boundary then take a single nice good cricket there 551 for seven is the score line the partnership 14 already next delivery to the left-handed Simpson who's 151 ball comes in this one defended and there is no run it's going to be a very, very tricky session for Leicestershire uh, this evening if the declaration occurs, which is highly likely. So you'll be thinking that uh, what Tom Clark, Tom Haynes will be thinking about what's going to feel like with the pads on. And uh, there's a bit of a discussion going on between the umpire and a few of the Leicestershire players. Mm, I'm entirely sure that's what that's all about. Um, so that partnership of 255 came in just 51 overs between Danny Lamb and John Simpson and they really stepped on the accelerator after lunch. At lunch they were 415 for six uh, Sussex so they added another 117 after lunch in just 117 after lunch in just uh, 21 overs so they were going at six and over after lunch. So, however, wow, quite a rate compared to what yesterday when it was down to about. Yes, two. They, they 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 were very slow yesterday afternoon. Liam Trevaskis has picked up a wicket. He'll be pleased. He's picked up the wicket of Danny Lamb. Catch up with these. Um, yeah, Philip from Newmarket as in comes Trevaskis bowls and Simpson slightly misjudges that wicket to clip it on the leg side and there is no run. Um, New market, good racing territory around there. It is. Mm. So I'll read you this at the end of the over because Dravaskis does rattle through his overs. He's in and bowls, and John Simpson nudges that one through square leg. Picks up another single. He goes to 152, 553 for seven. W when you generally talk to, 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 to head coaches and players, they'll tell you they tend not to look at the weather forecast, but I'm sure Sussex would have had a little peak tomorrow. Um, because the forecast tomorrow isn't great. Showers are forecast. Someone said to me at lunchtime, originally the forecast was really poor. It's improved slightly, but it looks like it's still going to be some rain. And Sussex will be mindful of that. They uh, very nearly beat Northamptonshire last week and the weather intervened. And so they'll be keen if they can to, to avoid the same thing happening in this match. Nothing you could do about the weather. Still 43 overs to be bowled tonight after this one. In comes Travaskis around the wicket bowls and Jack Carson absolutely belts that down the ground uh, straight to Marcus Harris who's just down in front of us and fields one more to Carson he goes to 12 total to 554 five, for seven uh, that means that the lead is 216 mm -hmm. and if he'd thumped it any any harder there it would have gone straight to uh, to Harris Vasquez in again, bowls turned by Simpson to mid-wicket, there is no run. John Simpson say best score 165, not out. I, 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 I'm sure he's not really, well, he might be thinking about that, what do I know? But he goes and has a little letter to Jack Carson, no sign of a declaration. This email uh, comes in from Phil, um, lovely to hear you and your colleagues back on commentary. The sun is shining well, the sun is shining here in Suffolk at least. An excellent day so far with our two new players both scoring fine centuries. I appreciate it's early in the season, but there does feel a stronger focus and a firm plan in place in both games so far. Stepping up the pace at the right time, I wonder what your thoughts are on this. It remains to be seen if our attack can take the 10 wickets in the second innings on what looks like a docile pitch, but fingers crossed. He goes on to say, I know a few folk have commented on the stream, and sadly this afternoon has become worse, and it's sadly pretty much unwatchable. 
everyone's saying wow this guy could definitely bat four more to the total four more to Carson who's on 17 well, from seven well he made 61 last week against Northamptonshire he averages over 30 in first class cricket so he's no mug with the bat next delivery and oh, dragged down short Kimber did a good job there just varying it up and Carson didn't quite get into position there. Ball could have gone anywhere. Came off a, a thick inside edge onto the keeper. No run. Next one coming in. And thumped into the onside this time. They take one. They think about the second. No, they go back. Uh, well turn fielded. back. And yeah, good fielding there in the deep. Who is that? That's Liam Travaskis. He's been excellent in the Brilliant. field for Leicester. Yeah, just to say, Jack Carson averages 29.2 uh, with the bat top score of uh, 87. Simpson now on strike. This one's a loop delivery and pushed between uh, mid off and a sort of a <laughs> deep mid off as well in the deep and they go through for a single. This is where John Simpson's playing a blinder. He's knowing that his other partner is hitting the ball like a beach ball and he can see it really well putting him back on strike. Carson back on strike. Kimber comes in. This one dragged down short. Oh, and gets thumped to the well, short bit of cover position. Yeah, didn't quite get his body in position, uh, did he there? And uh, that looks like, you have to remind me who that is, actually. I can't quite see the number on the back there, but went through the fielder, four more runs. That is not what you need. I think that was Louis Kimber. Um, it was absolutely belted away by Carson, but not what you need at all. 22 of 10 for Carson. Next delivery comes in and Carson absolutely thumps this into the onside. It was short and pulled into the onside, but there's a player in the deep there for Leicestershire and one more to the total. So Jack Carson now on to 23 from 11 deliveries. Yeah, we're talking about four day cricket here in the Vitality County Championship Division two match here, but it feels a little bit like a one day game, but we're approaching probably some kind of declaration, five, six, five for seven. I'm sorry, it wasn't Louis Kimball. What are you talking about? Yeah, no, it, was, it was Matt Salisbury. Well, actually, you saved me earlier on. I was talking about the uh, the openness of uh, Clark and Haynes. No, they're not going to get another go, are they? <laughs> Richard Mattel and, and Marcus Harris uh, will be coming up. And uh, actually, Marcus Harris has been on the boundary having a chat with some of the coaching staff. So maybe he's thinking about those pads getting on. Adrian Harms, Rita Green, BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Leicester, here on a cloudy Grace Road. Now as in comes Liam Travaskas, comes in and bowls to Jack Carson, who takes a couple of steps down the track, plays it down to a long honour, picks up a single. Sussex go to 5.66 for 7. Carson to 23. Skipper Simpson on 153. Uh, Leo has been in touch. Thank you, Leo, who was pointing out the record Sussex 7-wicket partnership, which is between Ranji and Newham. And 1902, 344. I didn't quite get there, Simpson and Lamb, but it was a wonderful partnership between the pair of 255, which is now the third best Sussex partnership for the seventh wicket, only eclipsed by Ben Brown and Chris Jordan down at Northamptonshire in 2019. I remember that game as well. In comes Trabaskis, bowls to Simpson, who sweeps the ball down to deep Packwood Square, picks up another single. He goes to 100 and 54. Uh, thank you for your email, uh, Leo. Um, Andy Peart has been in touch. Uh, this has been a great listening, he says, and confirms the positive feeling that came from the AGM last month. Uh, in comes uh, Travaskis, who's in and bowls, and Carlson drives without timing to cover. There is no run. He says, could you give a mention to my daughter's football team? Hove Park Colts, who won the Sussex Under-13s Girls Sussex County Cup Final at Lansing this morning, 3-0. Delighted to. Well done, girls. In comes Travaskis and a wild hoik by Carson. Doesn't hit the stumps and it is a dot ball. So well done. Fantastic. Andy right. Peart's daughters, Hove Park Colts, they won the Sussex Under-13s Girls Sussex County Cup Final at Lansing this morning by three goals to nil. Well done. In comes uh, Travaskis Bowles, and Carson's at it again, and that has gone many a mile. That's oh. gone sailing over the meat cafe and bar. Wow. That has gone miles. Jack Carson goes to 30 off just 15 deliveries. He's been sat in the, the dressing room for a long time today, Jack Carson, with those pads on, and he's come in and thoroughly enjoying himself. 30 off 15 balls. Sussex are 573 for seven. You're going to need to get your calculator out here, uh, Rita. I'm ready. 
Oh, the lead? Oh, yeah, I can help you with that. Yeah, 229. Thank you, Richard, uh, is the lead. And I think it's more than that now. I think it's 235. Oh, 235. Two, two, yeah. Well, I've got 200. Well, it's somewhere in between, ladies and gentlemen. It's huge. Uh, 200. Well, I've got it's 235. Yes, that's what I've yep. got. Yep, okay. And they're still looking for the ball. But there's still 41 overs remaining today. I just... As I say, you don't know whether, in fact, Sean, someone has just come running out with the replacement ball. Um, but a big hit by um, Jack Carson. Thank you for your email, Andy. And uh, in fact, that email has come through twice. But great to hear about your daughter's success for the under 13s uh, this morning. And this has been great entertainment. Hope you're enjoying it here. Well, BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Leicester, Adrian Holmes, Rita Gree, and Richard Ray, your commentary team here today. And it's going to be Scott Curry who's going to carry on from the Bennett end of the ground. Well, the partnership is all, all already fixed. Mm. Mm. Well, and there's a little thing in that, surely. Well, last year in the game at Hove, Jack Carson was actually disciplined in that game where um, um, I think it was Ben Cox, Richard will correct me, was running to the. Um, taking a run, and Jack Carson stuck his foot out and got severely disciplined for it. So I don't know if that's a little bit of afters from that last season, but Scott Curry did seem to sort of almost go out of his way to um, run towards Jack Carson. But let's hope there's nothing more than that. Scott Curry in again from the Bennett end. And this one is a full toss. And uh, he only saw him coming as that uh, comes into John. You see some real ingenuity and creativity in the shot making right now. Uh, but well done, Curry there, actually. It takes a lot when you're a fast bowler coming in, steaming in, to try and deviate the ball into an awkward position for the batter. Here comes the next ball coming in. And this one is absolutely thumped down the ground. Or oh, not quite thumped as uh, timely as I'd hoped um, from a ramping up my sort of, you know, voice towards a four. OK, don't worry, Leicestershire fans, it wasn't a four. But one more to the total. Carson is absolutely flying here. 575 for seven. Do you think there might have been a little bit of niggle in that then? I mean, do well, I don't know. You don't like to read too much into these things, but possibly. Simpson on 155 not out. Next delivery, very full. In fact, Yorker length delivery. And uh, dug out by John Simpson. And there is no run. But it looks like... Scott Curry is fired up a little bit here, and, and quite rightly. You know, he's seen his team being hit round the park considerably, and uh, the Scottish international is looking to uh, try and, well, make an impression best he can. Here he comes in again, and this one's cut into the offside. It was short well and fielded. wide and really nicely fielded, absolutely, at point. That man, who I is it? Uh, Scriven, actually, Tom Scriven, who's... Uh, He's been doing a fair amount of bowling today and actually throwing himself around in the field. That's exactly what you need as a fielding side, uh, but probably saved, what, a couple more runs. There was a fielder behind him as well. One more to the total, two, five, seven, six for seven. Carson on strike, ball comes in, shorter delivery, and it's a no ball. It is, and in terms of no balls, that is the 15th no ball that Leicestershire have bowled in this innings. Yeah, they're totting up, aren't they? It, haven't oh. been, it hasn't been one for a little while, or maybe since I, certainly from my time on commentary. Um, but yeah, they certainly do add up. But Curry's not quite getting his uh, foot into the footholds. In fact, he's looking at his studs a little bit here. That's a typical sort of <laughs> reaction to overstepping the mark. But here comes the next delivery from Curry. The final delivery of the over, probably, and pushed into the onside really nicely by it's two Jack there. Carlsworth. Well, they're oh, thinking about it. Yeah, but yeah, Carson was not exactly running fast. He wants to nick, nick the strike, and quite rightly, really, on the strike rate that he's uh, going at. 32 from 19 deliveries. Jack Carson, the total, 579 for seven. What's the lead? More importantly, 241 is the lead. That's huge. Well, Sussex today... I've added 297 um, in a little shy of 57, well, 57 overs and three balls. So they have really motored along today, well over five and over. A lot of that due to Danny Lamb out for 134 um, 
in 137 balls. In comes uh, Travaskis and Carson looks to thump that down the ground. He gets a big lead, thick edge. The ball makes its way down to third man. Carson picks up a single. He goes to 32. The seven. And it brings John Simpson on strike, just nine runs short of a career best for the Sussex skipper. Travaskis in and bowls, and Simpson's thumping this down the ground. That's a lovely shot by John Simpson. That's gone all the way for six runs. A couple of steps down the pitch, and he belted the ball, gun barrel straight, straight back over the head of Liam Travaskis. Simpson to 162. Sussex 586 for seven. So the sun is back with us. Travaskis in again. Bowls to Simpson who sweeps. I don't know if you've got anything on that. I suspect that may be a bye or a leg bye. We'll wait for the umpire's signal and it's a bye. Uh, wicket keepers don't like conceding no, byes. Certainly not. Um, certainly not. But he's kept very well. Has uh, ben Cox, I think that's the first buy of the innings actually, which isn't bad when the opposition of 587 for seven. Travaskis again. In and bowls. Jack Carlson pulls onto the leg side and gets a single down to uh, deep backwards square. In fact, there's so much excitement. I missed the 50 partnership there between Carson and Lamb. That came up Sorry. between the six, I think. Carson, didn't it as well? Yes, it did. Yeah. And which that, is cracking. That Absolutely 50 cracking. partnership has come in. Six overs. Travaskis to Simpson. Simpson defends to back or point. Thinks about the single, but Carson sends him back, and there is no run. Yeah, these two came together in the after 142 overs. Yeah, so in six overs they've added 51. Travaskis in bowls, and is Simpson out? No, he's not. He was. The ball was taken by Ben Cox, who whipped off the bail. I just heard a cry of yes. I don't know if that was Liam Travaskis. Either way, it's the end of the over. 588 for seven. Simpson is on 162. Jack Carson is on 34. Live cricket here on BBC Radio. Sussex and Leicestershire. Richard Ray back with us uh, shortly on commentary. But you would imagine that a declaration is probably not, not that far away. Scott Curry is going back. He's going to bowl the next over from the Bennett end of the ground. He's getting a pat on the back there from uh, Lewis Hill, his it's skipper. Mm, and, and by the way, the end at the last ball of that over, Travaskis, he looked pretty disappointed, didn't he? I think there could have been a little tiny inside edge and the keeper just dropped it, actually. But here comes the first delivery of the next over and absolutely thumped over the bowler's head. <laughs> what an innings Jack Carson is having here. 30... Uh, th well, let, yeah, let, let it just roll over. 38 from 22 deliveries. Thank you very much, Adrian. 592 for seven. There could have been a drop catch possibly at the end of the last over. Uh, that could have been the, the little bit of disappointment there. But uh, first ball of the first uh, of the next over, rather. Carson's thumped that one. Here comes the next delivery. And the very full delivery and bold. Carson's absolutely uh, mesmeric. Innings is completely over now. 38 from 22. Tremendous number of shots for four and, and a six as well that went over the meat as well. Really great innings from him. He pretty much had a full license to absolutely go for it. But his uh, stump has gone flying out of the ground. Hardly any reaction from the Leicestershire players. In fact, they're probably waiting whether there might be a declaration. But that's not forthcoming. But the scoreline now, 500 and 92 for eight and uh, a nice little sort of cameo innings there from Carson. Well it certainly was 38 in 23 balls from uh, Jack Carson 592 uh, for eight. Have a little switch around in the commentary box. Uh, Richard Ray's coming in for uh, Rita. In fact John Simpson is wandering off to get a drink now. I can see Ollie Carter the 12th man coming out well, it really has been all action here today. 148 overs gone in the innings. When it began this morning, we'd had 90.3 overs, so we've had 58. I'm surprised there hasn't been a declaration. Yes, I'm 58 overs so far today, and Sussex have added 310. So it has 254 been to the good. Yeah. With a second innings insurance. Um, and, it, you know, it might take time. The Leicester's batting lineup is a 
decent one. Yeah, I mean, Steve Harris has been in touch up in Aberdeen, and Steve says, I think we should be getting off the field. Declare now, really great effort, but we need the win. Momentum may be everything in this division. It doesn't look like it's going to come before T now, does it? Because six overs, four. There's only be if they declared at the end of this over, they'd only be they'd only get four overs at Leicester before T. Curry then into Ari Carvelas, who attempts a leg side swat very first ball, doesn't get anything on it. It's taken by Cox behind the stumps. I wonder if they're thinking, Richard, they will declare at T, because at least that way Sussex won't lose two overs. Well, there's that. Um, but, but, you know, two overs is only 12 balls. You know, you, you kind of, yeah. And the forecast of 12 isn't great. You want your, your sort of fast bowlers to have a, a rest, sort of have three or four overs, have a rest, can come straight back. After T, in goes Curry Bowles. Good Yorker, dug out by Carvelis. Does well. Curry scampers across, picks it up, crosses his mind to hurl the ball at the stumps at the non-strikers and then realises, of course, there's nobody within miles of those stumps in terms of backup. So... It would be foolish so to do, and he doesn't. In the BBC website for the weather tomorrow, is saying Leicester gusty winds and heavy rain. Really? Yeah, I mean, that's the From latest. When? Uh, raining until 8 o'clock, then showery through till 3, 4 o'clock. I don't know how accurate these forecasts are, but um, certainly showers are in the forecast I saw last night. Curry round the wicket to Simpson. A little bit short. Lovely drive off the back foot by Simpson out through straight-ish. Extra cover. Ben Mike can't get there. Lewis Hill, who's out there on the long off boundary, has a He's drawing in on his first class career best, isn't he? He is 165, not out. Yeah. Do, do, do you want to see him past it? Thank you. Uh, well, you've seen every, we've done every Sussex landmark. So I think, far, I think so we have. So it's been very up, good, so thank keep you. Keep up the record. Um, we know that John's parents have been listening, so I'm sure they're very proud of, of John today. He's batted beautifully. He really has. 164. His maiden century for Sussex. In comes Curry Bowles to Simpson, who defends. And that's been a feature of his innings. He hasn't taken a chance when he hasn't needed to. Um, another message has come in. Uh, John Pengelly. Hello, John. He says, back to T. Nothing wrong with the 300 lead. Um, I think we'll have to bat again. <laughs> well, I, I don't, I'm not sure the weather's actually going to... Um, <laughs> Allow Sussex to bat again. I'd be really, I'd be really yeah. surprised um, because you know Leicester are going to have to to do that. Leicestershire, you know, would have to get their sort of three whatever fairly quickly. So what's the I think coming Just on BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Leicester. Um, a partnership of 255 between John Simpson, who's still there on 164, Danny Lamb, who made 134. In comes Travaska, Simpson defends down the offside of the track, and there is no run. There are some old cynics in the in the, in the the press box. Go on. Mentioning Simpson's first-class career best, I'm sure it isn't in his mind. <laughs> in comes uh, Travaska's bowls, and Simpson turns to mid-wicket. There is no run. Danny Lamb's already passed his career best. In terms of the declaration. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean... I can't believe that would be the case. Declare when you need to declare. I agree. Maybe 600 is the target. Travask is in, and Simpson clips this onto the onside, and he equals his career best. 165 not out. 599... Uh, I've got 167 not out. Have you? Oh, quick info has, anyway. So you, so you, you might well be right. No, no, just, no, just, babe. Just, no, no, let me just... No. It was 125 Danny that. Lamb. There's been so many stats today... Um, in comes uh, Travaskis Bowles and Carvelis helps it onto the leg side and picks up a single. You may well be right. Let me have a little look. Um, leg by. Thank you. Uh, 600 you, up. You are absolutely. Well, oh, my eyesight crimes. What's the matter with me, Jay? You're absolutely right. It is 167. Okay, so he's got a, a couple needed. He's on 165. Yeah. Comes Travaskis Bowl. Simpson cracks this one away through uh, mid wicket. He'll just pick up the single on this occasion. 601 uh, for eight at the end of another Liam Travaskis over. So I'm just looking at John Simpson, born in Bury in July 1988. Uh, ba -ba -ba, Northern Superchargers. High score uh, 167 against Lancashire and Manchester in 2019. 
so you are quite right, my apologies. He needs another two runs to reach that particular milestone. And we've got five overs to go until T. Well, we can definitely say there won't be decoration before T now. Yes, you're right. Because there'll be a couple of overs. So it is going to be Curry. He's going to come in in lovely sunshine now to bowl to John Simpson. He's in and bowls, and Simpson steers this through the offside and picks up uh, another single. He goes to 167, 602 for eight. He calls it. Yeah. And it brings Ari Cavalos out on strike. I wonder who buys the drinks if two batsmen go past their first class. Yes. Yes. Let's yes. share, share the bill, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make things a lot cheaper. In comes that curry bowls to Cavalos, who clips nicely onto the leg side. They think about a single, isn't that? It's a very good stop in there. A, a very tired looking. Who's that in it's there? A skipper. Is it Lewis Hill? He sort of got himself up on bended knees. It was all a bit of an effort, really. But Leicestershire will have some batting to do here tonight, Richard. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, and they've had an awful long time in the field, 150 overs. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, if at the end of play they're sort of 80 for five or something like that, then then the, d the timing of the declaration sounds spot on, isn't it? But in comes uh, Curry bowls to Cavalos. He plays very pleasantly around to the offside and picks up a single. Does Ari Cavalos? He goes to five. Sussex 602 for eight. But having been so close against Northamptonshire, they don't want to get in a position no, I agree. Where, where they, where they yeah. have Leicestershire eight down and, and, and not... Totally, and that's you know, exactly what happened last week. run out of week. time, run yeah. out of time. I mean, so actually, last week, what, they went off for bad light, but then it absolutely hosed with rain. OK. Um, but let's see what happens here. In comes Curry to bowl to John Simpson, and Simpson eases that into the offside. And the applause is because that's a career best score for John Simpson. He's 168, not out. He raises his back. Yeah, I think he knows. Um, and that was in Manchester against Lancashire in 2019. Well batted, John Simpson. Just a little raise of the bat. And as uh, Roman Walker was saying here, he looks very, very focused, uh, John Simpson. He was when he got to his 100. Sussex 604 for eight. Curry in again. Bowl short. Carvelos takes on the short delivery, pulls it down to fine leg, fielded down in front of us by uh, Harry Swindles. Uh, one more to the total, one more to Carvelos, who goes to six, 605 for eight. Has it gone over? Has it not gone up? I thought Carvelos was on five. There you go, it's ticked over now. Six, yeah. 605 for eight. Uh, now the umpire's having a natter about something or another. Uh, oh, was he hit on the helmet there, Carvelos? Maybe he was. Maybe he was. Is he looking to pull the... I don't, don't think so. Well, think well, he, well, he's taken off his helmet. I mean, he signalled the run, and, didn't he, so... And on comes John Morelli, the Sussex philia, physio. Followed by Ollie Cut. I just wonder whether he pulled the ball onto his helmet. I wonder possibly, if that was... Possibly. Um, but he's certainly... The, uh, John Morelli is on. So, the, yeah, I think that's what Harry is saying. Maybe he just glanced his helmet. But the concussion protocols will be observed, which means all sorts of preset questions. Uh, Leicestershire's over is plus three at the moment. Now, bearing in mind they're most unlikely, in fact, absolutely certain now not to bowl again in this match. They, they need to get that over eight um, down a couple, if they possibly can. Now, there have been an awful lot of delays with the ball going out of the ground, and usually the umpires are flexible in those circumstances but uh, so does plus three mean that they're too slow or too that slow. or that yeah, i often get confused there should be different scoreboards say different things I, I see i always thought plus three meant that they were okay on uh overrate but maybe not uh we have got a delay here harry Cavellos is being spoken to by the sussex physio who's come trotting out harry's having a drink that's been brought out by ollie carter who's doing the 12th man duties today um, John Simpson, the skipper, doesn't look too concerned. He's putting his helmet back on and his gloves, and I think Harry Cavalis is, is OK. John Morelli looks content enough, and he wanders off with uh, with Ollie Carter. So we are going to carry on, but a slight delay. A bit more high, well, actually more threatening clouds sort of drifting across the ground. It's, 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 there's quite a breeze here at Grace Road today, and it's carrying a lot of this heavy cloud. While I'm looking over the city of Leicester, which is the side of the... Come away. Oh, I'm to his spectacular 134. 
I say bold, and we sort of had a huge mow, didn't he? And <laughs> miss, missed, missed one at last. 134 of 137 for Lamb. Just looking here, since tea, since lunch rather, mm. Sussex have added a lot. Yeah, they have added a lot. <laughs> 415 for six. So they added... Uh, 191. Indeed. And it was 120 overs at lunch. It's now 151. So they've added 191 of 31, of 31 overs. overs. Good point that Simpson sort of turned into a deep backward square with his reverse lofted sweep. Moves on to 173. Maybe he could get to an unbeaten double century. Round the wicket to him goes Travaskis. Simpson down the pitch, lifting it high. She's going to go over Harris at long on for six. I thought for a minute it was going to go straight to Harris and a disconsolate uh, Travaskis looks down and he probably thought the same. Didn't have a massive follow through, but it was lovely timing. Crom Simpson went straight over the top of Harris, but a good 10 feet over the top of Harris. Simpson onto 179, 616 for eight. Carnage today, absolute carnage as in goes Travaskis bowl. Simpson blocks it firmly through the vacant mid on area. Down to Harris at long on, who carefully forms the long barrier and then uh, throws it away, almost the ball, rather contemptuously back towards Liam Travaskis. Simpson on to 180, 617 for eight. Travaskis in big mo from Carvelas. Another six, it's over wide, long on slash mid wicket. And uh, down at the bottom of the meet towards the uh, the medical center down there. Just to one side thereof. Six more. Well, I don't think I've ever seen Harry Cavellas hit a six before. That's gone a long it's way. It's been a day of firsts, Adrian. A day of firsts. See how many sixes Sussex have hit. Because Danny Lamb... Just have a little look here. Um, Lamb hit... Well, Simpson's hit four. Travaskis steps in and bowls flat, slapped straight back to him by Carvelas. Well, Travaskis' figures at the moment are one for 168 from 34.5 overs. Blows on his left hand, steps in and uh, bowls flat. Down the wicket goes Carvelas, lumps it back over his head, not far over his head, stopped on the second bounce by Harris moving to his right at long off. End of the over. Carvelis has moved on to 13. Simpson, 180 of 272 balls. Hmm. It's about a, Seems long a long time ago, doesn't it? It when does. He was, when he was struggling with yeah, it does. Pujari yesterday evening and yeah, it getting was. tied down, but just shows what the value is of, of, of getting through those periods, hanging on in there, coming in today. And he was dropped when he was on nine. A difficult chance. In fact, he's been dropped three times. He All of them difficult chances, to be fair. Nine, 77 and 90. But, yeah, all extremely difficult chances. Yes, he came in with the scores 212. So he's been there a long time. So, three overs until T. In comes uh, Scott Curry to bowl to Carvelos. Full toss and belted away by Carvelos. And it's gone for four runs. And there's some, some tired looking legs out there for Leicestershire. I'm not really sure that should have gone for four runs, really. Oh. Wasn't a great ball by Scott Curry to Carvelos, but two fielders converging. Couldn't stop the ball going for four. Carvelos goes to 17. 628 for eight. Lead 290 then. Yeah. Carvelos waits, and in comes Curry again, bowls, and Carvelos is now at the ramp shot as well, and he's going to pick up four more, well I tell you what, oh he's gone for six, he's gone all the way for six, the ramp shot by Ari Carvelos, well I know that Ash Wright, who's Luke's brother, has been working very hard with the, the Sussex players over the winter months, and that maybe is a shot they've all been practising, because Daddy Lamb played it to good effect, as did Jack Carson. Now as Ari Cavalos. He goes to 23 off of just 12 deliveries. 6.34 for 8. And this is probably getting pretty demoralising for Leicestershire now. I mean, they've had to been out in that field an awful long time. The field is widely spread. 
As in comes Curry Bowles and Cavalis is hammering that away to the offside. Is it going to be caught? No, he's not. Nothing is going Leicestershire's way. The ball drifts agonisingly out into the offside. Rishi Patel came running in, um, but he couldn't get there. And it's another run to Cavalos, who goes to 24, 635 for eight. Curry now coming into bowl to uh, John Simpson. 180 not out, he's in and bowls, and Simpson just stands tall and hammers that one to backward point, deep backward point, picks up a single, he goes to 181, 6, 36 for 8, I wonder whether Sussex, well it would seem slightly odd to, to pull out now because they would lose, yeah, pointless now, they would, we'll they would lose two anyway. overs, yeah, yeah. We'd, we'd have T now anyway, so yeah. you know, they'll, they'll go through to T, the, the argument will be should should they, you know, will it, will it prove to have been that they needed eight or overs before, before T, you know, um, and have two goes sort of for the seamers. Yeah. In comes Curry again bowls and clipped away by Carvalho's down to fine leg Peter Hanscom fields uh, literally just down in front of us. And one more to the total. Carvalho's goes to 25, 637 for eight. This partnership between this pair is already worth 45. Mm. Uh, which has come in very quick time. Um, what what I would be amazed about is if they continued after T. Yes, that would seem. Yeah, I would be stunned as well. Curry in bowls. Simpson is pulling that one down to deep backward square. Picks up a single. He goes to 182, and Sussex 637 for eight. Uh, Carvelos and Simpson have a little natter. Um, I, I would be so. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I would 300 be. 300 lead. A thre a th yeah, th which is the applause. Thank you, uh, Richard. Yeah, I mean, a 300 lead, 32 overs tonight, all day tomorrow, but we think it's going to rain. Um, I, I, I see no point. I, you know, a few people suggesting that the Sussex should have declared already. I, 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 and I, I kind of get that. I think so. In it, but John Simpson may be proved absolutely correct. Um, you know, to, to, to have kept going. Yeah, well, we'll see. Let's hope we don't arrive here tomorrow. Well, from a Sussex point of view, I hope they don't arrive here tomorrow and find it hosing with rain. But certainly the forecast is for some rain tomorrow. So we'll have to see how that pans out. Uh, we're going to meet down to 183, where, where Carvelis will now try and put this one over the meat, I suspect. And, uh, well, he's going to go over the wicket to the right-hander. Travaskis and Carvelas yeah. does try and put it over the meat and it drops just short of the in rushing Louis Kimber loping in from in front of the meat didn't get that one at all but uh, survives it either goes over the meat or it drops short of the fielder at the moment yes Travaskis back round the wicket to the left hand uh, Simpson on two leg stump Simpson goes back pulls it out on the third bounce to uh, backward deep square where Ben Mike fields and throws and one is taken. Sussex have added 226 since lunch in 30, well this will be 34 overs. So it's been astonishing really. Trafaskis is in. Carvelis is going to attempt to reverse sweep. He Ooh. misses it, bounces off the pad, unless it came off the cue end of the bat. No, it bounced. It came off the pad, it bounced out into the leg side, although he made it into the offside, and one leg by is taken. Applause for the 50 partnership. Yeah. Okay, the number of partnership records that have been set in these ge in games between these sides no, in I recent agree. years is uh, is remarkable, really. Travaskis in again to Simpson down the wicket, trying to hit over the leg side, misses it, thumps off his pad, drops out on the offside, and there's for once no run. Fifty partnership in six overs. That over eight can't be plus three now because we're only we're not that. It's only sort of. 15.48, in goes just Travaskis, slog swept by Simpson out towards deep backward square. Mike is the fielder and that is the end of the over. One remains until T. We're only eight minutes past the allotted uh, T time. There's no way that over eight can now be plus three. Hopefully it will be a... I don't know whether they put it up as a, as a warning. Umpires are having a chat. 
talked about. Could that be? Could that be about light? Do we put the fl fl floodlights on? It has filled in a little bit, no, but, but it is brokenish cloud, and uh, I think it's okay at the moment. So who's going to have the the privilege <coughs> of bowling the final over before tea? And uh, well, Scott Curry, who who hadn't brought up his hundred, I suspect he might now because he's on two for ninety nine, and he's going to bowl the last over before tea. Good luck. Yeah. 185 not out, John Simpson. 278 balls. Everybody on the boundary. In comes Curry. Balls short pulled away by... <laughs> on the side of it. Yeah, it is. So we're going to have a delay here. 191 uh, to John Simpson. That is his fifth six. Well, if he's going to get his 200, his double century, he needs probably to do it in this over. He's made a good start. Curry's got the ball back. Comes running in bowls to Simpson, who plays firmly into the offside. Picks up a single. He goes to 192. Brings Ari Cavalos on strike. 650. Up. Yep. Barely a murmur around the ground. Yeah, There's so many little miles. Run out, run out of applause, I think. Yeah. yeah. When it's like this, it's, it's difficult to keep up with everything, isn't it? All, all these stats are coming at you thick and fast. Mm. So we've done our best to keep up with them throughout the day. In comes uh, Curry, bowls to Carvelos, who plays in the air. Throw extra cover, picks up a single. Curry looks utterly resigned, doesn't he? Does, he? Doesn't he? he sort of turns before the ball, sort of has almost left the bat and marches back to his mark. And that's the 100 up anyway with a six board. He's 100 up, two for 107 now. Some, some weights. Curry is on his way from the Bennett end. Bowls to Simpson. Who's beaten outside the house stump? He's having, having a big yahoo at that, wasn't he, John Simpson? And the ball uh, rattled through into the gloves of Ben Cox. And there is no run. He's got to put the pads on after tea, John Simpson. He looks heavenward as if to say, ah. Fancy cracking that one away for a boundary. He's 192 not out. Well, he's only got two balls left if he calls it a day at tea. Might not. In comes Curry Bowl. Simpson pulls it away to the leg side and he's just going to get a single. He goes to 193, Sussex 652, uh, 4 8. I'm going to get in position to take a, a nice video of John Simpson as he makes his way off because uh, it's been a fine knock by the uh, Sussex skipper. Here's a quick word to Ari Cavalos. One ball remaining until the interval. Leicestershire lads will be very pleased to put their feet up. In comes Curry Bowles and tries to ramp that Does Carbelos doesn't succeed, goes through into the gloves of Ben Cox and that is T. I'm going to nip off very quickly Richard. Thank you Adrian. Well what a, what a session, what a, what both sessions, morning and afternoon sessions, what a day it has been for Sussex. They're going for tea on day three on 652 4-8, and they're led by their skipper, John Simpson, who goes in for tee on 193 not out. It's come off 282 balls. He's hit 22 fours and five sixes. It all means that Sussex lead by 314 runs, with two first innings wickets in hand. However, we anticipate a declaration. Definitely, we will get to the tournament.
decided to keep going. So, the 314, there are 32 overs remaining, assuming they either declare or they lose the last two wickets at some stage during the evening session. They'll lose a couple of overs. But, uh, well, I have to say, and my name is Richard Ray from BBC Radio Leicester, Adrian Harms from BBC Radio Sussex, and uh, Rita Green from BBC uh, Sport are your commentary team for this evening session. I think, I don't know, Rita, you may not be, but I, I, I have to admit I'm surprised the declaration hasn't come. I'm actually uh, shocked, I think, in the, in the term. In fact, I did a, did a couple of loops at uh, the tea break, you know, walk around the pitch, and I got asked by multiple people, have we declared yet? Have they declared it yet, rather? And, uh, yeah, but John Simpson, as he came out, do you see him sort of doing that sort of motion with his shoulders to say, you know, I'm up for this. <laughs> The ball is hauled back to him by Harris, but he's got his hands down on his knees, and he said, um, "No, he's going to be okay." Mm -hmm. Peter Hanscom is started to roll his shoulders, though so he might get a bowl. What Peter Hanscom bowls, I have no idea. You ever seen him bowl? No, no, he's <laughs> only, only ever seen him keep or bat um, last season. So who knows? Travaskis is okay, though he's a tough character. Round the wicket he goes to the right-handed Carvelis, who goes back and plays it firmly back down the pitch to the uh, that said tough character, who's sitting on figures of 1 for 174 at the moment. 6.53 means the lead is 315. What's up with uh, Travaskis now? He's okay. Carvelis steps back. Just recomposes himself. Over eight plus four. In goes Travaskis. Bowl swung high over mid wicket. Four, four. Bounces just before the ropes. Yeah, two, three bounces and then a four. I mean, this partnership, Richard, already is 65. It's absolutely ramped up in, in a flash, isn't it? And Carvelas is 31 from 20. I, I, I called. Uh, uh, Carson's innings a cameo. We've got another one here. Travaskis bowls. Oh, it's hit on the front pad. Could be close. Yes, says Travaskis. No, says umpire Pollard. Not sure what it was missing. We shall see on the replay, no doubt. Maidstone Fox on the stream. Leicestershire must now stop trying to get them out. It's <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Let's go down leg, I think, that one. Just, uh, just keep going. Travaskis is in, tosses it up at his leg side and pushed by Carvelis just out to mid wicket stroke square leg where Rishi Patel is and now the field spreads because he's bowled four balls, five balls in fact, and they're prepared to give him one. I'm just having a look at it's like, the like this is a wasp nest in the oh, <laughs> back a bit on the wicket and then just everyone just dispersed, didn't they? Literally everyone <laughs> apart from the wicket keeper. Travaskis is in, bowled a little bit short. Carvelas prepared to give the strike to Simpson, just blocks it back down the wicket. It is stopped by Liam Travaskis with his foot. I think uh, the implication being that he doesn't think it's mu worth much more than a, being a football, really, this now fairly ancient kookaburra. 72 overs old, and it spent a lot of time exploring <laughs> the environs of, uh, of of Grace Road, hasn't it? It's, it's seen all parts, that kookaburra. Is it, a, is it the second or even third replacement? It's definitely second, No, 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 they, they found it each time. Oh, did they? Mm. Okay, because uh, the, the box of balls did come out at one point. Yeah, no, they've, they've, they've managed uh. to <laughs> to get out from behind the meat where it spent a lot of time hiding, hopefully not, <laughs> hoping not to be found, I would imagine. There is another game around the grounds, and I'll dig it out. There's a little video online on, on X where they spent five minutes looking for the ball, by the way. Okay. <laughs> and it's hilarious. They're looking at, under the covers. So it got under the covers, which had been put on the side of the pitch. And uh, literally, the the, um, the crowd were also helping as well. But it, 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 yeah, fun little video out there. Oh. 6.57 for eight. And uh, who's got the privilege? Is not. Oh, it is going to be Louis Kimber. There we go. Right then, here we go then. So Simpson Louis Kimber <laughs> closing in on 200. Indeed, one strike and he could be on to 200. Here comes Kimber to Simpson. Oh, absolutely heaved that and completely missed it. 
and it's going to go down towards the boundary rope behind the keeper and what will that be? That will be buys. Um, and uh, Ben Cox will be pretty disappointed with uh, it. I'll give, I'll give you all of the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it turned a little bit uh, there, but Simpson completely missed it. He went for that six that I mentioned, didn't get it. And uh, we live to fight another day. To Simpson, who's on strike. To Kimber, this one's shorter and uh, cuts very nicely into the offside, but they choose not to take the run. So Simpson stays on strike. He's seen the ball beautifully today. He's played absolutely magnificently. He's really played within himself. A real captain's innings for John Simpson this afternoon and today. Kimber Simpson, this one is absolutely heaved in the air. It's in the air and it's going to drop short. Oh, oh, Richard. When your luck's out, your luck's definitely out. That could have gone absolutely anywhere. It, well, to be honest, the, all the fielders had dispersed to the boundary's edge. And this is what the, the biggest ground in the country. So it's quite a long way back. And the ball fell short. And uh, the wasp nest that was on the, um, on the wicket has now been dispersed. So all the fielders come in. You know what I mean, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody's come in. In fact, there's even a sort of short mid-wicket as well as Carvelos receives the next ball from Kimber. This one's pushed to the onside and there is no run. I mean, really, the only thing we could be waiting for here is John Simpson's double century and what an achievement that would be before a potential declaration, a probable declaration. Here comes the next ball and absolutely heaved into the onside. It was aerial and that short mid mid-wicket was in play for a moment or so, but it's gone all the way to the boundary rope. Bit of a heave to sort of cow corner area which is absolutely miles away because uh, of where the um, the wicket is for this particular game four more to the total just to put salt in the wound I'm afraid for Leicestershire fans six six four for eight Carvelos now on 35 from 25 I hope the declaration doesn't come as soon as he's got 200 because if it does that then, then that's what we're waiting for and that's wrong surely I mean, it's, it's not about him, it's about the team, isn't it? It's about what they need, surely. Yeah, that's a very good point. It's felt perfect in that sense. Carvelos on strike, pushed into... Ooh, I, do you know what? I predicted the shot before it happened there, and it didn't. Defended, and there's no run. I felt like that was a perfect... He put his body into such a lovely, perfect position to push it into the onside where there was acres of space for a single. Chose to just defend, and there is... Uh, no run right the important numbers to mention here three two six is the lead the score is six six four for eight Simpson on 195 Carvelos on 35 and Carvelos here he's playing a interesting role the Greek international 30 years old playing alongside the 35 year old John Simpson he's nothing to lose as he can just swing and enjoy himself really again with, with a, a soft ball and flattish pitch and just uh, swing and miss or, or swing and hit whatever is it worth mentioning that Richard yeah and I mean he might get there but what it's worth in these circumstances you know top score is a top score but you know two three Carvelis is on two waiting for the I was looking at the fielder, seeing if he got there, seeing if he could drag it back, Scott Curry. That was weird, wasn't it? Well, I wonder if this will be it for his 200, Richard. Come on, then. We'll see. In comes Travaskis around the wicket. Bowl to John Simpson, and Simpson hammers that down the ground. It's just a single. I, too, am a little confused here. I, I, even without... I mean, if tomorrow was going to be a lovely sunny day, even, Richard, I would imagine that... Uh, Sussex will want a few overs at Leicestershire tonight, but the forecast tomorrow is not good. It, well, it's questionable, isn't it? I mean, you, you yeah. never know, but the fact it's questionable, you, you'd have thought might be enough in itself. Yeah. Uh, Trabascus in bowls to Carvalis, who hammers that one away. Well, he doesn't time it properly. They're going to pick up a boundary. These runs seem slightly academic, to be honest. Carvalis goes to 40, and Sussex to 671 for eight. But I think the Leicestershire lads are all standing there. I think they're a little bamused. They're probably thinking, well, the longer Sussex bat, you know, the better for Leicestershire, really. Well, that's a lot of people making that point on, on the stream, essentially. 
Yeah. Some people are saying if Leicestershire were sensible, they wouldn't be trying to get these guys out now. Dramascus again bowls. Cabellos just plays down the track. Well, there is no run. That's end of it over. 6.71 for eight. I mean, the lead is a 333. Is that right? Yes. All the three. Six seven one three three three. Yep. I, ju I just think, I ju you know, it's, it's an observation. Everyone's got their view on these sort of things. I, I just can't s quite see the point of Sussex batting on here. Um, Neither can I. You know, Leicestershire must be absolutely shattered. They've been in the field for a long, long time. You know, the weather is fine. We're going to get these overs in tonight. I'd have thought, you know, the the Sussex fast bowlers will be chomping at the bit to get out there and get in amongst these Leicestershire players. However, we shall see. Maybe there is a, a grander plan somewhere that we uh, we haven't thought of. Now, it's going to be on strike. You're going to have to keep going. You know? Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry, Richard. <laughs> um, Fine by me. You know, we, lo we like to commentate on the the, <laughs> the the landmarks for our sides. As in comes uh, Louis Kimber bowls to John Simpson, and Simpson looks to drive into the offside. There is no run. But off the the, the previous over, he played one out to <laughs> Kimber in again. Bowls and Simpson with a big play and a miss outside of the off stump goes through to keeper Cox who whips off the bales. It was a bit casual there, uh, Simpson, in terms of get, making sure his back foot was down and Cox saw he was whipped yeah. off of, you know, used his right hand, right glove to take a bale off and howled an appeal at umpire Pollard who's quite a long way back there. But I mean, these two are batted 79 in 10 overs. In comes uh, Kimber again. Simpson drives firmly. There's a puff of dust. I think he'll look for two here. Carvelos wants to come back for the second. Simpson says no. Simpson goes to 198. Back to you, Richard. I always thought the um, when you're doing your stint as, a, as an umpire in club cricket or village cricket, stumpings or runouts were always, I, I found, really difficult as, <laughs> a, as an umpire. Unless, obviously, that someone dances down the wicket yeah. and it's obvious. But it all happens so quickly and it's so marginal. Round the wicket comes Kimber to bowl to Carvelas, who um, swings mightily and straight over long off four. Waiting for the signal. Oh, four. It uh, dropped short. Eric Carvelas is approaching his career best, which I think is 50. Made up 50 at Lords. Said 58, I think. Yeah. So at Lords, yeah. On his Sussex debut. So he's got a while to go, but he's enjoying himself at the moment. In goes Kimber and Bowles. Carvelis hoiks it over, extra cover. Patel leaps into the air, can't get there. It goes for four. Uh, you're wondering why Carvelis is going for The field has come in for him. Um, so Leicester are kind of almost giving boundaries now, just mm. looking. And the, the implication of that is that the only reason this game is going on with Sussex still batting is they're looking to stop Simpson getting... Or take time to get to 200. Yeah. Um, th they're not bothered about the number of runs that Carvelis has scored. What's keeping them out there is Simpson's double century. We shall see. That one is dabbed by Carvelis off off stump, and uh, they don't take the single. So Simpson will be on strike. Well, it's 680 for eight. Part of 88 between these two, which. Yeah, the lead 342. Was it 159 overs gone? It is. So it's a partnership of 88 in 11 overs, but it's the broader context of the match, which is the interesting thing. We've got 28 overs left in the day. Sussex would lose two if they declare now. Well, we're going we're to bowl the next over. Yeah. So that'd be 27, whatever happens, take away two. So only, Sussex will only have 25 overs tonight to bowl. Uh, who knows what might happen? We, we may get a clear day after weather forecasts are wrong, but it does seem slightly odd. But if we have a clear day in Leicestershire, a sort of at T there, you know, I don't know, 300 for, for, for mm. <laughs> you know, whatever. It, yeah, time, time could still be a, a huge factor. And Travascus again. In and bowls. Clavelos plays that to fine leg. And there is no run. Sussex today. Uh, I've left my book next door and it actually was a bit daft of me. 282 when it started off, wasn't it, today? So they've added best part of 400 runs. It was 282 for six, yeah. yes. In comes uh, Trabascus, and um, Carvalis is added again, thumping the ball down the ground all the way for six runs. He goes to 56. One short of his career best for Ari Carvalis. 687 for eight. 
uh, the partnership between these two. 25. Yeah, it's come in very, very quick time. Uh, 12 overs. Travascus in again. Carvalhos chips that to mid-wicket. And there is no run. And the Leicestershire field again goes out to yeah, give. They, yeah, they would give him give one Carvelis now. Give Carvelis the single. Try and extend it for another over. But it's going to go to another over now, isn't it? Because it's the last one. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah. So this is another over that Sussex won't have tonight. Uh, Travascus in again bowls, and Carvalhos just steers that down the track. <laughs> Travascus lets the ball hit his boot and rolls onto the stumps. And there is. Uh, no runs. So 687 for 8. Well, Sussex John Simpson 199. Ari Cavellas 54. Partnership of 95. Uh, the lead is 349. Right. I mean. And whatever happens now, it's going to be 24 overs, isn't it? Even if it, it comes off the first ball. Mm. I mean, he, he might as well use the other five. Um, and it'll be 24 overs after that. Yeah. I, I, I will be very, very surprised if Sussex don't, clear, don't declare when John Simpson reaches his 200. Because then it's just batting on for the sake of it, really, is it? I just, you know, I, I, I just don't see the point. You, you can play devil's advocate here and say at the moment they are batting on for the sake of it, really. At the sake of it being Simpson's double 100. Double 100. Uh, but who's going to bowl? It's going to be Louis Kimber. He's going to bowl to Simpson. The field is in. They're all saving the single. And uh, we shall see whether this is the over in which he uh, achieves that goal. The first time career. In comes Kimber. Bowls. Simpson drives through the offside. And 203. In 293 balls. 23 fours. Five sixes. Uh, it's been a captain's innings. And it's in Sussex to the dizzy heights of 691 for eight. Carvelis was ready to walk off then before Simpson pointed out to him that makes no difference. We can use these last five balls anyway. Yeah. So I assume the declaration is coming now, but that at the end of this over. But that does mean that this is why Sussex are batted on. Mm. And uh, I confess I am a little surprised. A gull carrying something in its beak flaps overhead. In goes Kimber. And bowls. Simpson drives him. Sussex over a couple of years ago. Sussex returning uh, the favour, if that's the right word. 692 for eight. I would imagine it. Actually, it probably says in that uh, yearbook of uh, Sussex over there. Big swing from Carvelas out to deep mid wicket. Single taken as Ben Mike throws it back. It has a record section. In it, the Sussex. Yeah. I'm standing well, well, Richard, we're still here. <laughs> I'm standing on uh, on various wires. Still no declaration. End of this over. Oh, I think they're looking for Carvelos' high high score. Kimber is in bowls reverse um, swept slogged by Harris out to what is essentially deep backward point, but became <laughs> deep backward square for that shot. Two o five. Him. Six, nine, was four, it about eight. 11 o'clock yesterday the Leicestershire players took the field? Was it around? Uh, well, about half past in the end because they had a couple of wickets to. Big hit from Carvela straight down the ground. Could be caught. Is Kimber going to pick up a wicket? Is. Oh, dropped. Or did he get. What, what, what was that thing? Oh, it was his sunglasses his in glasses. front of him. <laughs> yeah, his glasses fell off his head at the I, same I could moment. See, yeah, yeah, I could see that sort of mar something dark. But it was uh, Marcus Harris, I think, who ran in from uh, long gone and took a good catch diving forward. And uh, his sunglasses fell off as he did so in front of him and looked, and looked to me at this distance, which is a long way to be the ball. So well played, John Simpson. Carvelis goes for 55. Simpson is left 205, not out. Well, that is the declaration now. 26.2 overs remain, so there will be 24 overs left tonight for Leicestershire uh, to bat out. 694 for nine. The lead then is 356. They will need 357 simply to make Sussex bat again. It's an absolute whopper mammoth 
a lead, but I think it, it, it's it's not really about that, is it? It's about time now and the weather tomorrow. As you say, Richard, um, the overs remaining today, 26, a couple of taken off there for the changeover. And uh, Leicestershire will be simply on the page of, well, in some respect, that prolonging of the of the Sussex innings is, is gone in their favour. Very bizarre. But let's just quickly have a look at the um, the Sussex uh, innings. Incredible innings. Uh, three centurions and a, and a double centurion in there as well. Haynes, which feels like a lifetime ago, with 108. Carvel, uh, 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 They've been thinking about this moment for, for quite a while, haven't they, Richard? <laughs> They've had plenty of time to think about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Wishy's obviously not as experienced as Mar Marcus Harris, a hugely experienced player now. Looked in, uh, in, in pretty good touch, actually, at both Headingley and, and here in the first innings. Got a, a pretty decent ball. Saw, the, saw his uh, demise first up from, it was from Carvelos when he was on 24 in the first innings and uh, he and Patel had put on 59 there. Now, Jaden Seals didn't have any joy in the first innings. He came, kept charging in, so perhaps his fortunes will change. He is going to bowl the opening over from the Bennett end. Big smile on his face. He's going to be bowling at Rishi Patel and he's going to have four slips and Rita Green from BBC Sport will tell you all about it. Thank you very much. So Jane Seals steaming in. He must be the freshest man on the park. Coming in past the umpire. First delivery. Nice pace there through to the keeper and there's no run. He's the only man for Sussex not to put the pads on. So uh, He's had his feet up for the best part of uh, <laughs> the well, day and a half. He? Indeed, indeed. And uh, interesting times now for, for Leicestershire. It's always a case of as a play, you don't want to look at the scoreboard to a certain degree. When you see that uh, that sort of deficit of, uh, what was it, three, five, six, forget about that, lads. It's about time here. Here comes Seals. His red-soled boots with 14 on his back past the umpire. And this one's driven into the cover region, but straight pretty much to the fielder and there's no run. I have thinking, but that was slightly slower delivery. Finn Hudson Prentice, the, the fielder there, he picked up five wickets in the first innings, five for 50, his first class best. There's been a few first class bests for Sussex in this match. Really has, you can hear the uh, Sussex players with uh, three slips in a gully, point, mid on, mid off, mid wicket, fine leg as well, so. Pretty conventional field, but looking for wickets early days. Here comes the delivery from Seals, and this one's left alone through to the keeper. That'll be John Simpson, who will uh, have absolutely no rest time after getting that double hundred earlier on, and there's no run. Yeah, interesting times. Cloud coverage now, pretty much throughout. I like that term, watery sunshine. I'll have to make that one. It's, yeah, so the sun is there, it's trying to get through, but at the moment, no chance. No need for the lights to come on yet. We'll keep an eye on that and uh, Seals gets to his mark and turns, looking for pace here with that new Kookaburra ball, comes in, it's a full delivery, an angle bat, Patel goes to point and there is no run. Patel, Harris, the openers, Harris, deeply experienced Aussie, isn't he? And he'll want that at the other end, won't he, Richard Patel? I, I mean, in, in many respects, the 25 rolls is not got huge amount of experience i feel like he's been around quite a while but marcus smith uh, uh marcus smith marcus harris for sure has got uh, experience from an international and from a first class county perspective this is his 36th first class game rishi full season really first full season last season next delivery comes in full delivery a bump ball back to the bowler and sales does that thing that all good fast bowlers do caught it and then so chuck the ball in, slightly wide of the batter, just to say, yep, I'm here. And he is full of beans, isn't he? <laughs> uh, no run yet on the board. 
first over of the the Foxes uh, innings and they'll be looking to somehow survive today. He doesn't have to say anything, Jaden Seals, but you know what he's thinking from his body language, which is expressive in the extreme. The 22-year-old one in Trinidad and Tobago. Here he comes steaming in, last delivery of the over. Nice fast delivery and left alone really nicely by Richard Patel. No dramas in that over with a fresh new Kookaburra ball. And just as the over finishes, the sun does pop out. End of the over. Um, absolutely no runs on the board yet and no wickets down as well. Over to you, Richard. It won't be out long, I don't think. I think <laughs> yeah, they, they need a... a, a now, I must admit, I didn't take a note of which roller went on the pitch. I think it was the heavy roller again. It looked very um, heavy, yes. Uh, was, it, was it the machine roller? It like I mean, one, the, yeah. it's either that or the, the, the hand, little hand job. So if it was a machine, it was the heavy roller. So Carvelas is going to, who, who struggled a bit for, as a lot of sort of visiting bowlers do, for, for rhythm here because of the slight slope in the ground, either up or down well he's going to come down the slope from the Bennett end to Marcus Harris diminutive figure at the crease Harris little nuggety Aussie waits watching the much taller Carvelas come in and bowl bowls full just turned around the corner Harris is going to have to scramble back there I don't know what he was possibly thinking there it was turned out by him into the leg side the ball quickly closed upon by Jack Carson and um, he was only a sort of few feet away from the ball and indeed the stumps when Rishi Patel's no no s s note of surprise in his voice what Harris was thinking I'm not quite sure there he turned and got back into his ground the throw missed anyway but uh, just shows that for all Harris's experience and uh, calm demeanor he's capable of uh, making errors Carvelas down the slope, bowls, he just turns him neatly off step around the corner. Again, there's hesitation. Harris this time running to the non-striker's end. Carson running to his left, picks it up, throws the ball at the non-striker's end. It was the right call again from Patel, who's calling it the right way. Harris hesitated, having not hesitated before, and had to uh, get the afterburners on to get in at the far end in the end. So Patel, rather than Harris, Slightly surprisingly, who's showing the calm ahead out there at the moment, in terms of running anyway. Leicestershire up and running, one without loss. Stands up tall, Rishi Patel sort of leans slightly to his left as in comes Carvelas. Bowls, outside off stump, not a long way outside off stump, but far enough. We'll call it a good leave, <laughs> yeah, <there have laughs> from a, a Leicestershire perspective. But, uh, hmm. Yeah, there have been one or two bad leaves in this game. Tom Allsop in particular. Didn't just clip off stump when Allsop left it. Yeah, thudded into it. Yeah, Harris has definitely got to commit to the runs. He seems a little bit rusty between the wickets, but... Uh, Carvelas is in and bowls full. Driving is Patel. Hard down into the ground. Straight back to him. He sticks out his... Big right mitt and uh, manages to slow the ball down, push it out towards mid on. Otherwise, there would have been runs there for Rishi Patel. And might have been chased down, but saved Pujara a chase back to the boundary there. Harry Carvelas turns. Sort of all knees and elbows as he comes running in and bowls and straight. Loads of time for Patel there, waiting for it. Big stride, just pushing it carefully. Back down the pitch on the on side, Pujara picks up. If I was the Sussex bowlers, I'd definitely trying to make sure that the batter plays at the ball. You've got these three slips in the gully, red, it raring to go. Beautiful new Kookaburra ball. And really putting it to the batter that uh, they're going to have to defend their stumps. Carvelas is in, bowls, that is nice and straight on off stump, but Patel, plenty of time just to stroke it back defensively, back down the pitch to Ari Carvelas, big grunt from Carvelas as he delivered that ball, it was been a, a maiden over, perfectly respectable one, didn't really cause any alarms other than in the, in the running, the first two balls, which uh, both of which Marcus Harris wasn't sure whether to run to. It's a reasonably new 
partnership, isn't it, Richard, between these two? Brand but, new. Um, you know, this yeah. is just the second. Second uh, innings yeah. as such. So. Yeah. yeah. Harris obviously did have a, a, um, a season at Leicestershire. Rishi Patel. Just trying to work out whether he was... It, it just moved. I think it was the season after. Um, three seasons ago. But uh, last season was Rishi Patel's first really sort of full season. So I think it was the previous season that Marcus was with us. Scored three centuries. Had three hedgehogs named after him. Oh. I'll explain them. <laughs> Seal starts the next over. And this one is uh, down leg side and just nerdled into the final leg region that's they that's go a through broken bat. A did you hear run. it yeah i heard that in fact there was a was there not a piece that came up yeah indeed, indeed. I, I did see a piece fly off and actually one of the sussex fielders is picking it up and giving it back to marcus harris who now needs a new bat thank you very much Ma and you could make it that. into some matches or something i suppose but uh, yeah he's entitled to have one <laughs> in mid over on, on, on that basis he actually changed it in the first innings as well funnily enough so he's um, they, well they don't they don't sort of knock them in these days, do they? No, exactly that. And the uh, substitute fielders coming out with a couple of new ones. You know, they they hang around with what five or six batters bats nowadays, don't they? <laughs> hang on, so don't take the same one back again. Well, no, I, I'm <laughs> laughing because Harry Swindle's sort of yeah, he he was going to leave him with two. And then he eats, so he had <laughs> only one and came running back. But ha even Marcus Harris isn't allowed to have two bats out there. So it looks like it, it, a piece came off the very top of the splice yeah, of the, the bat. Shoulder. Yeah, the shoulder. And uh, anyway, here is the next delivery sales in. And this one's left by Rishi Patel. Sharpish. There's a decent amount of pace. Probably the fastest fastest bowler I've seen today, oh certainly, yeah. by yeah. quite yeah. some distance. And no wonder you've got those three slips in the gully raring to go. Yeah, decent pace there. Was it 10 tests and 10 ODIs for seals? Yeah, he hasn't West played Indies. much first-class cricket, if you don't count tests, I suppose. Mm. Well, obviously, they are first-class, you know, as in literally, but, you know, much, much of his experience has been an international experience. 14 on his back. Turns to his mark, comes steaming in, past umpire, Middlebrook. And it's a very full delivery and a beautiful drive. Lent into that one, did Rishi Patel. And it's going to go all the way to the boundary rope. Really nice stroke there. I know it's... a. Uh, I'm calling it early here, Richard, but uh, that's the shot of the innings so far. <laughs> yeah, that's fair <laughs> enough. That's <laughs> really <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being obviously ridiculously <laughs> hilarious there for no reason whatsoever, but really nice stroke. Four uh, of 12 deliveries, six without loss. No, nice I mean, in all seriousness, he is a aesthetically very pleasing batsman to watch, Rishi Patel. Decent cover drive there. Saw the pace and the ball comes onto them pretty quickly from Sills, but it's going to go to the boundary rope pretty quickly as well. Next delivery, and this one with an angle bat goes to point no run. And uh, Patel just goes for a little one that takes his uh, the velcro off his gloves, just leans on his bat, just has a little think about that one. Yeah, does it between every delivery, just uh, undoes the velcro, refastens them. Most batsmen have a sort of routine almost, don't they, between deliveries. That's part of his, very much part of his. Very calm character, isn't he? Well, he seems to come across that way, very elegant. And that cover drive, not the, la not the last delivery, but the one before, that was something rather special. His stance is rather sort of upright, and so cover drives will be in order. Next delivery comes in. And this one's a shorter delivery. And on his, on his back foot, on his back toes, is Patel, defends that one, and no run. No gremlin so far, anyway, in the wicket to talk of. Worth mentioning a few correspondence, email addresses, etc. Uh, foxcoms24 at gmail.com. Please Indeed. do get in touch. Yeah. Uh, myself, Rita Green. And also Richard Ray and Adrian Harms a little bit later on. Adrian's email address, sussexcricket at bbc.co.uk. Next delivery comes in. Last one of the over. And this one, oh, a little bit of bounce on that one. Left to Keeper Simpson. There was a little bit of bounce there. That's something to uh, be aware of. The pace of Seals. Of noting that over from a Leicestershire perspective. A nice four to the boundary. End of the over. Six without loss. By the way, 
you're listening to us on BBC Sussex, BBC Leicester and also on the BBC Sport website, either online or on the app, which is rather good. I know I'm slightly biased, but it is good. Check it out. And you can check out all all the commentaries around the country as well, Division 1 and Division 2 in the Vitality Championship. Harry Carvela down on the slope. Bowls to Marcus Harris down the leg side. Harris just steps inside the line, gestures at the ball. As though sort of semi-interested in trying to work in on its way, but uh, slightly dangerous game. Seen a few caught down the leg side, and he doesn't want to get out that way. He's only got, well, three more matches after this. You know, you never know whether wise how, how many innings that, that is going to amount to just had the uh, obviously one innings at Headingley so he wants to make a mark while he's here Carvelas is in bowls to him he's solidly forward blocking the ball off off stump out into the offside to mid off yes each time he scored a century when he was here last one of Leicester's supporters Martin Brunt who worked at a, at a hedgehog shelter um, named a baby hedgehog after him so there was a Marcus there was a Harris the hedgehog and uh, I, forget, I forget what the third one was called I think it was Marcus's second second name I'll check what that is Carvelas is in bowls Harris is forward Harris the hedgehog sounds about right doesn't Aww, it very cute but apparently he's still with us and, and thriving not very cuddly Brun though Brun are they Brun but Brunty tells me Aww. that Harris the hedgehog is a, a thriving hog <laughs> oh, that's nice to hear. But they are quite sweet, aren't they? I'm, I'm, I'm desperately looking up Marcus Harris's <laughs> middle name, which is something I didn't think I'd be doing today, but now we're all interested. Sinclair. Sinclair. Oh, what a middle name. Great middle Brilliant. name, that. Carvelas is in. Harris is turning him nicely off middle, middle and leg out towards mid-wicket. It's running quite quickly. The ground has sped up. Over the last couple of days, it's dried out quite quickly, and Pujara's chase wasn't exactly half-hearted. It, it's how he runs, isn't it? It's a, he kind of does everything at a certain pace, and that includes uh, chasing the ball to the boundary. It got there. Harris is on to six, ten without loss. Nicely timed. Just a flick of the wrists, and all the way to the boundary rope. Carvelas is in, goes to him, he's driving this time and once again he's going to pick up runs. Finn Hudson Prentice dived across to his right, he may just have got his right hand to it, slowed it down en route to the uh, deep extra cover, almost long off boundary. Harris should pick up three and does. Again, didn't try and over hit it, just leant into it, pushed firmly. Hudson Prentice described as almost per to described a parabola through the air didn't he but he couldn't quite get there he might just have brushed his fingers 13 without loss Harris on to 9 so Carvelas will be bowling to Rishi Patel last ball of the over right hand left hand combination for the Foxes at the top of the order Carvelas is in Patel is very well care and attention as that one zeroes in on his middle and leg stumps and pushed out towards Pujara at mid-on, end of the fourth over of Leicestershire's second innings. 13 without loss. They have reduced the deficit then to 343. But uh, that really, unless they sort of get to 340 for eight or something like that, that, that sort of figure is, is a bit irrelevant at mm -hmm. this stage, isn't it? Yeah. Once they have, Once they theoretically make Sussex need to bat again then then time you know be becomes a real a real factor potentially so what's up with Jaden Wh yeah, what's he getting a changed a bit of maintenance going on here I, uh, we, the uh, the physio sort of protecting us from seeing exactly what's going on maybe a bit of tape or something that, like on that, that on that right so it looked I thought it was a sweatband but I wonder if it's a bit more than well than that and then one of the other players it's, it's Danny, Danny, it's Danny Lamb. Lamb, yeah, he's yeah. Having some he's strapping his, is he putting it around his foot or his ankle, his knee? It's an elastic bandage for his left knee, folks. Yeah, well, he's, he's certainly uh, have played to bowl, a massive innings so. today, so yeah, you're right, yeah, I'll be keeping an eye on that for sure. So, slight break in play, but start of the next over, and Seals continues from the pavilion end, past Middlebrook, the umpire. And this one's oh, a pacey delivery, but defended by Marcus Harris. 
Marcus no... Sinclair Harris. Oh, what? A, seriously, Great brilliant. Name, sir, um, oh, middle name. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a family yeah, indeed, kind of yeah. tradition. We've got a family tradition in our in our world as well of having a certain Welsh middle name for my husband and my son, etc. So maybe there's something like that. Or it, or maybe his parents just thought, you know what? I just quite like Sin <laughs> Sinclair. Like a lot. So left-handed batter on strike. Very experienced Aussie. Born in Perth. Certainly a lot warmer there most of the time than here in Leicestershire, but that doesn't matter. No rain here. And this one's slightly uh, backward of a length and pushed into the offside. Beautifully timed. And all the way to the boundary rope. Really nice play here from Marcus Harris. Seriously, no effort, quite frankly, but just timed beautifully. Angled the bat. Got his feet in the right position. Punched it into the offside and four more runs. That makes it 13 from 10. There's no parking the bus going on here at all from Leicestershire. No, none of this sort of, let's just see through this session and hope the rain comes down tomorrow. No, really nice, proper cricket going on here at Grace Road uh, in Leicestershire. Really enjoying this, actually, this little phase of the game. Right, here comes Seals. Right-handed bowler round the wicket and to the left hand. And this one's driven straight to mid off. And there's no run. Any chance that was left or right of the fielder, that would have been four. But nicely fielded. To be fair, it was straight to him, but it still needs to be picked up. And they'll be taking care of this Kookaburra. We all know, don't we? In the press, you know, the, uh, the sort of 20 over mark where it gets all soft and between 40 and 60 especially, quite benign. That's what a lot of people say. Five o'clock here in the UK if you listen to us around the world the left-handed Marcus is on strike Marcus Harris to give his full name and that one was such a short delivery it went so far over his shoulder yeah that was called no ball on height and a no ball on height I mean that was miles over I mean maybe slightly ambitious there from Seals to such a short delivery uh, but certainly didn't uh, endanger if you, if you really Harris bang it in, it, it's like a tennis ball, isn't it, sometimes when not on this pitch, and mm. it just sort of looped. You got that a bit wrong. Yeah, indeed. And not, the, not the tallest of uh, batters is Harris. By the way, I'm only five foot one, so I'm not uh, having a go here. Seals, full of delivery this time, and there's no run. Certain Tendulkar, he was, he's a diminutive uh, batter, wasn't he? And he did all right. Um, in terms of field, at field as well, still reasonably aggressive. I... I <laughs> I think Marcus Marcus Harris, he, he tends to sort of come across his stumps a little bit to look to work it into the onside. I'm doing an action that no one can see apart from poor Richard next to me. But, you know, just bringing that, that elbow across, it does bring in almost short leg into play. I think it's a bit early to start getting too aggressive. There's no need for that from Sussex's perspective. But just something in the back of my mind. Next delivery comes in. Full delivery. Oh, and straight Good back stop. to the right of the bowler. Really nice stop there from the bowler. That, that They're difficult to do, aren't they? Yeah. He's young. He's athletic. Gymnastic. I bet in about four years' time he's not doing that. <laughs> four? <laughs> oh, let, oh, me, okay. let me do off. Uh, yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe six or seven. <laughs> he's got to let Gully in, which is interesting. He's coming round the wicket to the left-hander, so the other one will probably slip onto the legs. Pajara at mid on was uh, just having a quick chat with the bowler there. Last ball of the over to the left-handed Harris. And this one's punched into the offside. Cut. And four runs. Save your legs, Mr. Harris. Lovely stroke so far. This has been a quite nice inning so far. In fact, the run rate will tell you that as well. 17 from 15 is Marcus Harris, the Aussie. And Patel, four from 16. A measured, more measured um, performance at the other end. The score at the end of the over, 23 without loss. Leicestershire getting off to a good start here. Yeah, Harris isn't going to miss out short wide balls with the field up. And didn't, he moves on to 17. 56 and 24, his uh, previous scores this season. And I know he's a little bit annoyed that he didn't go on in either case to a, to a bigger score. He's having a chat to Jetashwa uh, Pajara at the moment. We're not about to have to go through the, the many sides both have played for, that they've probably played for the same side at some stage. In goes Ari Carvelis, bowls down the leg side, it's to oohs and ahs, as though he, is he signalling four? He is, so he did just nibble that round the corner. Simpson dived across to the left, didn't get 
I don't think anything on it, and it goes down to fine leg four, four. So, wish you Patel as well that he got as much on it as he did. He would have been unlucky to have gotten out that way. They call it a strangle, don't they? When you mm. tickle it down, the, deliberately tickle it down the leg side, but legitimate wicket. Just hit it uh, a little bit wider. Patel on to eight. Carvelas is in to him straight. Nice bent left knee as Patel leans forward with his bat close to the front pad. Blocks it down the pitch on the on side. I don't know many Greek international cricketers. Do you? I've played in Corfu. Oh, um, okay. so you do. So, well, no, well, I can't remember whether I played with any internationals, but but it is a thing, you know, in 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 Greece. Well, he's in Corfu anyway. <laughs> Obviously, with the British influence. From years past, Carvelas is in, bold, a little bit short up on his uh, toes, his patel, and again that little flourish as he pushes the ball out to the onside. What a wonderful part of the world to play cricket. It, it was a math, it was nice. a sort of, um, you know, fake wicket, but it's right in the middle of the of, of Corfu town, the, the cricket ground. Fake wicket, uh, you know, artificial pitch. Did you get some runs that day? Um, I, I don't think I actually I think so. batted. I remember bowling on it, though. Carvelas is in. Patel gets a fuller delivery, leans forward, pushes it out to the man who's trying to cover both mid-off and um, extra cover, who's Finn Hudson Prentice, and there's no run. A waft of cold air signifies the uh, arrival of um, our colleague Adrian Harms from BBC Radio Sussex. As you're not here tomorrow, Reed, you can you can stay on, and I'll I'll, I'll sneak off and uh, and uh, at the end of this over, you can have a, a chat to Adrian. In goes Carvelas bowls, a bit short on the leg side, helped around the corner by Rishi Patel for four. So two boundaries in the over for Patel. He too is now into double figures on to twelve. Leicestershire, as Sussex did in there first innings and, and Leicester should it in their first innings they're making a, a brisk start the new kookaburra is going around the park they're 31 without loss after six thank you richard um a bit more, more threatening clouds sort of drifting in around uh, grace row but a bit of luck we'll get through the final 18 overs of the day sussex striving for a breakthrough but a good start by uh, Leicester they need to be positive here, there's no point just blocking, but they've played nicely here. Harris 17 in comes um, Carvelas and Rishi Patel drives through the offside <laughs> and picks up uh, a couple of runs. He goes to 14. 33 uh, without loss are oh, Leicestershire. Um, their first target is to wipe out these arrears, which are. 356. Huge. If you're just joining us here on BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Leicester, Adrian Harms, Rita Green and Richard Ray, your commentary team. Sussex are racking up uh, 694 for eight. John Simpson, a career best 205 not out. Danny Lamb, also a career best for him, 134. Ari Cavalis weighing in with 55 at the end. Uh, some surprise that Sussex didn't declare earlier. The, the weather forecast for tomorrow is not great, um, but Sussex are electing to bat on. So I think that's a, a question that we'll ask the Sussex camp at the close of play. Maybe they've seen a different weather forecast, or maybe there was another plan. Either way, it's going to be Jaden Seals, who's running in away from us. Round the wicket comes in and bowls. And up on his toes is Harris, and he punches that away uh, through the offside and picks up a single. He goes to 18, a total to 34 without loss. Uh, it's not very warm, Rita. <laughs> it isn't, although I've taken my coat off. Have you? Which is um, oh, surprising. Yeah, it's a big sort of fleecy coat as well, I, I can see that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's basically like, you know, basically a, a big sheep um, mm. wrapped around you. Um, but you're right, depending on where you are in the commentary box, I think it's <laughs> it does vary the, the level of it. It's not a warm day, let's be honest, though. No, at no, all. it's not. Um, and to do, to tomorrow is not going to be much better, I'm afraid. Uh, no, <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, I mean, if the weather forecast is to be believed... And we'll just get the, uh, the the actual statistics up for that tomorrow. The statistics or the forecast, what we're talking about. In comes Seals. Over the wicket, bowls. Clipped away nicely by Patel. More runs here. Runs going very freely for Leicestershire at the moment. They made a very good positive start. And 
the total goes to 16 to add to the 87 he made uh, in the first innings 34 uh, without loss I mean the, the, the forecast that I'm seeing here on the, the BBC website which you would like to think is reasonably accurate gusty winds and heavy rain uh, heavy rain until sort of the early hours then sunshine and showers but um, you know at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning 61 percent chance of rain is what it's saying drying up towards the evening but you know, if we're getting to three four o'clock without any play then i think we'll we're not going to get very much in comes seals and bowls defends does patel back to the bowler and there is uh, no run in fact i think the forecast for next week in general is is not great next round of matches starting on friday sussex uh, at home against gloucestershire Ball by ball commentary on the whole of that game from uh, Hove. Myself, Ed Seaborn from BBC Radio Bristol. Isabel Duncan will be our third voice uh, next week. On Friday, um, Sam Keir uh, will be popping in to talk about a podcast, Hitman for Hire, all about franchise cricket and featuring David Visa, a highly popular figure at Hove, um, about what life is like in the franchise market. In comes Seals, bowls, and Battelle is almost put on his backside by a very pacey delivery from Seals that rattles into the gloves of Simpson, and there is no run. So it'll be interesting to hear uh, what that's all about in the life of a franchise cricketer. So many players doing that now. I mean, it's, you know, David Visa finished his career at Sussex um, and has extended that career by a couple of years playing franchise cricket all around the world. Mm, and there's so many now, isn't there? Yeah. In Bangladesh, in uh, South Africa, and obviously the 100, um, and the and of well, the, the, the pinnacle of franchise cricket, probably many would say, will be the IPL. Yeah, why wouldn't you? And, and, and David has played in them all. 36, he was a hugely popular figure at the counter ground. In comes Seals again, another quick bounce of ducks underneath it, does Patel. And in the West Indies as well, actually. Yeah, yeah totally. And he, uh, I mean, David talks very candidly. I, I've listened to some of the episodes, and David talks very candidly about the fact when you are, you know, he's a, you know, he's got a youngish family, you're spending you know a lot of time away from home but on the other hand you're probably earning a lot of money so he can't have it always i guess um, so it'd be interesting to hear um uh, from sam here on uh, friday hitman for hire is the podcast well worth a listen as jaden sills is back to his mark a gray overcast evening i don't think we're far away from the floodlights coming on here seals is in bowls up on his toes is but i'll place it down down the track there is no run tidy from Jaden Sills four overs one maiden no wicket for 18 Leicestershire making a very good start in this reply 36 uh, without loss as they look to well bat out uh, for the draw there's no other possible result for Leicestershire Sussex if this game is drawn will secure uh, 14 points to add to the 15 they got last week uh, wins are going to be vital in this division uh, Rita. Yes, absolutely. And Sussex, you know, you have to say denied by the weather last week. Northamptonshire just with one wicket remaining. Uh, Sussex still needed to score 63 to win, but they were denied by uh, the light and then rain. Uh, will it be the same here uh, this week? Those clouds do look quite threatening. That's as threatening as they've looked all day. Big bank of cloud uh, building up behind the Bennett end of the ground. Change of bowling! And it's going to be Finn Hudson Prentice who's going to bowl for the Bennett end. Yeah, it would be good listen the um regarding franchise cricket. There's always this polarised view about franchise cricket from for a lot of cricket fans. Do you love it? Do you not like it? Do you think we should keep it traditional? Or do you love the Rasmataz? Right, start of the new over. Hudson Prentice comes in from the Bennett end and this one's punched to cover and there's no run. Do you like it yet? Do you like it? Do you love it then, I guess, uh, Adrian? Yeah, I mean, well, I guess, well, I mean, I have to say that, you know, I, I don't have the benefit of Sky TV or anything like that. So I, I, I don't watch too much franchise. I don't watch any franchise cricket, if I'm being perfectly honest. I mean, I know it's going on and I keep up to date with it through other media outlets. Um, but there seems to be a tournament going on pretty much everywhere in the world. I have to say some of those tournaments I watch you know, by very, very few people, uh, excluding the IPL and the Big Bash. Hudson Prentice in again and pushed to mid-wicket. They think about a single for about a millisecond, but, but choose, it, choose not to. But it's the way the game is going, isn't it? And you can't blame cricketers for, for taking, you know, sums of money to play in franchise cricket. They've got to earn a living and they can earn a good living doing that. So, 
And good luck to them, really. Well, such a short career in it total, it is. isn't it? So it is. Yeah, in some respects, it, it, it's, it's a it's a bonus, so to speak, to I prolong your your. I sometimes wonder quite way. what it's like to be playing for one team one week, another team the next week. Whether you can get that identity into that side, there's something that always, um, uh, I you know, weighs on my mind a little. Three slips go down. Point. Here comes the next delivery, defended by. Marcus Harris and there's no run. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. From week to week, you could be playing with completely different yeah. people. And in fact, within the franchise um, tournament, you could be just drafted in for a couple of games here yes, and there. Yes, you can. Totally. So therefore, you, yeah, utter confusion for sure. I, I mean, talking about it from a women's cricket perspective, just for a moment, the fact that there's a women's IPL which started last season and then and then and continued this season. I mean, that is just absolutely bonkers uh, in my view in, in, in a great way that it's absolutely you know great has happened next delivery defended and a potential drive but uh, fielded by mid off and there's no run I mean for some of these women's cricketers who have always just done it for the love of the game never taken a penny and then suddenly now being thrown into the, the midst of a uh, of pretty full um, Indian um, stadiums I mean, talk amazing. about yeah, amazing. You got to you got to you got to pinch yourself to a high degree, but it is the world. I mean, I was really interested to hear Andrew Strauss's views on the hundred. I hate, I don't want to fall out with our listenership, but here comes the next delivery. Hudson Prentice. Oh, and that was a beauty of a delivery, and Harris beaten there, and you could hear from the fielders, from the Sussex fielders, they felt like they were in business there, and Harris goes down the track and just prods on the bit where the ball was. Oh, pretty much thereabouts just gets his thoughts together yeah decent delivery there from uh, Finn Hudson Prentice but we shall see the 100 this uh, year we're coming up in August yeah. I don't want to fall out as I said with our listenership who uh, may not be great lovers of the game but it'd be nice to hear that podcast next delivery to the left-handed Harris this one's driven but not quite middled that goes to cover and there's no run I make that a maiden over indeed it is a very good first over there from Hudson Prentice 36 without loss if any, if there's any I don't know question really over the Sussex um, bowling here actually Adrian is that they didn't quite hit the money every single time in the first few overs we've had what eight overs but that over was it was a cracker it certainly was. Finn Hudson Prentice with career best uh, figures five for 50 in the first innings. Quick rattle around the country to some of the other games. Uh, Glamorgan, 353 for seven, leading Derbyshire by 392. A century there from Chris Cook, uh, undefeated century. Glamorgan leading by 392. Uh, down at Bristol, Gloucestershire, 21 for one, leading a further 477 to beat Yorkshire. Yorkshire today, 434 for six. Uh, declared. Let's see who made the runs there. Adam Lyth, 113. Harry Brooks, 68. George Hill, 58. Joe Root, 51. So runs all the way down the card. As in comes Danny Lamb. He's had quite the day, Danny Lamb. Making 134. Eclipsing his personal best of 125. Um, so that's it in the second division. And down the M1 at Wantage Road. Looks like a bit of a road, to be honest. Northamptonshire 552 for six, Middlesex 478 for two in reply. Mm. Max Holden with a ton, as well as Louis Deploy on his debut, uh, sorry, his, his debut um, century. Get the words out right, Adrian. He's signed from Derbyshire this season. season. He's 168, not out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, you were talking about the Kookaburra ball, and we were having a debate, weren't we, about is it good for cricket? Isn't it good for cricket? And I was putting up a case that some of the bowlers in this game, certainly Finn Hudson Prentice and Roman Walker, who we heard from earlier, were saying that in their opinion, you know, it does make you up skill, but it seems to be making it, you know, damned hard work for a lot of bowlers around the country. And there's going to look like there's going to be a lot of draws in this round. And comes Lamb Bowles, defends into the offside by Rishi Patel, no run. Certainly, Wanted Road looked like it's going to end in a draw. Looks like, well, Sussex is going to have to bowl well to win this game. Could be a result at Gloucester, I guess. 21 for one, that's a big, they've got a bat for a long time tomorrow. Could be a result at Cardiff. Don't think there'll be a result at Warwickshire at Edgbaston. Durham, 4.95 for seven in reply to Warwickshire's 6.98 for three. Could be a result at the Oval, probably will be a result. As in comes Lamb Bowles, and Patel clubs that away through the offside. 
I'm not sure if that's going to go all the way for four, because there's a long boundary on that offside, and it's not as overhauled by Jack Carson, who slides in as fielders do these days and prevents the ball going for four. Three, though, to Patel, who's batting very nicely. He goes to 19, and Leicestershire 39 uh, without loss. Some set to 158 for five, leading Surrey by just 15. Um, who's going along there? Uh, Lewis Goldworthy is on 56. Uh, James Drew out for 22. Uh, three wickets there for Dan Lawrence, who's making quite an impression for uh, Surrey in his debut season, having moved from Essex. Um, at Trent Bridge, not 125 for two, leading Worcestershire by 169. Yeah, Worcestershire and Ingsy, who made the runs as in comes Lamb around the wicket bowls, and forward comes Harrison, plays very easily, very calmly into the offside, and there is uh, no run. Um, who made the runs for Worcestershire? Uh, uh, Rob Jones. Uh, he made 90. Brett Dolivera, 54. Rob Jones moving down from Lancashire. Talk of Lancashire, they made 484 today. Hampshire, 6 for 1, trailing by 141. In comes Lamb around the wicket bowls to Harris. And there is no run. Ali Orr batting for... Uh, Hampshire is five not out. Hampshire seven for one. Uh, in Lancashire's four hundred eighty-four. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Keaton Jennings making one hundred and seventy-two. And George Bell ninety-nine. Did you ever make ninety-nine, Rita? <laughs> I did. I, I've made a century, but I also got out in the nineties. I did can't you? remember. I don't think it was ninety-nine. Right. It was early nineties. They hurt. Um, yeah. And I don't think you forget them. Although, no. you never. It takes years, doesn't it, to to say yeah it hurts but uh, and at the time you're like yeah no fine <laughs> it's all about the team <laughs> final game today is at uh, Chelmsford Essex 79 for 2 leading Kent by 196 5 wickets there for Matt Critchley for Essex next over starts Hutton Prentice continues from the Bennett Road end has defended no run good player Matt Critchley yes very Luke's good um, I mean in that game he's made 151 not out and taken 5 wickets moved oh. from Derbyshire a couple of seasons ago Take a bow. Yep, nice. and he's a very, very fine player. So, um, we'll have to see tomorrow. It, it does look around the country if the weather's not great, so some of these potential finishes may not happen. As you go around the grounds there, though, I mean, what, what, what's pretty apparent is they're absolutely tremendous number of runs. Yep. And this Kookaburra ball is doing that to a certain degree. Hudson Prentice with a very full delivery, left alone by Rishi Patel, no run, and who seems to know exactly where his off stump is. <coughs> Excuse me. No, I'm hoping I hopefully haven't put a kiss of death on him there, but uh, he seems to be very confident where his off stump is, put it that way. Yeah, we've got a few um, emails coming. Teddy Wormsley's been in touch. Hi, Teddy. He says it'll be good if they sort the stream out for tomorrow. Also, I hope the weather is okay tomorrow. That's Teddy and Lewis. Yeah, they've struggled with the stream a bit here, the lads here. You know, it's, I just stress it's... You know, can't be trying to do their best. Next delivery, and this one's defended, and there's no run. And, 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 and I agree. You know, some people are saying, well, come on, you know, if you're going to provide a stream, then then make it work. But there's no criticism of the, the guys here who are trying to make it work. But there, obviously, there have been some issues around it uh, this week. Um, uh, Sam, thank you, Sam. He says, Sussex's highest first-class score against Leicestershire, beating 686 for eight at Hastings in 1902, and their third highest first-class score of all time. Well... There we are. Thank you for that, Sam. Lights are coming on. 39 without loss. Next delivery. And there is absolutely no chance that Richard Patel is going to touch that one. Left alone. And there's no run. By the way. Oh, sorry. Carry on. And I'll no, Sussex's is high score. 745 for five against Somerset at Taunton in 2009. And 705 for eight against Surrey at Hastings in 1902. Thank you, Sam. We, we, we love a bit of history, we don't do. we? A bit of uh, love a nice stat. Yeah, absolutely. And today's the day that, oh well, records have been certainly broken, and uh, plenty of runs on the board. Patel on strike. Hart and Prentice, whose short delivery goes so far over the shoulder. There's your one. And uh, I think that could have been called, quite frankly, but mm, uh, it didn't. Clive Jacobs has been in touch. Hello, Clive. He said, if the morning session was a little dull and dull, the post-lunch session provides sparkling with fine stroke mm. paints and br brutal big hitting. I'm not sure this morning was dull, actually. I, I, I thought Sussex really cracked on really from the beginning today. 
Uh, more to come though from Clive. I'll read your email at the end of the over. I think Clive's a fan of the runs. So in that respect, yes. Next delivery comes in and defended. By the way, Maidstone Fox, hello to you. Um, a bit of chat on. I am reading your uh, live chat, but only recently. Uh, so thank you for that. Maidstone somewhere, I assume, in Kent. It somewhere, is. somewhere I know rather well myself, but uh, it seems like a Leicestershire fan. So glad you're uh, listening in. Yeah, I mean, between um, th this morning, Sussex added 135 in 30 overs. Mm. So they were certainly, you know, they were certainly getting on with it. Sussex have scored big, I suspect, with the ball for this round, making difficult, making taking wickets difficult. I can, to some extent, understand Sussex batting on. I'm not sure this is good for cricket, which is part of the sports and entertainment sector, but it is what it is, and good on John Simpson on his double ton. I'm not sure this is quite cricket. He says, if Sussex runs through the host top order and then rain arrives to end play, have Sussex missed a trick, says Clive Jacobs. Well, in comes Danny Lamb, who's had a good day today. Bowls to Harris, turns it onto the onside. There is no run. The slight slowly, lights slowly bursting into action. Yeah, I mean, I think we were, in, you know, it would be an interesting question to Sussex tonight as to what was the thinking behind the timing of the declaration. Mm. Um, and in general terms, when you talk to people around cricket, players, coaches, they don't like to play the game looking at the weather forecast. That seems to be the general view. Lamb in bowls and Harris is forward. Got a thickish inside edge to that off the inside of the bat and the ball goes to mid-wicket and there is no run. Yeah, I mean, cricketers, and, and, and I said this earlier on, and uh, fans and us commentators were absolutely obsessed with the weather and the, and, and the, the weather forecast is for a, for a particular town or area, but it obviously in this beautiful country it does change a huge amount. We shall see by the end of tomorrow whether it's absolute genius that actually Sussex just don't want to bat again and take the game away from Leicestershire. Lamb in bowls, let go by Harris outside the off stump. There is no one who's been impressed here yeah. by Marcus Harris and Rishi Patel. They've been out in the field for a long, long time and they've both come out and been positive when the bad ball has been bowled. They've made sure they hit it, but their defence has been sound. And I wish all the Leicestershire lads sitting on the balcony just down below us or in the dressing room would be mighty pleased if these two can see Leicestershire through to the close uh, without losing a wicket. Danny Lamb back to his mark. Three slips go down. And he's on his way, bowls, and Harris clips that nicely through square leg. There's at least a couple of runs here. Harry Cavalos goes chasing back, but not before Harris is through for a couple of comfortable runs. He goes to 20, and Leicestershire to 41 without loss. Yeah, ticking along quite nicely. And Sussex have got to take advantage of this um, Kookaburra ball, pretty new. So I, I feel like I'm repeating myself here, but that line and length and that niggling view, you know, they don't want to get into the point where the game sort of slowly drifts away, of course. Who, who's, a, who's a third slip? Uh, James Coles. James Coles. <laughs> it's just, um, I'll, I'll tell you what I saw in a moment. In comes Lamb again. Bowls to Harris, plays to mid on the field by Pajara, no run. Sorry, uh, James Coles was reenacting a a sort of forward drive, lofted forward drive there. So, so he's up, up for batting again, maybe, but maybe not on this game. I love that one. In the slip I, cauldron, you know, you have a lot of time to I, think. <laughs> I think he's actually practising an eight iron. Oh, is it? I just saw the back yeah, end no, of it. Oh, no, right. Was no, <laughs> I, I think he's... Pra I think he's pra Perhaps he's a keen golfer, James. I don't yeah. know. He might, he might be looking forward to watching the Masters tonight. Oh, weren't we all? In comes Lamb. Round the wicket bowls. Harris drives firmly. Fielded again by... This time by Jaden Sills at mid-off. There is uh, no run. Um, 41 without loss, Harris on 20, Patel on 19. If I may, um, there's a lot, quite a lot of chat on the live chat. I'll maybe come back another time and, and, and uh, answer some of them. But there's quite a lot of correspondence going on. Yeah, so, sure. Uh, George, George, uh, all very good. Well, shall, all I, shall I speak to Richard for the next no, two no, or no, three No, 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 I'll leave it to Richard. I'll just keep, keep the listeners' uh, okay. um, tease for the future. OK. Uh, thank you, Rita. Um, Richard Ray poised at the back of the commentary box here at uh, Grace Road. Coming back in to join us. Leicester Show made a good start to this. Uh, innings it comes Hudson Prentice bowls to Patel who's up on his toes, placed a backward point. There is no run. 41 without loss. Harris 20, Patel on 19. Um, the Sussex lead 356. Um, so take 41 off of that. It's still a lead of over 300. But these two have done well, Richard. Yes, they have. It'd be interesting to see if the lights, as they sometimes do, just affect the behaviour of the ball. Certainly affect the behaviour of the Dukes, perhaps less so the Kookaburra. 
Mm. Got some Prentice in again, Bowles. And well, Patel's going to get runs here down to. Uh, well, actually, I thought for a moment that I'd gone run away to um, third man for four runs, but it didn't. I think it was stopped by Carlson at Backwood Point. I, I must have I lost track of where the ball was. It dropped it. It was a drop. Was it? It. Yep. Yeah, I see the replay, but it looked to be a fairly straightforward who, who put that down? chance. We, we I think at second slip. Let me. I'll have to see a replay on that one. But look, here we go. Come off a of Finn Hudson Prentice. Yep, yes. straightforward chance really to, to his to his, to his right to Clark at second yep. slip. So it was Patel a on. It was a drop on yep. nineteen. He hasn't had a great game, Tom Clark. He he was out first ball, <laughs> which when you made six hundred and what was it ninety odd? That's up. Well, really rather missed out, but a, a drop on nineteen with a score on forty one. Uh, uh, the reason I didn't realise it was a drop because there was no great fuss made by the uh, Sussex well, fielders. Well, that was exactly the odd that. thing. Yeah. Hudson Prentice is in and bowls. Harris lets that go outside the off stump, taken by Simpson. There is no run. It was it's just so hard to create chances. It's very hard to believe that there wouldn't have yeah. been a reaction, <laughs> but <laughs> there kind of wasn't really. But no, actually, it wasn't. by was slip chances, that was a straightforward chance. Yeah, I mean, I must admit, I I was just there thinking, oh, we played that along. But I lost flight of the ball. I mean. Perhaps that's my eyesight, perhaps it's the lights. Well, I can try and blame the lights, but um, clearly on the replay we could see it was a chance. And a good one, a very good one. Hudson Prentice on his way again. Oh, he's always very nearly plays on Marcus Harris. He was looking to turn that down towards fine leg and he got rather squared up and the ball trickled agonisingly past the stumps. There is no run. Well, what's your take on cricketers and weather, Richard? I mean... It should, should Sussex be taking notice of the forecast, or do you do you play thinking the forecast might be yeah, wrong? No, I think you've got to be realistic, surely. Mm -hmm. I mean, and if, if there's a, a, a good chance of losing overs, then you react accordingly. It seems to me they're in such a strong position at, at that stage of the afternoon. That's some Prentice in again, bowls to Harris, who drives firmly down the ground. It's a lovely shot, beautifully played. Just turned around and said something, though, Marcus Harris. I'm not quite sure. I think he asked for permission oh. to change gloves or right. some, okay. something Well, that like was, yes, he probably asked John I don't Simpson. think he was being, <laughs> no. I don't think Harris is you, that, that. No, you're never quite sure, are you? But I think you're absolutely right. He <laughs> turned around to John Simpson and said, can I trot off? And John Simpson said, yes, of course. 46 without loss, lovely shot. Harris 24, Patel 20. And we have got 12 overs remaining in the day. Yeah, Paul Hoey on the uh, stream. Sussex can't afford to drop what he describes as dollies like that. I don't, I'm not sure a slip catch is ever a, a dolly at the pace of the first class cricket, but by first class cricket standards, it was a, you know, straightforward. You know, it was the right side for him as well, wasn't it? Two, sort of two hands to your, just to your right at, at, a, at quite a nice height. And uh, through them it went. So, game has changed a bit with the, with the two change bowlers, Lamb and uh, Hudson Prentice. Lamb, up the slope, bowls to Patel, who leaves outside off stump. But it's, it's kind of been the pattern of, of the game that the first few overs have gone for a few runs, the opening bowlers have yep. striving for pace or, or what have you, and haven't found really any, any, any movement. And when bowlers have settled down into a sort of nagging line and length, in, in this case being delivered by Hudson Prentice and Lamb, then it becomes harder to score and chances are created. 46 without loss after 12.1. Lamb in. Bowls. Very straight. Gets a nice straight bat in defence from Rishi Patel. As you talk about the Masters, I didn't realise, Richard, that because uh, in the old, good old days, the BBC showed a lot of the Masters, and certainly on the last day, it was live. But I, th I think the whole lot is on Sky now, so anyone who's a golf fan, if you haven't got Sky, you're not going to be able to watch it. No. And it is, it is one of those sort of tournaments that non-golf was quite enjoyed. There's something very special about Augusta. Lamb is in and bowls. Patel defends out into the onside this time. I'm, I'm <laughs> they're playing a game on uh, on the stream. Some of the some of the guys commentating about s certain words and uh, working them into the uh, into the commentary. Right. Okay. I wouldn't advocate following that particular. Right. I won't. Game. Nearly got it in there, chaps. <laughs> 46 without loss as 
Lamb turns, runs in, past umpire Middlebrook, bowls a bouncer. He hasn't really got the pace to, has to bang it in quite short. And when you do bang it short on this pitch, it tends to, uh, well, on the Grace Road Square anywhere really actually, if you bang it in really short, it tends to sort of loop a little bit. What's the, um, this ball what's the general feeling on the stream, people leaving messages about the timing of the Sussex Declaration? Any, any uh, I, it, I think the consensus was that it was surprisingly late. Right, OK. Lamb is in, bowls. Patel leaves. Latish decision, stepping across there. Mm -hmm. If, if they're three down by the close, then that, that, that's fine. And then we get a, a day of cricket tomorrow, and then it's going to have been fine. But it did seem surprising. And I say, particularly because it seems to have been linked to, appears to have been linked to the, uh, to the double century. Lamb in, bowls. A little bit short, Sharp. up on his toes, punching it away through the offside. Is Patel should get a couple because... Uh, Running back from extra cover is Tom Haynes, mm. and uh, it is quite slow across this. There's this almost a bit more grass on some of the uncut pitches on the square than there is on the outfield. Yes. It looks really lush. And so Patel picks up a couple. He moves on to 22. Harris has 24 48 without loss. Is the score? They ought to be somewhere on the board. Sussex lead by there isn't because uh, I'm sure Paul Rogers enjoys listening to us struggle with our, our maths <laughs> but the lead was 356 <laughs> so it is now 308 is that right uh, it's there yes. or thereabouts yeah it is that's yes, correct yeah so I've been in big letters here 356 a trial by Fin out some prentice. Three overs, two maidens, no wicket for five. Runs in and bowls to Marcus Harris. Harris turns onto the leg side, fielded there by I think that's Carson who's running in from mid wicket. There is no run. In fact, some of those uncut pitches are almost sort of avocado coloured. They are. Yeah, they are. Mind bowling on those, Richard. They might seem about a bit. <laughs> Next round of matches, of course, with the Duke ball. Yes. So you're, you're at home, presumably. Yes, Sussex at home uh, against Gloucestershire. The, uh, starting the glorious on glorious Glaws. Starting on Friday. Some apprentice in bowls. Forward comes Harris, plays to mid on no run. Yep. Uh, Ed Seaboard will be making his way up from Bristol. Uh, Isabel Duncan uh, joining us for four days as well as our third voice. And you're here against Northamptonshire. We are at Derby. Oh, um, you're at Derby. Next I thought week, you were, uh, uh, Northampton at home the following week. Ah, right, week. okay. So we are going to uh, enjoy the company of Dave Fletcher and uh, and his compadres over. Here. Oh yeah, Dave Griffin. Yeah. Had some Prentice round the wicket bowls. Harris drives Shots. four runs beautifully played. No need to chase that, Ari Cavalos. That's going to go for four runs. Just over pitching Finn Hudson Prentice. A lovely shot by Marcus Harris and the applause from the Leicestershire uh, crowd. Not a huge crowd, but more likely the Leicestershire players as Harris goes to 28, and very unfussily here. Um, Leicestershire have gone to 52 without loss, although Rishi Patel was put down, uh, slipped by Tom Clark, away to his right-hand side uh, when he was on 19. Three slips, backward point, cover mid-off, mid-on, mid-wicket, and a fine leg. So I'm just still surprised it didn't cause more... Um, angst from the Sussex players when that chance yeah, went down. There was, minimal it was, there was just no reaction at all, but um, suddenly on the replay, it looked like it was a, you know, a, a regulation slip catch. Well, regulation. In comes Hudson Prentice Bowles to Harris, turns it back to the square on the leg side. That's a little unfair. It was to his right, but he's got a really good pair of hands as Tom Clark, so it was unusual to see that go down. Harris moves to 29, and Leicester should do 53 without loss here on BBC Radio. Leicester, BBC Radio, Sussex. Oh, is that the is Hell's that Angels the, uh, chapter? Outlaws, it sounded a bit like it, didn't it? I, um, it's this Sunday afternoon, and they do tend to go out on a Sunday afternoon. They let me out last night. I was uh, going into the main well, the the road along did. here. They, they let you go, did they? A load of, um, a load of bikes came down <laughs> the road. Okay. Yeah, and the guy waved me out. And I thought, oh, that's nice. Any big Harleys, sort of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they were, yeah. You know, you know, yeah. Yeah. 
the chapter is yeah. based there on Milligan Road. Yeah. Hudson Prentice in, bowls to Patel, leans forward, plays to mid on, fielded by Carvelas. And there is no run. Yeah, the fellas have been out for a ride, presumably, and I don't know, maybe it's men and women, I don't know, in the chapter, but uh, there were some very nice looking motorbikes. A lot of chrome is involved, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of cleaning, I expect. Yes. Uh, now who's that warming up at uh, Square Lake? There's Jack Carlson. I wonder whether he might be going to have a yeah, bowl. Makes sense. Hudson Prentice in bowls. Short bouncer. Loads of time for Patel to duck underneath that, through into the gloves of John Simpson. And there is no run. We obviously have a bit of Jack Carlson. I was a little surprised that at the end of the over, 53 without loss, Hudson Prentice four overs, two maidens, no wicket for 10. That's just here, 53 without loss, Harris 29, Patel on 22. I was a little surprised that James Coles didn't bowl more for Sussex in the first innings. He only bowled two overs, whereas the preceding week down at Hove, he'd taken six wickets. Uh, he was preferred initially to Carson in this game. He bowled the first over of spin, but um, this time it is going to be Jack Carson who's going to bowl. We got that right. He was doing some warming up. And it is going to be the off spinner. I think that makes sense. The seam has had a go. It um, doesn't seem to be offering an awful lot of help. And um, the pads are being brought out. Uh, well, again, it's a little slow by Sussex, I have to say. Tom Walsop is having to strap the pads on. Um, and so we can have a bit of a delay um, whilst the pads are put on. Brought out by Sean Hunt, who is the Sussex 12th man. He's wrapped up in a one of these big, long coats. Looks a bit like a sleeping bag with buttons on or zips need it out there at the moment. It is, yeah. It's uh, distinctly on the parky side. Uh, Tom Walsop is now ready. He's got the pads on under his uh, trousers and all sorts of protective gear. Um, Jack Carlson is exactly hurrying, are they? No. That's, should, that's one thing they did do well. Actually. No, they were very they, good. They, they sent Rishi Patel off between overs and mm. sent the 12th man on so that he was ready and padded up when the, when the spinner came on. But perhaps it's a sort of late thought by John Simpson. Now, Liam Travaskis got one, as far as I'm aware, ball to turn. And that was yesterday, wasn't it? Nothing turned today. Not the way it turned into the meat or over the meat a few times. So, Carson is going to go around the wicket to the left-handed Harris. Might be able to get a bit of purchase in the footholds. And he goes, bowls. Harris is forward into the air. Harris is walking. He's got a wicket with his first ball inside edge onto the pad. Went straight on. I don't think it turned. Might have bounced a fraction more than Harris thought. Inside edge onto the pad. Looped up. Comfortable if high catch for short leg. And the breakthrough has come with 53 on the board. Well, the first ball that Jack Carson bowls. I think that was Tom Allsop in there at short leg. He spent an age putting the pads on, but he... Um, to jump high in the air, clutch hold of it, and Harris is gone. So a breakthrough uh, for Sussex, 53 for one. And Marcus Harris on his way. So maybe the spinners are going to hold the key. Yeah. Didn't turn, didn't do too much. We'll have a look at, uh, at the replay. Harris sort of stretched forward and a little inside edge. Maybe I'm doing Carson a bit of an injustice, but important breakthrough. There's still 9.5 overs to go tonight. So another couple of wickets. I think they take one at this stage. So six, let's have a look. See, did it do anything? No, not really. He just sort of extra bounce. Or no, not really. Hmm. He just sort of tried to turn his wrists on it a little bit. But it, uh, as I say, he has that really nice loop, Carson, and and he sort of maybe imparted a bit of overspin on the ball. So it it came on a little bit more quickly. Here's a nice slow motion replay. Let's have a look. See. Uh, just sort of, his bat was in front of his pad and he just tried to turn his wrists on it, got a little inside edge onto the pad and it popped up kindly enough for Tom Allsop at short leg. As you say, it was high. Yes, he sort of looped towards him, didn't he? But it's, it's that sort of little overspin and, well, important breakthrough. Harris <laughs> goes for 29. Very strange. <laughs> so, uh, Jack, um, sorry, Sean Hunt and Ollie Carter running out with drinks I mean, <laughs> anyway uh, they're back maybe now maybe they're warm drinks maybe they're just maybe. sort of warm drinks laced with something like whiskey no I don't think so I don't think I don't think we're quite into night watchman territory here are we with no. nine overs to go after this one so Louis Kimber has come out yeah, the number three has come out a difficult 
circumstances. Yeah. It's, it's the gloomiest light of the day. And the floodlights, just looking at the players, they are s casting slight shadows. So Kimber is right-handed, of course, as is Patel. So, But <laughs> not that the, the rough really had an impact there. Harris again gets in and again gets out. 56, 24 and 29 in his three innings so far, Marcus Harris. What the, the delay is here? Surely this isn't for more. More pads. Uh, Somebody else going to go in close? Yeah, that's poor. That, that's, that's... It's a, yeah, it's a helmet for the second man going in close. Yeah, so that's... I have to say that Sussex need to sharpen up there, really. That, that That's, you know, we've been... Actually, for Louis Kimber... Um, you know, he's, he's been out there, he's ready, he's taken guard, we're all ready to go, and all of a sudden Sussex are changing the field, and the umpires will not look kindly upon that sort of thing, and rightly so. You've got to get on with things a little more quickly than that. But Tom Haynes has got the helmet, but it's been fully three minutes, three, four minutes, he's gone into leg slip, that, that wasn't great. Anyway, Carson is obviously going to go over the wicket to the right-handed. Kimber, short leg, leg slip, and slip goes in and bowls. Kimber stretches forward, tall man, smothers the delivery, back down the pitch. We're talking about young players, um, you know, earning their living playing a, you know, a lot of franchise cricket. One Sussex player, he plays for England as well, former Sussex player, doing rather well in the IPL today. Carson is in, nice loop to the delivery, thickish outside edge, along the ground, towards sort of back would point where Carvelas is fielding but uh, again it, it's all flight it's flight that, that, that yeah, yeah, will, yeah. causing caused the issue to a certain extent with with Harris and, and a little bit there with Kimber too Carson is in bowls a little bit short Kimber goes back and wristily turns it into the leg side but only as far as the shortish mid wicket there's no run short-sleeved Sussex shirt on uh, Carson's back as he steps in and bowls. Nice flight and loop. No turn. Kimber stretches forward, defends back down the pitch. Carson picks it up. He polishes the ball on the bottom of that uh, shirt. The front bottom part of it. And he, he stands very upright like a guardsman at the end of his run before, such as it is his run, before coming in and bowling and ooh, Went back there, Did Louis Kimber, and it did skid on a bit. Yeah, not and sure that's uh, the best idea. No, it was uh, lots of oohs and ahs, but uh, it didn't turn, so Kimber was able to come down on the ball and push it back down the pitch. But what a start from Jack Carson, a wicket maiden, just what John Simpson and Sussex ordered. Well, the man in question, former Sussex player, doing very well in the IPL, uh, is Phil Salt. Who's made 89 out of the Kolkata Knight Riders? I don't begin to uh, understand who, where they are in the league or anything like that. Uh, but he made 89 in 47 balls, 14 fours, and three sixes. And Phil Salt very much establishing himself in the T20 game and franchises. And I'm sure he'll be part of the England squad uh, for the World Cup in the T20. In comes Hudson Prentice over the wicket, bowls forward, stretches Patel back to Hudson Prentice. There is no run. Nine overs left in the day. The floodlights are on. Uh, we can have a bit of overtime, Richard. Uh, although if Carson is bowling, maybe not that much. Yeah, we're looking at probably about quarter past, something like that, aren't we? Yeah. I would imagine. Hudson Prentice again. Three slips go down. That will tell his forward impressed by Rishi Patel. I thought he batted beautifully in the first innings, Richard. 87. Made a ton against Sussex here oh, last I year. I know what you're up to, Adrian Harms. <laughs> 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 no, I'm not. I mean that genuinely. Um, three slips. Allsop, Clark, Coles all in place. Tom Haynes at leg slip. In comes Hudson Prentice bowls. Oh, well, that was all he was bowling before. It was short, and Patel turned it away down to fine leg fielded by Jaden Seals. But that's the reason that Tom Haynes is there. It was nowhere near him, I hasten to add. But uh, a good bit of bowling by Hudson Prentice. Good bit of field placing, and they're going to change now for the uh, new man who is Louis Kimber instead of the leg slip. I think Tom Haynes is going to go into fourth slip. Yes, he is. So 
Sussex have clearly got their plans here. The numbers on the scoreboard are shining quite brightly, particularly the name Kimber, which is in yellow letters. And it's really sort of standing out. He's the man on strike. Yeah. Um, eight overs to go in the day for this one. In comes Hudson Prentice running in to bowl to Louis Kimber. He's in and bowls. Well, it was a quick delivery, actually. Kimber did well to play that. In fact, he played it really well. He watched the ball right the way through. At the last minute, just jerked his head out of the way. And there was no run. This season, uh, Leicestershire have made one of the, well, I suppose if they haven't sold one, have made one of the hospitality boxes available to players' sort of families. So that's sort of watching from behind the Finn Hudson Prentice's arm at the moment. Mr. and Mrs. Kimber were there yesterday. I was wondering, it must be, I mean, we get to know the players and, uh, and, their, and their successes and their failures matter a lot to us. Hudson Prentice in bowls. Kimber drives down the ground. There is no oh, Cavellus misfields, but gets away with it. No run. What, what must it be like when it's your uh, your your flesh yeah. and blood out there, so to speak? You know, I've seen a lot of players come and go uh, commentating on Leicester, but but you know when it hasn't worked for them at Leicester, then quite often that's the end of their sort of professional careers, really. And and you think it so uh, must be desperately difficult watching. For yeah. Of relatives. Hudson Prentice in bowls to Kimber, who squeezes that one out on the offside. Hudson Prentice got his hands on his head. He played that very late, did Louis Kimber, but he picks up a couple of a couple of runs. Chetish for Pajara chasing towards the cover boundary. End of Hudson Prentice's over five overs, two maidens, no wicket for 13. Uh, eight overs left in the day. Um, I will go off when it's six overs left and leave you with Rita and uh, Richard for the rest of the day. I was, I mean, talking about golf. Louis Kimber is a, is, a, is an outstanding golf player. Yeah. A couple, just a couple of, you know, in, in his handicap. But I was amazed listening to Roman Walker. That's a, a very complicated sweepstake that they're having. Yeah, it is. Yeah. The, the yeah. players. He, he, he also said, he said, he said, oh, he said, yeah, I, I sort of play. I said, well, what's your handicap? And, and I'm thinking he, he wasn't very good. And he said, oh, I play a 14. Yeah. Well, that's really good. Best round of 77. So... <laughs> He's more than a useful golfer if you're playing off 14. Most of these sort of cricketers are, aren't they? The, the, I remember seeing a photo when I was young of Seve Ballesteros and Ian Botham, um, you know, sort of put next to each other. And, and the, the body as Ballesteros was sort of following through on a drive and Botham a big six position w was almost exactly the same. Almost yeah. exactly the same. In goes Carson. Bowls forward goes Patel getting to the pitch of the ball, poking it out to Pajara in the covers. Is it windy out there, Richard? It is a bit, isn't it? Not quite as much as it was, but the breeze is cold. Yeah. It is cold, although it's coming from the south. But looking at the trees, not really stirring very much. The mic's just swinging a little bit, but not much. Carson is in, drops a little bit short, and he's onto leg stump, and it's swept for four by Patel. Saw it early, Patel, and he's a tall man, and he stepped forward and um, swept on line, but almost on the pitch of the ball as well. So used to seeing these sort of reverse sweeps and yeah. fetching it from outside the off stump. That was a perfectly conventional sweep on line and length, and it uh, went for four, just behind square. And usually ask, because our interview last night with Tom Haynes was really disrupted by the wind. I think tonight... I think I you'll be all right. You think so? Yeah. I think you'll be okay I, I didn't know if I ought to pop inside. But you inside. pop around the corner. Yeah, I did. I, we tried to get around the corner last night, but it was just blowing. So I might, I might pop inside tonight and do it. It might be better. Carson is in. Patel is back. Just turning his wrists on the defensive push down into the ground. Off middle and leg down towards short leg. Bounces a long way short of short leg. Also has his hands in his pockets momentarily, keeping them warm. Now they're on his knees. And now he crouches down as... Carson goes in and again Patel is sweeping he misses it this time it bounces up I think it hits him in the chest bounces out into the offside he uh, didn't sweep on length on that occasion and, and missed it and he's just having to recompose himself there I'll have another look at that if I see the replay but I think it bounced up on over the baton hit him amidships yeah painful Oh, we've got another delay. Yeah, I think it probably mm. might have win. Mid no, we see who's, who's going to come on. It's Well, it's the um, the Sussex 12th man with drinks, but I think the delay is because Rishi Patel might just got hurt a little bit there. Yeah. Um, Both batsmen leaning on their bats waiting. And it is the 
Leicestershire physio who is uh, running on. So, what's he going to do? Give him a little rub on the chest or a little, just check something. Let's see. Mm, so these overs are taking a little while. Obviously, the umpires won't. Uh, I wonder if they maybe it bounced uh, up Yeah, on, I think it did. Hit him in the, 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 the grill. grill. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it ran up the sort of chest and up, up, up onto the grill. So 60 for one after 16.4 overs. Patel being just checked over. Yeah, he doesn't okay. even undo his bag, does he? The, uh, the Leicestershire physio, all is well. Just felt the grill to make sure all was good. Yeah. 27 to him, 2 to Kimba. I forget the name of the... It's not... The, who used to be the Leicester physio? I mean, We've been through a few oh over right. the years that I've okay. been here. <laughs> Rob Leather was first. Rob Leather, that's when, the uh, name, yeah. Was the first man. Yeah, I remember you. I remember Still treats me these days, bless Does he? Him. Yeah, okay, if, if I need any r a repairing, which I frequently do after a triathlon <laughs> or before. <laughs> Carson then. A couple of deliveries left in his seven in the seventeenth over bowls. A little bit short onto the leg stump. But he's gonna have to hurry there, Patel. Ooh, that was close because he turned it to square leg and, and rather sauntered down the wicket before realizing suddenly that um the fielder was closing in on the ball rather more quickly than he thought and he hurried up, but had that throw hit it would have required a decision of umpire Middlebrook. I think it would. So he didn't. In goes Carson. Forward goes Kimber. Back up the pitch goes the ball to Carson. And it's the end of the 17th over of the inning. Seven remains 61 for one. The score. Floodlights on here at Grace Road. They've been on for the last hour or so. It's, um, well, the light... The light is not great. You know whether we'd be playing without them. It's a it's a moot point really. There are some lighter skies around, but we've got the lights on, so the spectators are are staying on what's a very chilly afternoon here in the East Midlands. Do you call it East Midlands, Richard? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they do. Uh, Rishi Patel is on strike, and Finn Hudson Prentice is going to be bowling. He's bowled five accurate overs. Two maidens, not for thirteen, and he's waiting now. Is Patel as in comes Hudson Prentice running in and bowls and. Patel is solidly behind that, showing the maker's name to Finn Hudson Prentice. And there is no run. I, I just wonder here whether a, a little experiment of spin from both ends might not be the worst thing here for Sussex. I can see Danny Lamb sort of rolling his arm again, so it may be that he's going to come on, he's going to swap ends and um, replace Hudson Prentice. Uh, Somerset 188 for six now at the Oval, leading by 45 against the county champions. Hudson Prentice in bowls, Patel up on his toes. Good bounce there from Hudson Prentice, but Patel makes it comfortably enough. I'd have a short leg in for... His instinct is to play um, the short ball, yeah. Rishi Patel, rather than sort of necessarily get out of the way of it. And when he, you bang it in short, it does sort of get up, you know, uh, it stops a little bit. Yes. Um, and sometimes he pops it up in the air. Tom Haynes is of my mind. Or at least uh, John Simpson is of my mind because he's indicated to Tom Haynes that to get in there close. Yeah. Uh, Durham are following on against Warwickshire. Bowled up for 517 and you've got to follow on. That doesn't seem very fair, does it? Okay. Um, and they're two for one in their second innings. Alex Lee's out. In comes Hudson Prentice. Bowls, short, bouncer, easy for Patelli. Just ducks underneath it, no run. Uh, Nottinghamshire, who lost their first game, are in trouble against Worcestershire. 144 for 7, leading Worcestershire by 188. If the rain stays away, that could be a good game tomorrow. Um, at Cardiff, Derbyshire have lost an early wicket. They're 7 for 1. They need another 394 to beat Glamorgan. Uh, Harry Kane, the man out for just 3. Hudson Prentice in again. Bowles always oh, beaten outside, and that was a good delivery by Hudson Prentice. And he was just fishing for that. Was Rishi Patel? The ball thumps into the gloves of Simpson, and there is no run. Chris Cook finishing there, 126 not out for Glamorgan. Uh, Gloucestershire 51 for two. Need another 446 to beat Yorkshire, with Bancroft and Dent already back in the pavilion. I think he just 
looking at the replay, the advantage of the replay, just dropped his hands, but it was a you know nice delivery with a little bit of extra bounce. Yeah. Had some Prentice again. Over the wicket rolls, and Mattel this time does pull the bat out of the way. But good pace from Hudson Prentice. Uh, and just finally down the road at Wantage Road, um, I have to say a bit dull really. Middlesex 530 for two. Let's take nothing away from Max Holden, who's on 195, and Louis Deploy, who's on 189. But in that game in three days, we've had eight wickets. So it looks like a flat one there. Looks like it's destined for a draw. Maybe it's the same here, we shall see. Leicestershire still with work to do. Hudson Prentice in bowls to Mattel, who's right in behind that, plays it to mid on. That is the end of the over, and that is the end of B for today. 61 for two, Kimber two, Patel is on 28. Richard, thank you very much for your company as ever. And I'm going to leave you with Richard, and for the final six overs, we'll be joined by Rita Green. Thank you, Adrian, who will, of course, be back tomorrow. It is getting distinctly gloomy out there. Heavy clouds over the ground at the moment. But the umpires have been admirably keen to keep the players out there. And uh, no sign of Messrs Pollard and Middlebrook even thinking about it. So, Carson to continue with three close catches. Around the bat goes in and bowls to Louis Kimber. Goes back and works it nicely out to the mid-wicket boundary for four. Just dropped a fraction short there. Jack Carson and Louis Kimber went back. It sat up nicely and uh, he rather whipped it away through the vacant mid-wicket area. For four, he moves on to six, 65 for one. No sweepers, of course, at this stage of the innings. Carson steps in and uh, bowls. Back again goes Kimber. That was another opportunity to do much the same, but Hudson Prentice scrambled across from backward square, picked up the ball almost in front of umpire Pollard and uh, got in a very firm sideways throw. Carson spins the ball from hand to hand, little step and then a couple of strides and he's in. Forward goes Kimber, plays it down into the ground. Stopped at short leg on the bounce. And there's no run. All sop, of course, the fielder there. Carson steps in. Bowls. Drops a fraction short. Back goes Kimber working to mid wicket. And doing so successfully. Couldn't get across there. I thought for a minute the man at sort of shortish mid wicket had managed to get across and uncover and get a hand to it. It might have done, he might, it might have just brushed his fingers as he did so. But uh, what he couldn't do was stop the ball and it's run out to the mid-wicket boundary in front of the meet for four. And as a consequence, Louis Kimber has got rid of one of the close catches. I think Haynes has gone out of leg slip now to a fairly conventional mid-wicket. It was James Coles there on the sort of closer mid-wicket area. That's a fuller delivery, and it's played firmly by Louis Kimber on the on side. Fairly straight, though. And it goes, uh, obviously, more or less straight to mid on James Coles there. Kimber had moved on to 10 with those two, uh, two boundaries and that over. To finish the over, Carson steps in and bowls. Forward goes Kimber, presenting the bat as straight as a... Mars bar. <laughs> Back down the wicket it goes. <laughs> I'm not sure that worked. 69 for one. Yeah, it's, uh, hi, hi Richard. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, 69 for one. And uh, Kim has played a pretty good inning so far, actually. And to, it's always quite satisfying as a batter when uh, one of the close fielders gets pushed back. Uh, you feel like a mo there's a moral victory there. And. Um, certainly runs to be taken really you know um, Sussex have put that on a plate in terms of feel, the field Just the physio has been oh he's brought out a repla he took out a replacement grill double L E for uh, Rishi's helmet there's been quite a lot of activity with regards to pads and grills and such like isn't there and uh, yeah I'm not sure about the pace of life at the moment out there but it, it's a game of chess I mean that Marcus um, Harris wicket was was huge wasn't it for for Sussex but 
in the context of the game, will it will it make a difference? I don't know. Don't know. But there wasn't much turn in that delivery. Actually, it just didn't he, he played for a yeah. bit, perhaps almost, and his bat was in front of his pad, and it was a sort of wristy little flick at it inside edge. I guess first delivery, not quite sure what you're going to get, and uh, just wafted. It just I think I think he came off the glove, didn't it? More than maybe the uh, inside edge onto the pad and oh, just po okay, popped up in, into high to to short to short leg. It yeah, it was disappointing for Harris. Bonus wicket, massive bonus for Carson and Sussex. It's a moral victory, absolutely, and uh, we'll see how it goes tomorrow as well. But plenty of action still remains today. Five more overs to come. Patel on 28 from 61, a very thoughtful innings. He was dropped on 19. Bad drop, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, it seemed pretty straightforward. Here comes the start of the next over. This one's punched in, short and wide, and cut for four. Nicely done there. Got onto his toes, did uh, Patel, and uh, cut it to deep backwards square, uh, the sort of deep point region, basically, and over the boundary for four. Nicely played there. Patel, he's just a very, very nice... Um, nice stroke play from Patel throughout this innings, apart from that one blip earlier on. Here comes Coles. Next one. And short and wide again. But didn't quite middle that one, but pushed it into the deep, did Patel. And one more to the total. 74 for one. But spin is definitely in order. The lights are on here. It's dark, uh, Grace, isn't it? it is gloomy. Yeah, without the lights, this game would. I'd say yeah. most oh, no, no, yeah. We off. yeah, absolutely. I mean, the lights are making the, the turf look quite quite a rich sort of avocado. Ah, I've done that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice one, though. Next delivery comes in. Short, punched in, and uh, <laughs> punched to the deep. I know, I'm just copying you, quite frankly. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you are a legend, quite frankly. <laughs> Do you know, we're sorry. There was this one of these comical moments when uh, Simpson sort of threw the ball to the uh, slip fielder. He had no idea it was coming to him. And uh, it just hit his back. But it was one of those moments that we've done. We've all been there. Don't worry. It's towards the end of the day. Next delivery comes in from Coles. Shorter delivery, fizzier delivery, and defended by Patel. Still 75 for one. I think well, Adrian will be pleased. He likes um, spin from both ends. But I don't think there's much there, from certainly from that end. But let's see. Well, the ball's not that old. so. Hmm. But anyway, context of the game, maybe that's the right thing to do. Defended next delivery, and there is no run. Well, sometimes while it retains any hardness at all, it might just get a little bit of bounce, but... Um, yeah, big ask. And, you know, and a little bit of seam on it still. The Carlson celebration, by the way, was pretty epic. Coles, young chap, comes in, and short and moderately wide, and Patel tried to push it to the offside, didn't quite middle it. Uh, went to the fielder and there's no run. 75 for one, six minutes past six on this Sunday evening. Day three, game, very interestingly poised. As we came in today, Richard, I think we were talking about, you know, wickets for Leicestershire could have been a tasty uh, game and very even, but actually Sussex have really taken the day today, haven't they? They've done oh, incredibly well. Absolutely, absolutely. How many wickets have we had? Just the four. Right, so three, four, four in total, Something, yes, indeed. Yeah. Hmm. It is, you know, you look around the grounds and it's too much of a coincidence, I think. So Carson is in to Louis Kimber, who's forward, playing just very slightly across the line as he pushes that one out to mid on, no run. In goes Carson, a little bit short. Again, Kimber goes back, tries to work it into the on side. Does, but James Coles gets across to field. That's shortish mid wicket, no run. Lamett is, is a bit deeper at mid on. Carson is in. Kimber is forward, bat in front of pad slightly, pushes it out to Coles at mid wicket. Yeah, he's not quite long on, is he? And he's not quite. A conventional so mid on. Almost halfway, isn't he? Mm. Between the two positions. Carson is in. Nice loop to that one, but it's drifting just slightly towards middle and leg. So 
Kimber can push it carefully, but uh, confidently and competently out towards mid wicket. Comes in from it from the boundary. You know, it is a short boundary, but the sweeper is there now. So single to Louis Kimber moves on to 12, 76 for one. Carson's going to go round the wicket to Patel, who goes back, plays it firmly, but not quite firmly enough to beat Coles running across from that short mid-wicket position, so dot ball. Last ball of the Carson over, coming up. Carson clear shadows now from the floodlights, goes in bowls to Patel, who at times the clip into the leg side rather nicely but uh, places it as far as he's concerned wrongly because it runs more or less straight to Coles end of the over 76 for one off 21 Leicestershire three remain for them to survive I don't think <laughs> I was going to say that I don't think they can afford to lose another wicket well, who knows but they certainly won't want to that's for sure yeah, I think uh, one more, even two more, would be <sighs> pretty disappointing from a Leicestershire perspective. By the way, thank you for having me today. Oh, and it's nice, to, nice to be here, um, for sure. And um, I'll be watching from afar tomorrow for the conclusion of the game. But uh, just to, you, you talked about sort of round the wicket approach for Carson. Actually, got a change of bowling here. And who is coming? Haynes. What's that drifting in the air above the... It almost looks like a kite. Liter I mean, a, a, a child's kite. Is it, what <laughs> it, is it? it? It does look like a balloon. It's, it's like an S shape. But yes, that's been let go by uh, probably one of my... Well, anyway, here's the next ball. It comes in and very full delivery from Haynes and there's no run. Look, from, I was going to say from a toddler and I've had... I'm sure we many listeners would have heard this, had this experience as well where the... Your child lets go of a balloon that you've paid way too much for and it goes floating into the sky and they insist on having another one and you have to uh, let them down gently. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Haynes, second delivery of the over. And this one's driven, but straight to short cover. So just one, Is it one over from Coles. That's odd. It looks it's a, could be yeah. a two, but it's, it's heading our way. Yeah, back to the cricket. You're right. <laughs> just one over from Coles. So a bit of spin what from both ends. Is it? Um, I, I hope John Mallett's got his... Um, Got his camera on that. <laughs> heading towards one of the floodlights now. It's a blue S floating in the air. I Next delivery comes in. Uh, sort of medium pace. Oh, it was in the air, that one, and clipped off the pads. Kimber into the onside. Nicely timed, and it goes all the way into about three counties away on this sort of left-hand side of us as we see it. Acres of space and over the boundary rope. It was in the air for a moment, and actually Searles at uh, short mid-wicket uh, felt like he might be in business <laughs> but uh, uh, sorry I'm, I'm slightly smiling because I'm completely uh, hypnotized <laughs> by that <laughs> just watching two. This. it is a balloon it's a two it's a balloon number two. Oh, that makes more sense some a, a child that's two or 12 or a celebration that involves a that's two huge. that makes more sense rather than s that's very true and, and I'm, I'm assuming it might be a boy I don't want to generalize here but you know in terms of that one well I'm, I'm, anyway <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving that one well alone Haynes in again <laughs> onto the back foot is uh, Kimber and there's no run you can tell I'm not a balloon specialist and I'm certainly not going there with the colors oh in fact our cameraman is absolute or woman is absolutely zooming in on thank the you. balloon well thank done. you very much director um, can, can, can you tell what the days uh, what, where the days leading to? Right, coming up for yourself though, I'll come on to that in a few moments. Haynes, right-handed over the wicket, nice delivery, nice pace. Here. He's just hitting line length. The delivery before was slightly down leg side, and so um, was dispatched to the boundary rope, just slightly off line. But Haynes doing a job here. 80 for one is the scoreline. So coming up for you, Richard, mm. Derbyshire, North Ants and Middlesex. I'm going to yes. see you actually at the Middlesex game. Oh, okay. uh, Haynes in, full of delivery, slightly down like, oh, and nearly a leading edge. And Haynes mm. sort of stops for a few moments and puts his hands on his knees, thinking what could have been, but it drifted to cover um, and no runs there anyway so end of the over 80 for one so coming up Derbyshire you can feel like that's a game that I mean I know it's away from home but they're the type of games that you might be thinking mm, I could get some uh, points there North Ants certainly 
Yeah, it's but it's it's kind of like Adrian said. But most teams in this division will look at the opposition, whoever they're playing, and think this is very much a game we can we can win. I don't think there is a really outstanding side. We, you know, Sussex have, have made a strong start, and they're clearly going to be there or thereabouts. Yorkshire, ditto as Carson is in back goes Patel, plays it off the straight, drops it out into the offside, and there's no run. Leicestershire, very strong batting side, or look to be a strong batting side. Do they have the sort of firepower to bowl a side out twice? Does Well, we have yet to see a side, have we, bowled out twice with the Kookaburra? <laughs> because all the first games, the first round of games were draws, but the weather was a factor there. Carson is in, leg stump, and back goes Patel, plays it through the gap out to the sweeper uh, on the leg side boundary, who's actually Haynes out there. And uh, one is taken. Patel on to 34. But yeah, yeah you know, hopefully, once the, if once the weather sort of, as I say, relents, it's dry at least now. But yeah, and we get back to using a Dukes, then there could be some really good games involved. Carson is in. Back goes Louis Kimber and a sort of little short armed jab almost, turn of the wrists. Jab is not a fair description because it, it sounds a sort of rather hopeful shot. He knew exactly where he was placing it, but just a sort of short-armed push. Carson in bowls. You can see the amount of revs he's trying to put on the ball. You could almost see the ball turning, but really once like it hits the, the pitch, nothing happens, does yeah, it? Yeah, I really like the drift. You're right, he's it trying doesn't as hard bite. as he can. It yeah. doesn't bite. It would be interesting to have a some 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 times with the internationals they have these sort of almost revometers uh, they tell you how quickly the ball is turning Carson is in that one just bounced and turned a fraction but it was from off the sort of leg stump down the leg side it, it was helped around the corner by Louis Kimber it might have been out of a sort of lick a bit of a foothold well Anthony Gibson last weekend I was at a, the Kent Somerset game was saying they might put a chip in the middle of the ball that would actually record what the revolutions would be okay. Carson is in. Louis Kimber stretches forward very correctly back up the pitch. It goes to Carson. And his work with the ball for the day, in terms of bowling at any rate, is uh, done. He's bowled five overs and he has made the breakthrough with his very first ball, having Marcus Harris caught at short leg. That uh, sun just uh, breaks through the cloud, so we will get this last over of the day. What time is it? Quarter past six and it will be bowled by Tom Haynes, 81 for one. Yeah, I really like Carson's uh, action. You know, as uh, Richard said, puts plenty of revolutions on it. The uh, Northern Irish born 23 year old, play for the England Lions as well, real talent. Um, and certainly very enthusiastic after he got the wicket of uh, Marcus Harris and quite rightly, you know, uh, getting a, an Aussie test um, batter out in your career that's a, a, a nice feeling for sure but here comes the last over of the day 81 for one is the scoreline Patel 34 from 70 he's going to be surrounded look at that <laughs> look close at that. fielders everywhere right here we go Hayes with the first delivery and this one's a full delivery and uh, driven to one of the many cover uh, short cover fielders and in fact it's going to go all the way is it to the boundary Great rope. Fielding. Oh no, brilliant fielding there. Didn't give it up whatsoever. There were two fielders in pursuit, which is exactly how you should do it. And dragged back. Coles back. it was who got that. Fantastic. Well done uh, to uh, James Coles for dragging that back. Saved what, what two actually in the grand scheme of things. Uh, they ran th oh, I'm three. Oh, sorry, three. Actually, yeah, saved so one. Yeah, saved one. one. But it's uh, still a save nonetheless. Yeah. Will those three cover fielders get back into position? Probably. We've also got a mid-wicket and then two short mid-wicket uh, fielders as well. <laughs> it's hard to describe this, basically. It's a quite sh quite a lot of fielders around the bat. Here's a full delivery and Ooh. defended nicely by Kimber. Kept low. Yeah, yeah it, I agree. it was played well. Kimber's just come in and looked very, very assured. I really hope I haven't put the mockers on this one, actually, <laughs> this in his innings. But looked assured. You know, he's been put under pressure from the very start where had a couple of short fielders in their short leg and another fielder with a with a um, helmet on but Sussex putting the pressure on in this final over four more balls remaining here's the next one coming in and push back 
towards the bowler. In fact, pass the bowler. And indeed, they'll go through for one single. No, they go for a two. Nicely played, actually, and uh, nicely run as well. Two more to the total. Like 86 that from for one. Comment from Bob Pook on the stream that the two balloon he thinks represents marks out of 10 for the Kookaburra. It's a fair, fair comment, I'd say. Indeed. If you love your runs and uh, a source of... Yeah, batsmen might disagree. <laughs> the basketball <laughs> world, so to speak, you'd love it. If you're a traditionalist, then uh, not so much. Here comes the next one from Haynes. Full delivery, defended nicely by Kimber. And there's no run. Yeah, thank you so much to everyone that's got in touch today. Keep, do, keep getting in touch tomorrow. And if you're listening across tomorrow, even when you're in the office or on the train or I'll try not to get people in trouble actually listening in the office maybe they're not supposed to but uh, there's plenty of you out there that do uh, keep in touch we'll be finally poised tomorrow next one comes in from Haynes this one's carbon copy of the previous delivery is defended and there is no run but we'll see what the weather look like looks like tomorrow look it is what it is it's sh sunshine and showers throughout the day so it might be an on off type of day but I'm sure what is in, in progress is that uh, Sussex will be wanting to get as many wickets as early as possible tomorrow to put the pressure on. And, and Leicestershire will want to hang around. Here we go. Last ball of the day. And this is pushed to one of the cover fielders. And that is the day over. And uh, what a day it has been. Lots of, of uh, runs. moments <laughs> have uh, resulted. Well, lots of runs have resulted in uh, plenty of... Uh, of uh, centuries and double centuries as well for John Simpson's a fantastic innings for the captain in his debut season here at Sussex uh, but 86 for one is how we end at the end of the day for Leicestershire they've plenty to do tomorrow nine wickets in hand I watch we talk about the deficits trail by 270 that may be irrelevant yep. quite frankly but uh, it's been a great day's play it has and, it, and it, it's been very much Sussex's day there will however be just that sort of little star next to it asterisk if you like about the declaration and the timing there of has John Simpson left his bowlers enough time to bowl Leicestershire out or is the Kookaburra pitch combination going to be uh, just too hard in of critics in there. We put that at Pogman, they can do fishy skin. Often, I'd like to have a mark. For now, I'm going to read it for myself, Richard Ray. Major arms, a team.